Well, good day, YouTube, and uh, welcome to another episode of Beard Believes United. Uh, first and foremost, I have to apologize for tonight. I'm going to try to keep up with comments, but our uh, our usual comment guy will not be here tonight. Hey, look at who's here. Gregory's here. Is I. Anyway, like I was just going to say, guys, our usual comment administrator, the king of BeerTube, will not be here tonight, so I'm going to try to keep up with comments and see how it goes. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, quickly, we always do, before we get into anything, anything new in the Ontario beer market and all that sort of stuff, well, first and foremost, let's, uh, let's do an update of, the, of my beer festival in May. Why not? Right? We haven't talked about it at all in a while. So, May 2nd, Saturday. Noon till 7, 209 Ridge Road North in uh, Ridgeway, Ontario, which is the home of Brimstone Brewing Company. Uh, right now we have 26 breweries confirmed. So we're looking at uh, Innocente, Brimstone, Mill Street, uh, Wellington, Black Oak, Black Swan, Innocent Gun, Silversmith, Killinan, Bows, Refined Fool, Camerons, Five Paddles, Descendants, Clifford Brewing, Brothers Brewing, Sawdust City, uh, Brickworks, which is a cider house, the Indy Ale House, uh, Niagara College Teaching Brewery, uh, Mash Paddle, uh, Block 3, Oast, uh, Double Trouble Brewing, which uh, does the uh, hops and robbers and prison break and all that, Highlander Brew Company, uh, Garden Brewers, and that would be our 26. It's actually, to me, I actually love this lineup because it's a whole bunch of new ones. It's some old standbys. Uh, a lot of new breweries that are actually new as well. Uh, our food vendors, we're going to have the Dirty South there again. So for those of you that came and loved the poutine and barbecue truck, that's them. Uh, we will also have Georgia Hots, which is a uh, gourmet hot dog place. Who doesn't want gourmet hot dogs, right? Smoking Buddha was there last year. They'll be there again. Crave Local Fresh, which is the uh, group that actually does a lot of the catering at Brimstone, will be there. We also have the Yellow Pear food truck, which will be there. And we have Stewart's Chicken, which is a Ridgeway local business as well. So, yeah. And then we have the Brew Box. We have uh, we have the Niagara designated drivers there to get you home if you want to use them, which is a great thing to have there. Uh, we have, the, basically, it's a, it's a taxi service with two cars going. You get in one car and you, they drive. They drive you and your car home, and then they get in the other car and go back. Um, so it's actually a cool little service. And Hummingbird Homestead, which is going to be there again. Uh, beer soap. Who doesn't want beer soap, right? Right? So yeah, there you go. There's my shitty update on the beer festival. And Chad, I'd be willing to pay up to and including $100 to get into that beer festival, but how much does it actually cost? $20! That's it. $20 a ticket. I'd buy that for a dollar or 20 <laughs> And, yeah, the tickets will be $20. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have any at the door or not. Probably not. Uh, we did we did at the door sales last year, which made a lot of people wait till at the door, and then people got angry because we had 600 people show up and we didn't have enough glasses for them all because we only had 300 people buy tickets, so we bought 450 bucks. You know what? You want a cup? Buy your fucking ticket ahead of time so we know you're coming. There you go. You get your glass. You get three sample tokens. Tokens after that are two dollars each. It's four ounce samples. It's actually an okay price. Um, I'm try. I try desperately to keep the cost for the consumer low. I'm keeping the cost for the vendors extremely low. I'm actually, other than free, I'm, I'm the cheapest festival you're gonna find for a vendor. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, even the Roundhouse Festival, I think, has gone up to 12 bucks now. And that, that used to be the cheapest festival. In, well, it still is the cheapest festival in Toronto, but it's uh, getting a little pricier each year. Yeah, it's it's what happens, right? Everything everything gets more and more expensive as you go on. It's just the way of the world. Um, Apparently, Guy cannot figure out how to join, even though he's had two invites sent to him, so we'll send him another two. You know, I don't know. Google Plus is... It know, was actually really slow today. Like, when I came to get into this, I had to reload it three times. Uh, sometimes you, you... Well, you send me invites every week, but sometimes I'm able to join. It gives me a nice little thing, join here. Other days, it just tells me, no, you can't join. I can check in and say I'm watching, but that's it. 
I'll have to bug you guys for another invite. I love this place. This place being this. Um, so, yeah, we, as I said, we always do a little bit of Ontario beer news, just brewery news and stuff like that, if there's anything interesting out there. Uh, in all honesty, it's it's kind of uh, a slow time right now for most things. Um, <coughs> what do we have here? Uh, Nita Beer is opening this weekend at, uh, on the 31st in Ottawa. So Nita Beer is named after the brewmaster's last name, Nita. Uh, they're going to have an OPA or Ontario Pale Ale and some other beer. Who cares, right? Who cares? Uh, if you're in the Ottawa area, though, <laughs> go and try it. I say who cares because they're just growler sales. There are the demi growlers and the regular growlers. I just don't care to go to a brewery and buy a growler. I know why it's there, especially when you open. I get it. Uh, bottling costs money and all that. I get it. It's just, uh, it's, I, I just don't care. Uh, but they do have something awesome where you can actually order your growler online, so you just have to walk in, get it, and walk out. So that that's good. Also this week, Muddy York is opening. Muddy York is... Uh, uh, the owner of Muddy York is good friends with the guys from Five Paddles, so they've been pushing him for a while, too. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. A uh, bunch of BC breweries opening. Who cares about BC breweries, right? I don't care. What else do we... Oh, oh, this one is interesting for some people here in Ontario. Uh, Michigan's Atwater Brewery is launching in Ontario via the Craft Brand Company. So, Atwater Brewing... I've only had one of their beers, and it was the uh, Vanilla Job uh, Porter. It wasn't all that great, but hey... Actually, that's what's coming. <laughs> It'll be debuting on draft. Yeah, at all Ontario locations of the beer market chain in uh, February. Uh, and they are they talking anything about going into the LCPO? Let's see here. No, they're just talking about bringing up uh, bringing up kegs of, of the vanilla Java Porter. Okay. So yeah, that's that's where we are. And there's Gisa. Hello. 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 Are you going to go and try the Nita Brewing Company this weekend? <sighs> Maybe. Well, now working the weekend to be right like Monday, Tuesday. I see a Coors Altitude uh, can there. I was sneaky. I did a review, but I have uh, two other, three other people, so I got one left. Oh, I can. Yeah. My girlfriend works for Molson. They won't even sell her one of those yet. They're still holding out until they get more stock in Canada. <laughs> I, I keep getting asked to do a review of it, but I just don't want to go and buy a four-pack. Mm -hmm. Oh, should I should I keep this one until May? No, no, don't keep it until May. I don't want to wait till May. If I'm doing it, I'm doing it soon. It's just it's bringing yeah, myself all, to going. They're all fresh now. After that, you don't know where they've been. Yeah, right, like, I can open. Fuck it. Give us, a, give us the first live review on YouTube. Oh, I have a review. I just gotta edit the video. The, the first live review, sure. So what's everybody drinking? The three of us that are here. We know that he's drinking Coors Altitude. Well, I'm having a bourbon right now. At some point, I'll have a beer, but it's not gonna be anything good. I was at the dentist today, and my taste buds are all out of whack. So it's gonna be something like a like have one of my black oak break of dust, which I still have four more to finish. That is not, not filtered at all. And I am drinking the uh, the James Brown Ale from, uh, from Block 3. In my O'Keefe glass. Fancy. I know, I'm a fancy, fancy guy. Uh, what? Do, holy fuck, we have ten viewers already. What the fuck's going on tonight? Uh, I guess we should get into some topics then with only ten viewers. I was kind of just wasting time, guys, because I was waiting to see if anyone else would show up. Beer smells like a Xerox semi-gloss paper with a wet dog. That was very descriptive. A fart of corn in the background. Okay, well, we got our first comment that we can hit before we uh, do anything. Winter's coming asked if uh, we, I was aware, and I'll put it out if anyone's aware, of any winter seasonals coming out that haven't hit the shelves yet. Um, 
usually there's one or two seasonals that don't actually hit the shelves till the next season. I haven't actually been watching what was supposed to come because I pretty much got everything I wanted. Um, yeah, I, I, I just don't know, to tell you the truth. Uh, there's still lots of winter ales out there. I haven't seen I haven't seen all the winter ales that usually hit the LCBO hit them yet, but uh, not like that really matters. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, the spring beers just started coming out. Uh, the, the, a lot of the Belgian beers are showing up. The Steamworks, uh, the Steamworks Triple just showed up. Yeah, um, I picked that up. I, like, I picked it up because I, I love their bottles. Even if the beer sucks, it's for my collection. Yep. You know, in terms of winter seasonals, I don't know anything about the LCBO. I know a couple breweries are still holding out on their seasonals, although when they're coming out, I have no idea. I think Great Lakes is doing a barrel-aged Harry Porter. And yeah, that, that's usually February that they throw that out. Oh, yeah. And then um, Bellwoods, since i got to mention Bellwoods, I'll mention Black Oak. I'll get it all out there for the evening. Um, Bellwoods is releasing their Christmas beer. Blitzen wasn't ready this year for Christmas, so I think they're releasing in the next month or so. And then that's Which I find funny because that's what the Steamworks beer is called. <laughs> yeah, that's true, it is. And then the um, sort of a late winter release, I think their Motley Crue is coming out in February or March. I'd have to come up with the date of that. So. But other than that, I don't know of any LCBO releases that are still coming out. Okay, uh, the Duchette, and of course he, he'd keep this one up, and I'm actually kind of curious to try this one. So um, Anyway, he said the... Uh, Rodenbach uh, Vintage 2012 is still delayed, so there's that that hasn't hit the shelf yet. LCBO always has everything delayed. Well, and I mean, there, there's a lot of beers, and I, I say it all the time, even when they get numbers, I don't believe they're coming until I actually see them, because I have seen beers that have been given shelf numbers that have either shown up in such small quantities that it wasn't worthwhile, or just don't show up until months and months after everything else that was supposed to be here for that season has come through. Yeah. I've only, I've only seen one LCBO in my area that has dragon's milk. Oh, there uh, we had we had like six bottles of dragon's milk in the falls. I got three of them. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and they, they showed up again like months after they hit everywhere else. I, I think it was just like, oh, we have we have a case left. Who do we want to give it to? You guys can just have it. <laughs> it seemed like it went that way. I didn't I didn't pick any up because I usually just grab a bunch of Michigan because it's available all the time there. But uh, it's actually, you know what, if you calculate the price per milliliter, it's actually cheaper at the LCBO than it costs in Michigan. And actually that happens with a lot of American beers. Uh, a lot of the steam whistle uh, uh, southern tier beers are actually cheaper up here than in the U.S., such as Pum King, the Warlock, they're usually cheaper. Not not every year, but most years they're usually a little cheaper. Yeah. Well, I, I guess not. And Joe was saying he could get it for about ten bucks. But the um, what was that Flying Monkeys beer that came out recently? The uh, Chocolate Manifesto. It's not recent. It's been out for a while. But that one is uh, I think thirteen bucks at the LCBO, and I've seen it in place in Michigan for like twenty five bucks. So. I guess we're getting a good deal at 13. Oh, well, that's that's cheaper in. It's actually cheaper to buy in uh, New York State than it is here in Ontario. So that's just places where you're going that are trying to overkill people, which oh, yeah, is probably the reason it doesn't move. Oh yeah, well Michigan gouges on stuff, or at least some stores do in Michigan. Yeah, like that twenty-five dollars for that beer is just stupid, especially because it's actually cheaper for them to buy it because they don't have to pay all the LCBO taxes on it. Like yeah. the Utopia, that was like way, way cheaper here. Yeah, the Utopia is like $110 or something cheaper up here than in the U.S. in most places. Yeah. But you know what? It sells because people know what it, what it costs. And like when I was at the tasting bar at the local, um, uh, near my family's place in Michigan, uh, I was at the tasting bar at one of their stores, and I was talking to the lady, and she says, yeah, I've got some chocolate manifesto to try, but we had a guy who came in here who knew that it goes for 25 bucks a bottle. We told him we're selling for 13 a bottle, the same as the LCBO, and he bought every bottle we had. So we don't have any more. <laughs> so I guess it's a good way to incentivize the stores that sell for cheaper. They, 
then people think, oh, 13 bucks a bottle, it's a steal, I'll take all of them. <laughs> all righty, so uh, first and foremost, we uh, for topics, we have the... Uh, UV glass, which is being made for bars and bars that have patios. Basically, it's it's a glass made out of brown glass. So it's it's like those homemade glasses where you would use the the acetylene and the fucking string to cut the top off your bottle and then sand it down. Just mm -hmm. brown brown glass, basically beer bottle glass is what it is. Uh, not necessarily that exact shape, but that type of glass. Um, they're selling it again to keep the beer from skunking out on the patio. Do you actually care? Is there enough time to skunk out? Or just well, in all honesty, mattering the amount of hops, it could skunk in minutes. It can skunk in half an hour. It all it all matters uh, how much sunlight's hitting it, where it's sitting, that sort of thing. Uh, really though, for me, it doesn't bother me one way or another. I'm albino. I'm staying inside the bar. <laughs> well, like we don't drink our beers fast enough for that. Yeah, well, there's that too, right? I'm not going to have a beer just sitting there. I'm not going to sit it off the side of the table or something. Like most patios, you're under an umbrella or something. I'm not going to sit it at the side of the table so that it's sitting in the sunlight. You know. Well, the thing is, I do sit on patios, and in the summertime, I'll order something you know, fairly light, like a steam whistle or some sort of IPA or something, and I've never had a beer go skunky on me mm -hmm. while I was just sitting on the patio enjoying it. I mean, I'm not saying it can't happen, but it never happened to me that I'd worry about it. The only thing that happens on a patio is the beer gets warm really quick. Is this the same thing as the Kickstarter that was on like six months ago or eight months ago? I remember seeing that a while back. It may have been. I don't follow Kickstarters all that much, to be honest with you, unless unless one of you guys shares a Kickstarter with me. I don't catch on to them because there's just too many Kickstarter things going on. Uh, like that steampunk growler that was out there for a while, the one that was... Uh, Pressurizing itself, so it always stayed pressurized. There was there's so many weird. Wow, that's very cool, actually. Never heard of that. Yeah, it, it looked like shit, but it was a cool concept. Yeah, I saw because I saw those glasses or something similar on Kickstarter. And I was thinking of buying into it, but I think I forgot about it. And never did. But what I, shape are they? Are they like shakers or? It's just a shaker glass. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a shaker. So, you know, the, the big craft beer nerds of the U.S. will hate them. Well, but it makes sense, right? Because, I, I don't know, can a stout commit skunk up, too? Like, I've never heard of a... It's always light beers and stuff that skunk up, not, like, big stouts or anything. Well, it's it's UV penetration, right? So the, the lighter the beer, the lower the ABV, the easier it'll skunk. That's why things like Corona are usually skunked as soon as you open the bottle. Um... The higher ABV, the more it's protected. The darker it is, the more the SRM, the more it's protected because the UV can't penetrate it. So it can still happen, does it? Not usually. Yeah. So I guess in that case it makes sense to be in a shaker glass because if you're going to be drinking a light beer, usually you have a shaker glass. Yeah, yeah. I prefer IPAs in shaker glasses anyway. I got this today, guys. This is uh, something I should be reviewing. I was going to review it before I went online, but uh, I can't read the can very well, so I just left it out. It's Crazy Beard. Wow. Oh. Yeah, that's the one you posted on Facebook. It's pretty cool art. Yeah, this is uh, amazing artwork, in my opinion. Uh, the guys the guys seem pretty cool. They, uh, they were down in Niagara Falls hitting up all the LCBOs, trying to get all the LCBOs to carry it. You gonna do a live review? Uh, no, I can't read it again. If my, if the wife comes downstairs, I'll get her to read the can for me, and then I can do it. Hmm. But I'm not gonna call her because she isn't happy with me. She's never really happy with me, but she's not happy with me right now. She's extra happy with you today. No, no. The only person that's ever happy with me is Dee. Mm -hmm. I make free art. He's just said he makes art. Free, free art. <laughs> okay, so uh, the big news in the U.S. right now is Elysian being bought out by AB InBev. There is a lot of chatter going on online about it. Uh, there's even a news article put up about that interviewing one of the three founders, and that founder didn't want to sell. 
and talks about the fight that went back and forth in the sale. Uh, in all honesty, the only reason Elysian being bought out is weird to me is Elysian actually had a lot of labels that said they were against the man through corporate America, this and that. So this, to see them actually sell out to a corporation is kind of sad. Uh, do I care as much about breweries selling out? You know what? It's it's what's going to happen. Beer is a business. Uh, sooner or later, you're going to get offered enough money that you're going to sell. Uh, you have 3,400 breweries in the U.S. You have, what, a uh, thousand or so in Canada right now. Um, I, I think it's like 800 in Canada, if uh, I remember Jordan St. John's number properly. Uh, not everybody's on the exact same page. Not everybody is all about being local and uh, and going to stay with that. They're not going to let their moral compass always succeed for them. I mean, you have a family. You have people to feed. You have workers to pay. If you get offered enough money, you just take it. You Your beers become that much. Uh, some people have been able to do it without taking the big guys. Stone's been able to do it. Sierra Nevada... Uh, Dogfish Head. There are a lot of companies that do get ahead without taking the big money, but it's a long and hard push, and sometimes you're aging like these guys all were. Uh, does Elysian make the best beer? I don't think they do, but they make good beer. Uh, the big thing about this purchase is in one purchase, AB InBev has basically taken over Seattle. They bought a production brewery and four brew pubs all across the Seattle region. <laughs> they they made a great purchase in that for for that reason. Uh, what will this do? Will it hurt their sales? Will it bolster their sales? It'll probably hurt their sales right at first with everybody saying no, I'm not buying it anymore. But uh, just like Goose Island, just like Red Hook, just like everybody else, I'm sure that in time their sales will double, triple, so on because they're going to have the distribution to be everywhere. Yeah, it certainly doesn't seem to be hurting the Bourbon County line. Like, you still got people lining up on the block for it. And see, that there's there's something that got brought up a lot on uh, Stephen Beaumont's Facebook page, uh, because he was bringing up the fact that there's all these hand ringers that say they'll never give money to these companies again, but all those hand ringers are also the people that line up for every Bourbon County variant that's out there. He's like, if you're not, if you're not paying money to these guys ever again, you can't pay money to them ever again. You can't just do it whenever you want. But uh, Goose Island, even their Honkers Ale is still sold en masse. I mean, everything is got, has gotten bigger with them. The only good thing about the Anheuser-Busch purchase of them is Urban County has exploded. That's why there's so many variants. That's why there's so much of it now. Probably also part of the reason why there's such a, uh, a fight to get it, too, though, is their hype machine has, has made that beer desired by everybody. Not saying it doesn't deserve it. I love that beer, but there's so much more of it, but there's also so many more people trying to get it now. I just wish they'd expand it so I could pick it up at the LCBO. So are the original guys going to stay at the brewery and work there and design the recipes still and all that, or did, you didn't know that, what they said? Uh, there are two articles that say they are staying on. Uh, will they have full control? Probably not. I mean, nobody ever has full control anymore afterwards. Um, here's a question for you guys, though. We This was a question we were actually talking about after this purchase happened. The reason people get so angry about these purchases is because of the track record of when a big brewery buys a smaller brewery. Most of the time, the beer goes down in quality. Uh, a lot of the times, it, it a lot of times, a lot of bad things happen. People get fired, uh, Beer goes down in quality. The message is lost. Are there? Can you think of success stories when a big guy takes over? I can think of a few off the top of my head. Uh, Creamore Springs. It went from being very inconsistent to consistent. You you might not like the taste of the beer as much anymore, but their consistency issues were wiped out, and they're now a national brand for the most part. Um, Worthington's in the in the UK was about to go extinct before Molson Coors bought them up. Doing great now. Uh, Unibrew. Unibrew still makes some amazing beers. They still made it when Sleeman bought them. They still made it after Sapporo bought Sleeman. I mean, uh, uh, for me personally, Leff. Leff makes some good beers, and they're an Anheuser-Busch product. Uh, um, Hogarden. Hogarden's still okay. I'm not saying it's great, but it's still drinkable. Who owns them? AB? AB and Bev, yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. But Unibrew, yes, like they do whatever they want. It's still pretty damn good. 
Yeah, they, they, those ones you sent me, the the brown and all that, the brown ale and, oh, sorry, the honey brown and all that, those seemed like their, uh, their Sleeman influence make the, make the, you know, the most inoffensive beers you could. Oh, they work, work they, for his Man 24 pack, right? Yeah. But, I mean, can any of you think of more success stories? I mean, I... Goose Island, Goose Island's Bourbon County line is great. Uh, I've heard that their other lines have gone down. I heard that Honkers Ale went down and all that and the urban wheat and everything. I've never had those before the purchase, so I don't know if they've actually gone down or not. I can think of a few breweries they should buy and try and improve, but... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I really like that Elysian beer. I just hope it stays good. I really like their... The only thing I really drank from Elysian was their pumpkin beers. Yeah, everything I've had from them has been awesome. Their IPAs are good. Their the men's room is good. They, I'm not yeah, too everybody, crazy. Have you tried the? Have you guys tried the Greater Pumpkin Ales and stuff? Yeah, I've had their Night Owl, their Greater Pumpkin. I've had their uh, Pumpkin Cranberry uh, Pilsner. I've had their uh, Howl at the Moon. I've had like six of their pumpkin beers. I that's what I like to drink from them is their pumpkin beers. Yeah, they seem to be a big hit everywhere. I actually have not tried anything from that brewery, so I have no opinion of them one way or the other. Well, we we had the the Immortal IPA in the LCBO. I personally didn't like it. Don't know if it just wasn't to my taste or if the uh, the LCBO's great uh, great aging program was put into effect. Don't know which one it was, but I just wasn't a fan of it. Wait a minute, I think I have the Immortal IPA. I'm going to check this. That sounds familiar. I'm not too crazy about uh, Granville. What's the story behind them? Is that like a fake macro no, brewery? Gran they... Granville, Granville was a craft brewery as well, and Granville was bought out by, uh, by Molson Coors. You mean Granville Island? Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Hopefully they, they can't make it any worse. Uh, they've owned them for a few years now, so it's... Oh, so they haven't really done much. <laughs> no, no. It's not a... I, yeah, I don't know. The few Granville Island products I've tried, I haven't been too crazy about. But, you know, on the other hand, they bought Cremor, and I don't think they made Cremor any worse. They've definitely upped the distribution of it in new beer. They upped the distribution. They added a great filtration system that made them actually consistent and made it so that they can last longer than a few weeks. Um, they, they helped... Creamore out more than they harmed Creamore, in my opinion. Now, again, I know a lot of people that are diehard purist fans that hate the fact that a big guy owns them and won't drink them anymore, saying the flavors change. Has it changed? It most likely has because the beer is nowhere near as cloudy as it used to be. It's it's a lot more filtered, so I'm sure a lot of the taste has left, but it's still a well-made beer. You know what? The regular Creamore lager, to me, tastes pretty much the same. To me, the Keller beer has changed. Like, the Keller beer, I think, was a lot better a couple years back. But the thing is, the first time I tried it, was it was already a Molson product. So, I don't know if it was necessarily Molson changing it, but I think something about that beer has changed. But... Cremor, I think, for the most part, you know, they still make a pretty good product. You know, it may be... Like, I remember the very first time I ever tried Cremor when I was, like, a teenager was... I hated it, but it was from my dad's fridge, and my dad doesn't really drink beer, so he only keeps it around for guests. So this was, like, a can that was something like two years old. And at the time, no, I didn't know old beer was a bad thing, but in hindsight, I think, yeah, that's probably why I hated the Cremor. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a reason to hate it. <laughs> well, because back then I didn't know anything about beer. I figured, oh, well, old whiskey is good. Old beer is probably even better. That's what I know. I'm not too worried about the whole takeover thing, as long as there's several big companies to kind of compete still to try and keep their... Like, maybe InBev seems to make some pretty good beers all over the world still, so as long as they got competition, I guess they're we're not in too much danger. You know, I like to support local, but, you know, at the end of the day, given the choice, I'll go to whoever has the best product. Like, with beer, I think usually the local guys will often have a better product because it's not as manufactured and they don't have their hands in it. They don't try and make as much money for it. But when you look at stuff like whiskey, 
it's not, or I'll just say spirits in general, like the craft spirits, they're not necessarily any better than the big guy spirits, and yet you end up paying about twice as much for them as you would, you know, like Stillwater's, Stillwater's uh, single malt scotch or whatever, uh, or not scotch, single malt Canadian whiskey, goes for about 70 bucks a bottle, and I mean, you can get some other single malts for around bucks a bottle that I think are just as good as that. You know, if you go in the states or go to duty free shop, you can get them even cheaper than that. And I don't, you know, and it's and they're a lot older. They have an age statement of 12 years or something instead of three years. So, in some cases, local is good. In some cases, I think you're part of it is you're you're paying because they don't have the you know they don't have the size. Well, but. when you're when you're looking at at Ontario craft spirits, Ontario craft spirits on a twenty nine dollar twenty six or they make five dollars on that 26er that's why that 26er has to be a lot more than 29 dollars for them to make any money because the lcbo is taking about 14 dollars of the bottle in tax and then about uh ten dollars in in uh fees and everything however if you go to the <laughs> the distillery there's no reason why the bottle is still being charged the same price they're charging you at the lcbo they could take that ten dollar lcbo fee off and they're still making more profit than they would be if they were selling it at the LCBO. Well, and ironically, if you buy this, Stillwater distributes to the U.S., and you can sometimes buy their product in the U.S. for cheaper than, like I've seen their um, their uh, barrel strength whiskey is about 100 bucks a bottle at the store, and I've seen some places in the States sell it online for about 70 bucks a bottle. So. Well, again, they're not paying the LCBO fees if they're selling it in the States because it's being sold in the States. They're still paying me Ontario taxes on creating it, but they're not paying me LCBO fees. And you know what? I'm not trying to shit on them because they do make a good product, but at the end of the day, I have to figure what's the best value for my money, and they're just not it. Like, one day when they're able to give me a, a, you know, a longer-aged whiskey for a little bit better price, I'll certainly consider them. But at the end of the day, I'd, you know... Even a cheap single malt scotch that's aged 12 years, is, I think, is generally at least as good of a product as they offer, and it's What well, is anyone pushing to lower their tax rates? Because then it sounds like a lot of people in Ontario just go to the duty-free shop and buy it, or cross the line and buy all their beer, like a lot of people here do, right? Well, if you can, if you can get away with it, I'm lucky because I have family in Michigan, so I go through duty-free quite often, but. For regular people, you either have to pay the duty, which ends up costing you a lot of money, or you have to risk smuggling it, which can save you the money, but you can also get your car. Uh, yeah, that's not worth it. <laughs> no, I, I just know lots of people buy beer across the line here because it's way cheaper for, like, cores and stuff like that. Well, well beer, beer coming into Ontario from, from the U.S., coming into Ontario from the U.S., the beer duty isn't that bad. <laughs> the spirits duty, though... Is like uh well basically is a hundred percent whatever you paid for it. Double the so price. So if you pay yeah if you paid thirty dollars for the bottle you're paying about thirty dollars a duty on that bottle. Uh, for beer if you buy a two four you're paying about ten forty five. Yeah, like my uncle lives up in St. Catharines and he does all his shopping in the states like grocery shopping. He usually buys a pack of beer every week. Uh, just something cheap, like Coors Light or whatever, and uh, he says pretty much nine times out of ten, he never has to pay anything for it, and a couple times he does, he says, whatever, the money he's saving, it, the ten bucks he has to pay every now and then really doesn't bother him. Yeah, and he's probably paying it because he gets married at bitch. <laughs> much, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I usually go to Quebec, but to have to go to the car garage tomorrow because they just put a law, if your windows tint or above 70%, you get fined. So I gotta go, go change out tomorrow. Oh, you're lowering your tint? Yeah, I'm at 35, I need 70, apparently. Oh. So, yeah. Oh, you know, I mean, I don't have any tint on my car now, but I used to drive around with a uh, tint that was way, way below what the law allowed, and I never once got ticketed for it. I just yeah, never but he has Ontario plates and he's driving in Quebec, he's getting ticketed. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, out here, Buddy had tint on his windows, and it was like, fuck. He get pulled over every weekend. They just harass him over it, too. You know? But you can buy production cars that have a lot of tint in there. But if you have an older car, man, they fucking shit all over you for that. Yeah. Out here, anyway. So here's one. This is, this is more for Matt, because it's only in the U.S. right now. I don't know if you guys read about the Crowler. 
And the title of this uh, article is, Will the Crowler Change Craft Beer? So what the Crowler is, is a growler, but in a can. It's a 32-ounce can. Uh, you fill it up off the tap at the bar or brewery. Then they put the top on the can, and there you go. It's a single-use thing, so it's not it's not like a growler that can be reused and reused and reused. Uh, good things about it, you can take it places that you couldn't take it before. It can get cold faster. Uh, fully recyclable, won't break if it bangs into something. But really, all it is is the bar or brewery having... A single head canner. They don't have a canning line. They have a single head canner. They fill up. They put it on the canner. It spins and puts the fucking top on it. That's what it is. Will the Crowler change craft beer? No, we already have canning. Uh, I'll tell you what, though. Will it change me picking up um, drafts? Yes, because I honestly, I've never ever bought a growler in my life. Like when I drink beers, I want to drink like uh, several different beers in a sitting. I do not want to drink the same beer over and over. So typically for me, I, I've, I've had growler sips from other, other people I've purchased, but I've never purchased one myself because I don't want to drink that much beer or have that much beer because I can open it and then not drink it for a couple days and then I have to toss it out. So it would probably help me out more because I could then get maybe a couple different offerings that are self-contained, sealable things. Um, now, will it change craft beer? No. Um, but I know that it might be a moot point because there's a company, um, and I'm looking it up now because I heard about it and I forgot about it to now, that is making like a Keurig type machine for beer to where what you do is pretty much instead of doing a canning thing, they give you, and I'm looking it up right now to see what it is, but it's basically almost like a Keurig type package that you can buy beers in that form. And you pop it in the machine, it's like a mini draft thing. So imagine Keurig, but in beer form. That, yeah, I think, that, is going to be that a big was, deal. That was, on, uh, that was on Kickstarter a while back. Who was it? Yeah. So I remember reading about it and hearing about it, and I totally forgot about it until now. The canning thing sounds like a novel. Not a novelty. I'd, I'd put it above that. I wouldn't just call it a novelty, but something that would work. But it'd almost be like a thing where a, a, a place that has a ton of drafts would totally invest in it. You know, I'm like curious. for me... Yeah, I'm curious what the uh, what the on top cost would be for it. I mean, a growler's five dollars. An Italian grass, glass growler's like fifteen to twenty. The metal growlers, you're looking at thirty. What would it cost for the can? A uh, normal demi growler's usually two fifty to five dollars as well, which is what this is. This is basically a demi growler. It's a half growler. Just to make it cost effective for bars to use, it has to come out at a low end. It just has to in order to be viable. I mean, you can't make it. You can't make the container. A disposable container that you're going to throw away after you produce, drink the beer, you cannot make that more than pennies on a dollar. Well, you just can't I make mean, it viable. It, it's good. It's it's just a can, right? It's a 32 ounce can. So for the for the bars that are bars or breweries that are buying it, you're looking at can prices. You're looking at if you're buying in bulk, anywhere from four to ten cents a can. It's yeah. just what are they going to charge the consumer for it? Yeah, I, honestly, I, I almost think it's going to be like a pizza box. You would have to offer it like that as a, as, a, as a bar just to be like you're not – maybe you throw that extra 10 cents on to the end cost of the beer as a whole. You know what I mean? And then just – and then it gets eaten up in that way. You can't be like, oh, okay, if you want to do this, it's extra. The growler is reusable. It's tangible. It's big. You hold it. You don't keep it. To, to, you can charge for that because I know people that have bought growlers just because they look cool. You know what I mean? So – um, well, yeah, keep, I have a growler collection over here on the wall. I don't even fill them. I just buy them. Yeah, so, I mean, t the whole can thing has to be the pizza box. It has to be the pizza box of the beer world. It can't be, you know, I, some people collect pizza boxes. If people collect cans, I have bottles everywhere. I shouldn't even say anything. But, um, yeah, it has to be a low-cost, low low thing where it's kind of almost included in cost. You know, be like, oh, if you want it in a can, it's an extra dollar or two. It's going to be like just kind of build it in your price structure as is. That's my guess. How much different is that than a mini keg? The mini keg is more of a of a marketing tool from like a distributor standpoint, though, as opposed to like I can get mini kegs. Are you talking about not? You're not talking about six tools. You're talking about like those little Heineken mini keg things. Yeah, yeah. Well, they have that, different sizes, but but I mean, you're talking for those little mini keg things. You're talking about that's that's you're at the mercy of the beer of the producer of the beer whether they choose to make it in that. What I'm talking about in my aspect is that well, someone, can, someone can can any beer. Like the bar has the canning ability. So, for example, perfect oh. example is a, 
there's a bar. Yeah, it's like basically what they'll do is they'll buy the uh, can already uh, made except for the top, and basically they put it in the machine and it just seals the top on it and send you on your way with whatever beer you choose to fill So, like, with. Off, off sales of breweries and stuff? Or well, it's, think of a growler beer. but in can form to where they can actually seal the can, and then you have cans of beer and you can keep well, it for so long. Well, uh, but by, by me... Basically, basically a, you're buying an oil can. You're basically... The Foster's oil can? You're basically yeah, buying yeah. that at, at well, a bar with a tap yeah. beer. Like, any beer they have on tap, they can sell you. Will it last yeah. longer than growler fillers? Is the same. It should because it's completely air sealed. Oh yeah. well, then it might be it, a good idea. It's still idea. on tap, though. It's still a a beer that was poured off tap, so you're gonna have to keep it cold until you're ready to drink it. But it should last <laughs> almost indefinitely because it's air sealed. Unless they have some kind of like delivery system that delivers it completely self-contained, sealed. Like there's some like growler fills that are like uh, vacuum growler fills. I don't know if you've ever seen them where they actually put them in a machine and actually like sucks all the air out of it, does all the nine or whatever. Then there's ones that just pour beer into the growler and then send you on your way. But um, like for me, for example, there's a bar five minutes away from my house that has 100 beers on tap. That's all they have. They don't serve any bottle. They have is beers on tap. And I go there and I drink a couple of beers and I leave, but I would love to go there when I have a beer I really like. Like every now and then they'll have like a, a rare beer that at really good prices. Walk in there and just be like, yeah, let me get a six pack of this. You know what I mean? Or something like that. That would be fantastic. So will it work? Who knows? But uh, I think it'll yeah. work. I just don't think it's going to revolutionize craft beer like they are trying no. to say. No, it won't. No, it won't revolutionize craft beer. That's like saying Again, not to go back to the pizza box. It's like seeing a pizza box is going to revolutionize pizza. The container which we, what we care about is not going to revolution revolutionize what's inside. Yeah, like you know, I love growlers because well, I'll say I love growlers for certain things. If it's a hot day, I know I'm going to be by the pool or something. I'm going to be drink. I'm going to be drinking a whole bunch of beer. I think a growler is fantastic. So I can get the beer super fresh. I can drink it right away, no problem. It's definitely not something you want to hang on to for a few days because. My experience is whatever they tell you, I say more than a day, and I've had beer go flat on me. That, and it was with, I once had a, a, a growler of steam whistle go flat on me after 24 hours, and they do have one of those fancy vacuum seal whatever uh, machines. So I do think yeah, you they, just, they just have a horrible seal on their growlers then. They might. I mean, it, we, we, what was it? What, how, long, how old was the one Joe brought over? He brought over a three-month-old bottle, a uh, uh, three-month-old growler, I believe it was. Was it three months? Uh, you were in A or watching. I think one of them might know. It was a peanut butter porter, and he brought it over. It was months old, and it was perfect still. It still had carbonation. It still had everything. Well, that might be because Steam Whistle makes their own custom growler, which nobody else makes, and it's expensive as hell. Like, for the to buy it plus the first fill is forty bucks, so it's expensive. Um, but and it's not a it's not a deposit either. You gotta buy it, and uh, and you know it's great. Like I love fresh steam whistle. I think I think fresh steam whistle is really underrated. I think it's a fantastic beer. But yeah, with the growler, if you're gonna get it, I would say granted it could be my growler. Maybe it has an issue with it. Maybe it's not 100% sealed. But yeah, I would definitely drink it the day I buy it next time. Yeah, no, I, I do agree with you, though, on uh, Steam Whistle right off the line. Like, I've had it right off the line when I did my beer there. <laughs> I got a case that it had, it was still, the tops were still warm from being just sealed. And they brought me a case of cans, and they're like, here you go. And it was, it was fucking amazing right off the line. Well, that, that's a beer that I'd typically, you know, if I buy it at the LCBO, I'd say it's maybe a 7.5, maybe an 8. It would be like a 9.5 if I, if I get a fresh one. They're so good. Dark Knight. Where are they? <laughs> so that yeah, the Keurig um, thing, is that different? The Keurig thing? Is that, you're talking about yeah, a home? That's, that's uh, an entirely different thing. Some engineers designed a machine that you put a little, little thing of extract in, basically, and it oh. brews you up a beer. Uh, so you're so going to have things. alcohol, too? Sorry. No, it would, it would have the alcohol in the extract. So okay. two things here we have uh, from Aaron, the same thing I just said. Uh, if, you're, if your growler went flat, flat in a day, that's a quality control issue, period. And, yeah, it's, there's something wrong with the growler, or there was something wrong with the beer before it was put in the growler. But, um, and then the other one is Lee Russell, Mr. Mr. King of Beer Tube himself. Due to my absence, this hangout is not sanctioned by me, the King of Beer Tube. 
So viewer, just beware. Poor quality is possible. Poor quality is always here, even when you're here. Just uh, to put that out there. When you're here, we're full of poor quality. But the smell yeah. of this beer is high quality as fuck. Oh my god, it smells good. What kind of beer is it? It's uh, basically a coffee beer because they did a collaboration with a coffee house. Brought Broadway? No, uh, Beer Snobs United said the best thing about Growlers is he visits a lot of craft breweries that don't, uh, well, a lot of small breweries that don't can or bottle, but they let them fill a growler. Yeah, a lot of them do that, but that's the thing that a lot of us hate, too, because now you're buying a whole growler of a beer instead of buying a 500 milliliter bottle or something. If you have the capacity to fill a growler, you have the capacity to bottle. Uh, you can bottle right off the line. You can. You can bottle right off the tap. As long as you, when you're filling up that bottle, there's still some foam at the top, and then you cap it. You can get a fucking hand capper for seven dollars at a homebrew store, and a package of blank crowns for about a dollar fifty. So you take your five hundred milliliter bottle, you fill it, you make sure there's foam on it, you cap it. Guess what? You have a nice bottle of beer that you can sell. <laughs> you can okay. actually, and to any craft brewery that opens, if you do not go and spend a couple hundred dollars, because that's what it costs, a couple hundred dollars to get at least a one single bottle filler. The single bottle filler will fill up 330, 340, 355, 500, and 650 milliliter bottles. You can buy it as a single. You can pay the extra. You can pay the thousands to get the double or the triple head. But you can buy a single filler that will fill that bottle, cap that bottle, and now you can sell that bottle right off of a keg. If you don't spend it like $600 that cost when you're opening up your brewery, you're probably not going to get my business because I just don't care to go and buy just a growler at a time. I want to try everything you have, and I want to bring it home and decide what I want, and then go back and buy a case of that. Yeah, I mean, uh, for me, like if I drink seven beers in a night, I rarely. I I can't think of the last time I drank more than two of the same beer in one night. You just don't do it, you know. And that maybe it's just me. I don't know. No, I uh, I know exactly what you're saying. I mean, it's. I there are very few beers I go back to on a regular basis. It's just because there's so many new things out there. There's there is a uh, over 140 breweries in Ontario right now where we used to have like 20. Like there's just so many new beers on the market all the time. Hell, my beer festival I have coming up has 13 breweries I've never had a beer from. Like <laughs> that's amazing. Okay, here's what Joe said, and I, I agree with him. Uh, I think the Crowler will change the way beer is distributed among folks who do beer trades. Yes, I can see that because of the fact that now you can get beer that was only on tap, uh, such as the peanut butter beer he brought. Um, some of those draft-only beers that people uh, hate mailing out in glass Growlers, which could potentially break, yeah, you are right. It will change the way beer trades are done. That's very... It's a new convenience. It's not going to change anything. I think that's the biggest thing, is that it's option. It's an option, and yeah. options are not bad to have. Oh, sorry. It was an Imperial Stout on Bridgehead Coffee, 9.4%. Nice. Beautiful. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> it tastes even better than the bottle imp. That's crazy. Wow. And who brew that? Beyond the Pale. Beyond the Pale made that one? Oh, yeah. The, wow. uh, I'm going to bring this one and the uh, Scottish Prick in May. I, I didn't mean to sound surprised because they do make good beer. It's just I didn't know that was one of theirs. I didn't know they actually had bottles yet. I thought they were still doing the, the demi growlers. Well, anytime they uh, age a beer in barrel or make a special, I guess, collaboration in this case, then they'll put it in that bottle format. Yeah, they, they might even fucking... They could even just fill the fill the bottles with the beer gun. It's a horrible, horrible time-consuming thing, but you can do it. I mean, fill up, uh, make your make your batch of beer. Fill up a two four worth of five hundred milliliter bottles. Sell that two four. Sell the rest as growlers. I'm drinking a beer from Maui. Uh, coconut porter. From Maui. Oh, Bridge. the Maui coconut porter. Yeah, that's a that's a nice one too. Not bad. Now, for those of you that uh, that have been keeping up with the beer store thing that was going on, 
large craft beer distributors put in a Supreme Court filing of collusion and uh, and other such things with the government. They had actually been given the okay to go forward with their class, with their lawsuit. This week, this came out from them. Uh, now, Barge had a lot of other things go on. Like they asked for a CEO to come and volunteer his time as their CEO and stuff. And anyway, I'm not even going to go into that. This is this was posted on their site this week. Barge obtained an external and expert legal opinion on the proposed court application. The court application has a low chance of success and would be extremely expensive. Yes, we all knew this already. You should have known that going into it as well. For these reasons, Barge has decided not to proceed. It would not be reasonable to ask people to fund a losing uh, expensive battle. To those in the craft beer industry, Barge is now a craft beer retailer equivalent to the so-called Parkdale Brewery, which is kind of making a jab at a brewery in Toronto that kind of was there and then disappeared, then was kind of there, then disappeared, then was kind of there, then disappeared, and now is basically uh, Duggan's Brewery. Uh, cheers to the great beer folks in Ontario. Ooh, they even took out the part. They, they had a part in here that talked about how they had done a interview and it was going to be on the Comedy Network, which is where where this company belongs, and they took that out. And I guess they realized how stupid that sounded. But, uh, yeah, so... If you're going to go out, and I, it, obviously now it was a publicity stunt for the most part, but if you're going to go out and you're going to try and take on the Ontario government and the beer store for collusion, which is what they're doing, and you're going to go out and you're going to be stupid enough to go right to the Supreme Court on your first step, you have the fucking balls and guts to go through with it, you know, just back away. Because now that was a victory for the beer store. You just handed them a victory and they didn't have to do anything. Sounds pretty weak. Hey, Jay! What's going on? Uncle Jay. Hello, folks. What's going on, homie? <laughs> oh, and, uh, not much. I had a pretty in interesting and bizarre experience at work today, but uh, anyway. We have Beer Snobs United in the corner over there, but he's muted. Oh, yeah. Sorry, he's muted. Hey, everybody. Good day. Hello. Hey, BS, you. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Good, good. Uh, any thoughts on the barge thing from any of you that were here? Yeah, it's weak. Well, <laughs> yes, it is weak. I, I, oppose, got it. I oppose monopolies and I oppose regulation, but if you're gonna if you're gonna go out and step out, don't limp out. Well, they, they got it in the headlines at least. If more people that know about it, you know, they might. It'll make the public a little more aware that maybe didn't don't think about these things. But. Right, but why? But isn't that a legislative issue instead of a judicial issue? Uh, yeah. What ha what's going on in Ontario right now is there's a lot of lawsuits about, uh, as we've talked about for the last few weeks, a piece of paper work that came out. It was a deal. <laughs> it was a deal that was signed between the between the LCBO, which is our government legislation for our liquor control here and the beer store, which basically gave the beer store complete monopoly and complete control over beer. If the beer was sold at the beer store, you had to buy your kegs from the beer store. You couldn't buy your kegs from the from the actual brewer. If you the beer store had choice on where they went, if the LCBO was going to open a store, the beer store was able to say whether or not that store was going to infringe on their and uh, places to put their own stores. Basically, it, it is collusion, and there is a class action lawsuit that is still going forward, but this was a... Uh, this was a public lawsuit that was being made and the public lawsuit has been pulled back from one company but the class action lawsuit from all the different companies is still going forward. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. But they dropped the suit, right? The Barge Craft Beer dropped the suit. Barge Craft Beer was trying to force the Supreme Court to change the law that was making the beer store be the only private beer retailer. Since the collusion... The Supreme Court of Ontario or the Supreme Court of Supreme Canada? Court of Ontario. Oh, okay, so it's a provincial a provincial lawsuit. Okay. Yeah. Well. Well, couldn't couldn't these breweries go to the to the, to the federal level? Because that's really an encouragement on your right, affecting your right to make money and work. The direct defense, That's a direct damage to the person. That's constitutionally fucked. 
Well, just just like in the U.S., each each province is allowed to have certain laws. We have a governing body for our alcohol control. This is what the alcohol legislation says. They are the Ontario government is actually looking at changing it, uh, mostly because they're fucked right now because this piece of paper got out. Um, will something change? Probably at some point. Who knows how much longer we'll have to wait. But it's actually moved a lot further than it ever had, and Barge didn't have to bring this into the papers or anything like that. This was, uh, finally this year, this was known by most people. Um, yeah, as soon as as soon as that deal got leaked, it was it was all over every newspaper. Um, then the beer store came out with their offer to the craft beer uh, craft breweries, which ended up being more push. Then the class action lawsuit, then the Barge lawsuit, and then Barge backing off. Yeah. Chad, do you mind if I step away for a few minutes to go um, put some different clothes in the dryer? Yeah, you do whatever you got to do, man. You're not allowed. You have to leave your laundry in the machine. <laughs> I don't want it to get wrinkled. <laughs> <laughs> now look. Uh, hey, don't let him go, Chad. <laughs> I drank a lot of beer today and it wasn't my fault. It was um That's how I'm going to my headstone when I die, by the way. Drank a lot of beer today and it wasn't my fault. <laughs> but actually I was ordered well wait wait a minute. I was ordered to drink this beer as part of my job, so actually scratch that last thing, that's going on my headstone now. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. Okay. And if and later on, I'll tell you that story if you want to hear it. Uh, how you be ordered to be? I made a video called "Drunk by Request," but um, how you could be ordered to drink beer at work. But anyway. Wow. Hey Chad, based on your untapped review, I assume you don't want any of these, right? Uh, if you want to still send them out, I'll drink them. If you don't, I won't. I never had one. I hate you. Makes no difference to me. I, I've got the six pack. If you want a few, you're welcome to them. If not, I'll drink. I didn't actually even know one was coming to me. What ended up happening was uh, a friend of mine's husband walked into Black Oak and he was talking about my beer festival. And I guess Erica handed him a bottle. And then uh, that friend of mine had to come over to drop me off that, uh, that barley wine from Five Paddles that they waxed for me. So she dropped off that at the same time. And that's how our beautiful Twitter conversation happened, where he tweeted to Erica, "the the deal has been done. The beer, the the delivery has been made to the albino rhino." And I responded with, "Yeah, that doesn't sound underhanded or suspicious at all." And yeah, we went on for that. But yeah, it was it was I liked it. It wasn't I liked it, but I didn't like it. If you know what I mean, like it was drinkable, but it wasn't something I loved. You know what? Here three different times, and I've given it three different ratings. So it's definitely, I think, a, if you're in the mood for a beer. Like if you look at my, now, if you look at my untapped, every rating is different for it. Stuart, I've sent you another invite, so you got to figure it out. Yeah, I would save some and, and give them out to people at the beer fest, but I, I don't know if it'll be good in May. Like it's like a four and a half percent beer. I don't know if it'll if it'll last that long. Yeah, I, I'm not 100% sure. So last week, one of our viewers brought up uh, the Crown Holdings Crown Holdings strike. So Crown Holdings is a can manufacturer. Uh, there is a can, uh, can manufacturing plant in Toronto that's been on strike now for 17 months. Um, the union, the Steelworkers Union, has uh, renewed its push to to boycott cans. Now, they say boycott canned beer by beer and bottles. Now, I have a problem with this for a few reasons. One, the Toronto the Toronto factory is basically making cans for Coca-Cola, Labatt, and Molson. Uh, I, I know that there are a few craft brewers that use Crown Holdings cans. I don't know if they're getting them from there or from the U.S. Uh, because I've been told, even by some people that actually work at Crown now, that Crown Holdings basically did those three contracts, and that was it in Toronto. Uh, this this union is pissing me off with this this fight to boycott canned beer because what they're doing, Rexam makes cans, uh, Ball makes cans, Crown makes cans. There's a couple more in North America. There's a bunch in Europe. There's a bunch in China. 
what they're saying is boycott cans. Not boycott these companies that cans were made by us that are still that are now using scab workers. Boycott all cans. Well, now you're cha you're now you're taking away from Rexam, you're taking away from Ball, you're possibly having their workers laid off, you're taking away from craft brewers that aren't using their cans, like say uh, GLB or uh, Double Trouble, um, you're taking possibly away from Crown Holdings, because I know that Cameron's uses Crown Holdings cans, but I have heard these come from the U.S., so the, the U.S. Crown Holdings people now that are not unionized could lose their jobs in the U.S., Okay, you want to you want to boycott your beers, the uh, beers and cans. I get that. I understand why you're doing it because stop this company from making them, but don't hurt everybody else that makes cans that aren't fucking you. This beer I'm drinking has a paragraph written on the side of it, and it says right on this can, by coincidence, it says cans are lighter, chill quicker, can be enjoyed on beaches, sensitive to environments, blah blah blah, and it's the most recycled and most eco-friendly material. Yeah. And this, this is coincidence on the can that I was drinking right now. So The question is, is your can a Crown Holdings can? No, my can looks like it's from China because it's ribbed at the top. Okay. If, if any of you are ever curious if your can is Crown Holdings or not, uh, there would be a crown either engraved on the tab or right here at the tab, or over here with like this can, this can has it here, by the, uh, a little crown by the fucking... Uh -huh. Code. Okay. So See. that would tell you if it's a Crown Holdings can or not. It doesn't tell you whether it's made in Canada or if it's made in the U.S., but it tells you if it's owned by them. And now we don't have to buy their cans. Well, that, that that's my question. <laughs> if, if you're if you're going to boycott their cans, I'm okay with that. Boycott the cans that are made by them. What I'm against is a union coming out and calling out for a boycott of all those cans. Well, all cans, period, without saying whose cans are whose, especially because there are other fucking steel workers that are unionized in Rexam, there's other steel workers that are unionized in Ball, so now you're taking away food from everybody, from the brewers, from the other can manufacturers, everybody, because you've been on strike for 17 months. Yeah, I definitely think that the uh, bad outweighs the good in every sense in that. just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, as I said, I'd be perfectly fine with the with the call for it if they came out and said, this is what contracts we had, boycott these cans. Okay, sure. Yeah, but this is ending up just hurting pretty much everyone. Anyone who makes a can just kind of puts them in a sticky situation. I just see it's a little bit off topic, but I just see kind of like if we're going to use protectionism, then the whole fucking country and everybody has to use it 100%. You can't just take certain sectors and things and use protectionism and then have free market elsewhere. Just The free market's always going to kick the shit out of it eventually. If you can buy shit in China or whatever, if you want to use protectionism, fine. We'll embargo everybody and we'll just buy everything out of Canada and then we can construct our own economy that way. But trying to do both is fucking total mayhem. That's what I think. Anyway. Well, E, what's your thought? Oh, I don't know. know. <laughs> Oh, uh, hi guys. Uh, um, I don't know. I, I don't. Uh, it's it's a union thing. I mean, I'm a pro union guy, even though I've never worked in the union. I've been through work stoppages. It's just it's old school union propaganda shit. And you know, to be honest, yeah, we heard of it, but no one else has. They're not affecting anything. They're just they're grasping at straws. They really have no case. Um, and unfortunately, they're going to lose this battle. It's just a matter of how long they're willing to wait before they concede. So. Yeah, like like I said, I'm I understand I understand why they're on strike. I, I read all that stuff. I I've read a lot of stuff about it. I understand why they're trying that they're angry that there's scab workers there now. But what did you think was going to happen after 17 months? Um, what I what I'm angry about is the fact that their union boss is pushing to boycott all canned beer, and there's a lot more can manufacturers than just Crown Holdings in Toronto. Is there any way to even find out which, uh, like, what breweries use which can manufacturers? I have no idea who anyone uses. Well, I, 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 I you told you how to check if it was Crown. In America, in America, it's like 95% Ball. That's the can company, Ball. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the Crown holdings in the U.S. Like, there is 
three Crown Holdings company uh, factories in the U.S. Most of them ship to Canada. Yeah. Here's the other thing: they're probably not just beer cans, right? No, so, like like I said, uh, uh, makes all kind of stuff. Yeah. Like I said, uh, the the Toronto facility was apparently mostly doing Molson, Labatt, and Coca Cola. Yeah, Mol Molson's so big, they're just gonna get it from somebody else. It's, <laughs> well, they're already, they're already forgotten about. Oh no, Molson's still buying from Crown in Toronto. They're buying. Are they from really? Crown. Yeah, they're buying from the Crown scab workers. Where are they suggesting that they can boycott like fucking cans of pop and shit? Well, no. See, that's that's the thing that's agitating too is they haven't said anything about pop. It's boycott canned beer. Hmm. Uh, I think I agree with you that everyone will probably just laugh at that. I mean, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it, I mean, everybody's busting unions these days. It's, uh, I mean, you're, when you're coming at it with that stance, like, well, let's boycott cans because we want our grandkids to have jobs that, you know, it, it no one's going to side with you. No one's going to sympathize with you. You need to come with a better pro platform, and yeah, you know, it's just yeah, it's, so. it's 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 shitty leadership. It's weak leadership. It's old school, you know, uh, nepotism leadership most likely. So, I, and I that's a, that's a one time I worked in a union and it was like you paid 50 bucks so you didn't get fired it was like the worst fucking thing ever <laughs> exactly it, it made the whole place a shit show but you know that was just we had a, a fucked up union it wasn't even the right union but it was just a big bullshit thing and then when I had safety concerns they told me to go fuck my hat so I quit <laughs> so yeah Greg like I was saying if you want to find out if the company uses uh, crown or not and Amsterdam uses Crown. Cameron's uses Crown. Uh, there was two others that I picked up at the LCBO that did. But um, again, the tab will have a Crown insignia. Right under the tab will, would have a Crown insignia, or the Crown insignia would be like on this can is um, here by the codes. Oh, okay. Right, so that that's how Crown Crown marks its cans. Uh, actually, uh, the other one that uses it is Nickelbrook. And Nickelbrook now wraps their cans, so you don't know that they're crown cans, but the original cans had the crown insignia on them. Yeah. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not planning to boycott anyone using it. Oh, I'm not, I'm not boycotting them either, especially because the union was, we're boycott everybody, not boycott these companies, so I've decided to fuck the union. Yeah. But um, I'm, just, I'm just, if anyone wants to know, and you actually want to boycott the cans that they want you to boycott, that's how you can see if they're if they're ball if they're sorry uh, crown cans or not. Hmm. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm actually kind of surprised that Molson is sticking with them. I mean, they must have a ton of capacity. But the small guys that can understand it's logistically uh, for a craft brewer, you're not going to be buying stuff from China, so you got to you know stay local. So it makes sense. Oh, excuse me. Oh, and a Aaron to that uh to that uh, comment you posted on Facebook. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> what was the comment? Never mind. You know exactly what the comment was. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> <the> fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> it's fuck you guys and your TVBs. I don't know what that means. Oh, no, you don't. Okay. Okay. I, I don't listen. I don't follow everything A says. I could give a shit less about what he says. Oh. It's something that you did to me earlier this week. <laughs> Oh, that, okay. Okay, so anyway, um, Gold Robber posted, he just started drinking St. Ambrose IPA and he can't stop drinking it. I don't, I've never had it. Is uh, Actually, I did have it. I had it at the London Beer Festival two years ago. I didn't think I hated it then. Yeah, it's it, way, way better than the can. Holy shit. Yeah, I was going to say, it is, now that they have the cans out, it's actually quite good in those. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. One more reason to have cans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But their amber, the red beer, St. Amboy, is actually better in the bottle than the can. Hmm. It tastes more maple, maple-like. Sometimes maybe a little bit of oxidation helps out with stuff like that. Mm -hmm. there, was a, there was another great article this week that I didn't read until today. It was posted on my wall a few days ago, and I refused to read it until now. Dale, Dale Brew by Me posted it, so thank you, Dale. Uh, how a tiny brewery run by monks came to make the best beer in the world, and right there is why I didn't read it. Um, <laughs> oh, no, it was eh, it was nothing really too new about that article. Are you talking about the one about uh, the West Vlederland? 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's nothing in that article that. No, it was it was just the title of the of the article that made me not want to read it. You know, um, I'm all about people being able to choose what they think is the best beer period, oh, yeah, and yeah. claiming something as the best beer in the world, I, I don't like. Oh, no. Because Definitely. everyone is born with the exact same palate, because everybody has the same DNA code. Right? I didn't realize though that they were the smallest of the Travis breweries. Uh, I don't know if that's true now that there's the Austrian and the uh, U.S. Trappist breweries out there. Uh, but 4,000 barrels a year is actually a very small amount. But the picture of all their beers and bottles looks a little more than uh, 4,000 yeah. barrels. That looked pretty intense. Yeah. Uh, my, my actual favorite part of the whole article uh, was... Oh, where is it? Uh, i got to find that. One oh, you can buy one case per car. Awesome. Here we go. The gray market. West Valerian 12 sells for four euros a case, less than two dollars a beer. And for that, I would buy cases of it. You know what? For two dollars a beer, I would buy cases of it because it is a good beer. For the fifteen dollars a bottle, I have to pay here. No, thank you. Yeah, but it's actually like it's like twenty five dollars more than that, though, because that's for the beer. But then you have to pay a bottle deposit, and then you have to pay like the case deposit. So like really, that's kind of like sugarcoating a little bit because you have to pay yeah. a little bit more. Okay, but anyway. Which is uh, pretty inexpensive for the best beer in the world. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. again, the monks aren't looking to make a profit in the operation. However, because the beer is available only at the monastery, unless they're trying to buy bricks to build a new wall, a so-called gray market has emerged online in which people try to resell bottles they bought at the Abbey for, for $50 or more per bottle. The monks <laughs> discourage reselling of their beer. And Joe Tucker keeps an eye on Rate Beer's user forums to shut down any attempt to resell of West Valadaren beer. But it still happens from time to time. I loved that line. I <laughs> there are so many beers that are resold, be it at a bar, be it at a store, be it like person to person. He's not stopping shit. But no, I just want to see a monk sitting behind, like, an old CRT, like, Packard Bell computer, like, on a beer advocate forum. He's, like, <laughs> clicking away on his, on his yellow mouse that was once white, but it's so old, it's just, like, so yellow, waiting up for the dial-up to connect. They, and they, need like, to find, they need to get a news crew in there to film him doing that just to put it online. <laughs> him in, like, his, in, his, in his sandals and his monk skirt and everything else just sitting there, that would be amazing. And he types in the comments, hey, stop that. Stop selling that beer. <laughs> yeah, he, click, he keeps clicking the report to moderator button on those things. Report to moderator. We just got Windows Emmy. Is it any good? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, beer snob, well, Jimmy. Any, anything happening in your area? We've never actually uh, chatted with you live yet, so what's going on in your area? Well, uh, I mean, I don't really have anything too crazy going on. I'm about to move from Colorado to Virginia, so... But, um, really, uh, the most exciting thing going on for me is I just got a package from Canada, so I've been drinking a lot of uh, beers from British Columbia, and that's about it for me. As far as the local area goes, it's uh, no, more of the same of the same, you know? That's, that's good, um... Colorado has some great beers. Like most of the things I've had from down there have been pretty damn good. BC actually does make some great beers too. So you're you're lucky I got your package from BC. Yeah, I got. You could have had like Big Rock from Alberta. <laughs> I got uh, Driftwood, the Entangle Hopfenweiss. Uh, I got Phaedra from uh, I think it was Four Winds, and I over here. Hold on one second, I'll grab it. Uh, gold robber, yeah. If I find it in a can, I'll grab it. It's just not been at a beer store near me. That's the reason I haven't. Uh, I don't think this is from BC, but uh, it's the Winter Beard. That's a uh, double chocolate cranberry stout. That's, that's from, from here in Ontario. That's in the scope yeah, of brewing. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm pretty excited about all of that. Uh, which vintage is that? Does it, I, does your bottle say? Let me see. Let me check it out. What was it? If it was the 2014, it was 2012s. If it was an LCBO purchase, or the 2013s, if it was a uh, brewery purchase. But I don't know what they would have sold to uh, to BC. Yeah, I, I don't see it. Uh, I don't see a date on here, as far as I can tell. Actually, that's a small bottle too. That might even just be their fresh one. 
This is the small bottle? <laughs> Dang. I don't know. I really didn't know anything about it, so I just sent some of the stuff up from my seller to the guy in Canada. And so it was, I don't know. I was pretty happy with the trade. Yeah, it's uh, a drift uh, uh, driftwood. There was a lot of beers from them that I've had sent to me that I wasn't a huge fan of. Uh, the the BC market is great with West Coast IPAs, and sometimes mm. they're just too much for me. Um, they're all well made beers. Just some of them aren't aren't to me. Yeah. Uh, Phillips does some good beers over there too. Uh, uh, what's Red Ra uh, Red uh, City Brewing? City Brewing does some good stuff too. Well, um, apparently they told me that. Uh, four wins that Phaedra was rated number two in British Columbia. That's just what people... Oh, I, I, four wins I've had their, their Saison. It was like a... Uh, oh, it was weird. It was... Uh, it, it wasn't Saison-like, but it was really good at the same time. Yeah, well, this thing was like West Coast IPA, except it was made with uh, like a Belgian white type yeast. So there were so many crazy esters going on. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm hooked on everything you got me. I'm looking to get some more shit from Canada. Yeah, see, that, that's the thing we have is a lot of our beers are as good or, well, on I should say on par because saying better just gets people up in their arms. <laughs> our beers are on par with a lot of great American beers. Just nobody can get them because they're all stuck up here. The yeah. things you guys get from us is like Labatt, Canadian, shit like that. Uh, and the stuff that's hitting the U.S., most of it is Mill Street and shit like that. So, I mean, Mill Street makes a quality beer, but is it good? It's not something I would go out of my way to get ever. Yeah, I haven't got my hands on that yet. Uh, I, there is one other thing. I'm uh, I'm originally from Alabama, and uh, I don't know if anybody saw this article, but recently uh, I've, I've I've been advocating that Alabama is one of the fastest growing beer scenes in America right now. If any of y'all can get your hands on their stuff, anything from Alabama, I do recommend it. But recently they just took first place and tenth place for uh, best stouts in America, so that was pretty cool. Uh, it was El Gordo from Good People Brewing in Alabama, uh, Birmingham, and Like a Stout. I have that one right here sitting beside me. I got that one from uh, Huntsville, Alabama. So I don't know. Uh, I'm pretty excited about that scene coming up. There it is. Sorry, guys. My case of beer went missing. <laughs> I found it. Think your wife stole it? No, my wife wouldn't touch this shit. <laughs> I'm gonna. I, I think I'm actually gonna get her to review this with me. I think I'll do it tomorrow. Uh, I know Cam wanted me to do it tonight, but I can't read this can. I'm blind. <laughs> I mean, the can. The can's amazing, but it's so. I can't read any of it. This is a great label. It is. I love the label. Like. I love your Mr. and Mr. And Mrs. Rhino reviews. They're always the funniest. Boy, because she just hates and loathes every second from there. What? Yeah. 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 Probably save that beer for when I'm down. Hey, but that's oh. what I'm going to say. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> Suckers. What's going on? I got a headset. Jerks. Ah, it's good. No, uh, I, I, I first off, first and foremost, you tell Steve to make that beer again. The, uh, <laughs> late pumpkin. You tell him to make it again. You tell him if he won't, I'm going to kick him in the balls and he won't be able to have an army of children anymore. And that's just the way it is. Oh. Yeah, next time I see you, I'll give you all that, uh, the money I owe you for saying all those nice things. Yeah. I appreciate good. it, though. Good. That whole $2 divided me a burger. <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't tried the Iron Brew beer yet. I'm still scared of it, to be honest with you. That's pretty good, man. Uh, everybody tells me it's really good, but haggis spices and iron brew just scares me. I mean, it's a great concept. I think a scotch ale with haggis, haggis spices and iron brew is just amazing, but uh, it scares me. And I, I really think that if I like it, I'm going to tell, I'm going to do the whole review saying how much I like it, and I'm going to give it a one out of ten just to piss off the view. <laughs> uh, what, what is exactly is iron brew? Iron brew is a Scottish soda pop. I believe it's the. Oh. Uh, I think it's the number one soft drink in um, Scotland, it is, yeah. even more so than Coke. It's uh, it's kind of like a weird orangish color. It's uh, I can't, I don't even know how to explain its taste. I've only had the North American version, which isn't the same as the Scottish version. I thought it uh, smelled like orange Jello and tasted like a poor man's cream soda. Yeah, that's actually probably a good way to explain it. It was pretty good, though. That being said. 
I'll do a review of it. I'm going to Scotland the end of March, so. Nice. It's uh, it's nice to see everybody. It's been a while. I apologize, but uh, I, fin I finally yep. went and bought a headset. Ooh, ooh. Sorry, guys. Ooh. I just got some Ontario beer news that I did not know, and I'm glad about it. Duchette, thank you. Uh, did I hear that the GRB got a new head brewer and Rob left? Things can't get worse. No, I did not, and you're right. That buttery taste may not be in their beer anymore. They might actually be able to make beer that isn't filled with fucking flaws. Yes! <laughs> I still think Devin gets that is big. Uh, he got a head drop, but the computer died again. Oh, there's some horrible noise going on in there. Is it still bad? I think it's just when I talk now. No, I can hear you just fine. I don't think it's your head, so there was some weird noise that just happened. Yeah. Hey, what know. was that really weird noise? I used to be. Uh, Accused of all these phantom noises going on, so I finally <laughs> well, I went out and spent ten bucks tonight. Christ! Hey, hey, Dev, you, hey, Dev, you been a Black Swan yet? Uh, no, I'm actually hoping to go up on Saturday and uh, and check out their stuff. Never been to uh, Stratford either, so yeah. If you, think, if you about get forty there, minutes away, if you get there, yeah, they still owe me money. Hey, if I no, go to the, no. uh, I'll bug if em. you get there, they'll say hi to them for me. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to get up there. I just haven't been able to. Go ahead there, Jay. If I go to the uh, Dominion of Canada in in June, maybe I can get together with some Canadian beer enthusiasts. Oh, you're, you can find those easily. You just have to look at the street corners. When I went to Canada in 2007, I mostly ran into cigarette enthusiasts. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of those, too. Mm -hmm. Even though the cigarettes were $12 a pack. Oh, they're more expensive now, and you still have just as many enthusiasts. And, and they can't smoke them anywhere. Oh, yeah. Can't smoke them at bars, restaurants, patios, in front of buildings, in parking lots, under yeah, a roof. Right. Well, that's communism, but... Why go? Let's not get into that right now. But um, <laughs> being that I'm anti-communist, but I did get paid to drink at work today, and I was actually ordered to drink at work today. Those are always the best days. They are the best days. I love first when time, I get paid to drink cognac. First time in my life I was ever told by my boss, "I want you to sit at this table and drink these six beers yep. on the clock." What was wrong with them? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Oh, I'm sorry to uh, crash your uh, topic, Chad. No, we weren't. All, we weren't actually on a topic right now. Sorry. We were kind of in the lull between a topic. Yeah. Uh, so well, what, what happened? Okay. I was at work and I said, "Let me go get some water before I go get some lunch." So I was drinking a sip of water, and the boss said, uh, Ronald, that's what they call me at work, you know, Ronald. Ronald, could you come here for a moment? And I said, uh-oh, what happened now? So I thought, well, let's see what happens. So he says, come into this room with me. <laughs> so I said, okay. So I go into the room, and he says, I want you to sit down and drink each one of these beers and tell me if you think we should carry it in this store. I said, this is a project I think I can work on. Okay, boss, I'll do it. <laughs> so, uh, I'm still drinking on them now. It's been since uh, 11 o'clock this morning, but he, I, I, I said, well, hell. So, I started drinking them, and I, he had McKellar. I had never heard many of these beers. He had McKellar Beer Geek Breakfast beer. Mm -hmm. People are mm -hmm. always trying to hunt that one down. First time I ever heard of it. Great stuff. 8% alcohol, so I had to drink that. And I'm on an empty stomach, too, so I had to drive home, and I said, I have to go home and eat. So I said, you know what, hell, I'll make a crazy video. So I made a video while I was drinking them and reviewing them called uh, Drunk by Request. So I made a video called Drunk by Request. All right, and then Wasatch Apple a Day, well, that wasn't very good. They're one of those insipid apple ales. Uh, well, you'll do better getting Red's Wicked Apple Ale from Miller, frankly. All right, next I had Sobeck and Set from Finch's Beer Company in Chicago, Black IPA, 8% alcohol, big can, interesting, 
and delicious. Also, I had um, he wanted me to drink um, um, Mendocino Imperial IPA, 10% alcohol. Mendocino. Um, uh, it was another Imperial IPA. They make two different IP Imperial IPAs, which was about 8%. And then he wanted me to drink John Courage Russian Imperial Stout, which is, what, 10%? So <laughs> that was an interesting day of work, to say the least. Um, Courage is one of my favorite he tells Russian me, Stouts of all time. Huh? Courage is one of my favorite Russian Imperial Stouts of all time. Oh, yeah, it's beyond belief. He tells me, I don't think this is going to affect your job performance. <laughs> I said, oh, yeah. I said, oh, yeah. So anyway, it was, uh, it was uh, interesting. I'm still drinking through the uh, the stash. And how do you turn down an order like that? I mean, you're supposed to do what you're told at work, so. Do you decide if you're going to carry any of them? I told him, I said, oh, yes. Well, you already had the John Courage Imperial Russian Stout. I said, you got to keep this. He said, oh, yeah, we're going to keep it. He said, I don't want to keep those Mendocino beers, though. They never sold before. I said, yeah, but now that you're going to go to singles, you're going to sell singles, they might move because nobody wanted to lay out the money for the six-packs. He said, yeah, okay. So, you know, I didn't want to be rude, so I did bring the beers home, and I'm still drinking on them, just to be fair. I, but I told him, I said, don't, don't bring in that apple ale. That stuff is trash, you know. Anyway, all, you know, five out of six, I said, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta have it on the shelf. So anyway, I just brought that up because it was, it was so bizarre, you know. Yeah. See, I, uh, I do tastings at work quite often, but then I work as a bartender and everything else, so it's normal. Yeah, you have to do it. Yeah. yeah I thought, I thought you'd appreciate this, there, uh, Ron. O'Keefe. Yeah, one of the old O'Keefe glasses from when. Uh, before they were even curling, it just has O'Keefe. You know how many O'Keefe beers I've had in my life? I'm going to guess zero. Exactly none. <laughs> <laughs> and I still thought you'd think it's interesting because it's it's history. Oh, yeah, it's an awesome glass. I mean, I would love to try O'Keefe's and Rickard's and uh, all these Molson and um, Labatt beers that I can't get my hands on. I mean, I'd be like a little kid in a candy shop. The beer oh, snobs the beer snobs would probably hope that I fell into a street and got run over by a truck, but I wouldn't care. Wow. Rickards is Canadian? I didn't even know that. Okay, you're kicked out of the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't drink it that much. Sorry. I like the Rickards white. It wasn't bad. Isn't Rickards like a mimic of, of, of uh, um, what's that word? Um, Blue Moon? Well, Rickards was out long before Blue Moon. Uh, Rickards came out with a Rickards. Rick, Rickards was Rickards Red first. Uh, then you had Rickards uh, Dark. Uh, Rickards Rickards White. Uh, their Pilsner, which is Rickards Blonde. Uh, they had a Honey Brown, which was disgusting. Um, what are they? What else have they? Uh, the Cardigan was really good, and the Oak House. The Oak House was a poor, poor man's innocent gun. Yeah, Lederhosen um, was this year. Well, let me yeah, ask. Lederhosen was this year. Was Rickards an independent company that got bought out by a major company, or was it always part of a major company? Uh, Rickards was an independent company at first. <laughs> okay. Whereas Blue Moon was never independent; it was started by Coors. Yeah. Rickards is one of those uh, introductory beers. A lot of people, the first got into even just dark beers, were around me anyway. We're trying Rickards Red, and it was on draft in a lot of. Of average dudes' bars and shit, like little, ca little casino bars and shit. Yeah, Rick so I drank a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah, Rickards White is one of the beers that got me into craft beer, and frankly, having tasted them both, I think Rickards White and Blue Moon are basically the same beer. Ah, that's fascinating. Rickards White is not too bad, if I remember correctly. No, it's still not a bad beer to drink, but it's not terrible by any means. Okay, let me ask this question. Have any of y'all ever had, and I'm sorry I say y'all a lot because that's what I say. It means you hey. all. It's perfectly good English, you all. <laughs> I got it. Have y'all ever... Are, 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 are just, rem just remember that the uh, plural form of y'all is all y'all. 
<laughs> That's how you should be probably addressing this. <laughs> hey, I can I can walk out of this chat right now. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if that's possible, but go ahead. I can click off of it. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, sorry to interrupt. All y'all. <laughs> Was he? Go ahead. I don't need go ahead. This. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, what I was trying to say was that I did... How, how many of y'all have had Red's Apple Ale? I have. Yeah. Okay, well, I did some deep research on Red's. All right. Come to find out, Red's Apple Ale was started in South Africa in 1996, which huh. to me was fascinating. And then somehow it insinuated its way across the ocean became part of Miller Coors. So... You never know about these little brands of beer. Well, I, I don't know. It kind of, uh, Reds has that kind of uh, corn syrupy taste that I get out of a lot of these big name beers. So I mean, I'm not surprised that it's owned by, you know, a big conglomerate or anything. But uh, I mean, there's a lot of beers coming out of South Africa that are actually gaining a lot of traction. I was luckily able to pick up uh, this bottle of mead the other day from South Africa, but. Yeah, again, not surprised about Reds being owned. Well, you know, I don't know if Reds started as an independent company and was bought out by South African beverages, but um, I will say this. I'm not a fan of Reds Apple Ale by any stretch of the imagination. Smart in man. Fact, in fact, I have a lot of contempt for it. But <laughs> Agreed. But, on the other hand, I do think it is better than this craft beer, Wasatch, Apple a Day, Apple Ale. Really? Yeah. Uh, apple, apple beers are weird because you get like one of three things. You either get super sweet fake, you get just this weird sweet that doesn't mix right with the hops, or you get like bitter apple peel and that's it. No, it apple I actually think is one of the... Apple and blueberry I think are the two fruits that should not be in beers because they are never done very well. <laughs> yes, and I 100% agree. But how many of y'all have had wit, uh, Red's Wicked Apple? 8%. No, I haven't had that one. No, I haven't been able to get that floor, one. It will floor you. I'm telling you right now, it's a 24-ounce can, which is what in uh, Canadian? Uh, 710 milliliters? Yeah. I'm telling you right now, I was one-third through that can, and I could not walk straight across a room. <laughs> Not walk straight, and I was slurring every s, every s that came out of my mouth. So it's profound in the sense of alcohol delivery. Now, but did it taste better? It, it wasn't bad. It was. I didn't hate it. You know, if you watch the video, I said, you know, I don't hate this. I want to hate it. <laughs> I should hate it. But. You know, I feel like I should be honest when I do these videos, so I couldn't make myself say I hated it. Not that I would ever buy it again, but it, it does uh, knock you for a loop. I'll say that. Well, anyway, okay, I'll shut up. You know who can't walk straight anytime? Devin. <laughs> Even when he's sober? Uh, yeah, the beard weighs him down. <laughs> More of a swagger, I like to think. <laughs> Uh, in some other uh, Ontario brewing, I, guess, I don't know if it's Ontario brewing news, I guess, but uh, I know that Forked River has got a position open that they're looking to hire for. Uh, their delivery driver and an assistant, is it not? That is, I would, uh, I'm not, I didn't really look at the posting, but uh, I got to spend a day with them before, and it was fantastic. They'd be good guys to work for. So. Yeah, they're they're all actually good guys, all of them. I know uh, Al, I know Albert from uh, Honey uh, Homestead there. Uh, Hummingbird Homestead was going to apply. Yeah, I was talking to him tonight, actually. Um, but yeah, uh, great guys. Be a cool place to work. Yeah, if you're in if you're in the London area, they are great uh, guys. They have it a great spot. They make some great beer. Yeah, they do. It's good to see all these job openings happening in the industry too. And that's the case in macro or micro. Yeah, it's great to see a growth. Period. As if if there's growth, it's great. If if jobs are shrinking, you know you have a problem. I mean, with with the amount of breweries we have, with the amount of stone, the stone and mortar breweries we have, the fact that there's still growth coming is is an amazing thing. 
These guys are brewed in Oakville. I just don't know if they're um, if they're Camerons or if they're Trafalgar. They're canned, so I'm assuming, and I know you shouldn't assume, but since it's canned, I'm assuming uh, Camerons because Camerons has a canning line. But uh, I don't think Trafalgar does. I've never seen a Trafalgar can in my life. I doubt he would have spent the money. It's too much water. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I that I was trying to look on here to see if there was an address or anything, but like I said, I can't read anything. They have ingredients on here. Here, uh, I don't know. Maybe you guys can make out the ingredients. I can't make out shit on this can. I have to Google that. No, you have to Google that. Oh, where they are at? No, your can. Yeah, it's too jumpy. But anyway. Yeah, Trafalgar didn't buy uh, Trafalgar didn't buy a cane line. They spent all their money on making moonshine. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, where I'm thinking. So it must be it must be contract brewed at Cameron's, but I wouldn't think Cameron's had any extra space because Cameron's just keeps pumping out the seasonals and the and the cascales and everything else. What did Is you there... think of the peach mead? The peach mead is actually pretty good. The Trafalgar peach mead. You know what? Of all the things Michael Arnold makes, his meads aren't bad. They're not great meads, but they're not bad. A lot of his beers are bad, but his meads are actually made fairly well. Um, and you, the best part about his beers is you can tell him that there's a brewing fault, and you can have hundreds of people tell him that there's a brewing fault, and he tells you to fuck off, and your palate's stupid. Sounds <laughs> like some people I know. <laughs> oh, are you talking about all of us? <laughs> No, you know what I'm talking about. Cheers, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, Chad, is there a? I know there are some places in the states a you know, and they have it in, uh, you know, the VQA or whatever VQ. Oh, you know, they have a, a truck that drives around and bottling wine. Do they have a truck that drives around canning beer in Ontario? I know they do in the states. Oh, they yeah. There, there is a mobile a, canning company. Yeah, there's a mobile canning company out of Toronto. I'm wondering if they could be doing it right. Yeah, that is true. I mean, I know that Trafalgar has extra space, so they could be they could be contracting at Trafalgar, and these guys could come and tan it at Trafalgar for them. Yeah. You know what? Thanks for even bringing that up. I forgot all about that. That is actually a very cool little company. Uh, you know, you go around, you have a you have a mini canning line, you set up the canning line, you can for the brewery for the day, and then you drive away. So they're just renting your services. Hopefully you get some low fills too. What, uh, isn't that, um, who are those people that make hipster beer? Isn't that what that company? Oh, fucking oh. hell. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> uh, the, the hipster beer one. There's Which hipster beer? Isn't there a couple? They're all hipster beers. <laughs> no, no, but I mean that's a that's a name of. Yeah, a he's actually talking about a name. There is a there's a couple that are actually hipster. And there's a hipster pilsner and a evil hipster. And Don't they do that? They set uh, up in a uh, brewery and they um. Evil twin does one. It looks yeah, like. that's evil. what I'm talking about. Evil yeah. twin. Don't they go around and do different beer? Uh, like a like gypsy brewery kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, evil twins a gypsy brewer. They move yeah. from brewery to brewery. Yeah, but they use their. They have equipment at those breweries yeah, already. They, they don't like to bring in an ex outside equipment. Yeah. Yeah. Oh right, they're using the equipment on hand. Yeah. yeah, like, I'm trying to figure out where this is brewed. It's brewed in Oakville, so there's only two breweries there. One has a canning line, one doesn't, and this is canned. But the one with the canning line doesn't usually have extra space to have somebody there contracting. So what we're, what, what the hypothesis that you were put out was that they're using the, uh, the Toronto mobile canning service that will show up and set up a canning line for the day. Interesting. Hey, back to uh, Ontario beer for a second. I was going to tell you guys, um, Black Swan. I was there today, Chad. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and Dev, I I I, and I dropped your name. I said there'll be a, a little man with a big beer that comes in here. I'm sure at some <laughs> point. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping to on Saturday, like I said. Yeah. So they'll be looking out for you. Ryan's a good guy. Um, and uh, I spent about a good hour with them. Uh, they're really nice people, for sure. Yeah, they keep I, asking me to come out. It just hasn't worked out yet. Yeah, yeah. And he did mention that he owes you money. He even said that to me. <laughs> That's funny. Cause I, I did drop your name. I said, oh, yeah, I heard about you guys through, uh, through chat. He's like, oh, yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, shoot, I owe him money. So. <laughs> yeah, the uh, We've got a beer town in Waterloo that has them on tap. And 
for pretty much every time I, I, I pop in there, I have a pint of their porter. Uh, I've quite enjoyed it. I'd be yeah. curious to try um, their other brands. I don't know if they still have. I think they've got four out now. Yeah, uh, I, hopefully they're all still there on Saturday. Yeah, they had uh, quite a few, and they just uh, I, I got one of the first pours off of their Imperial Blonde they just finished up. Um, actually, it was quite good. They call it uh, the Scenic Route or something like that. Really good, actually. It's, it was actually hop forward for a Blondale. I mean, I was quite taken back by how flavorful it was. And it was big. It had a big mouth on it, too. It was nice. Are they um, bottling, too? No, I just I, I didn't see any bottles. I just saw um, little half growlers and regular growlers, sir. Okay, I was hoping to bring some home for a certain friend. But uh, uh, I guess you'll have to wait, Mr. Rhino. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I'm still trying to get up there. Just nobody, nobody wants to drive up there with me. It's not that far away. Uh, yeah, yes, it is. It's, it's, I was driving up there. I felt like I was going to Hill Farms. I swear, it's just all those back. Well, roads. maybe oh. for you, but from from here to there is only two hours away. That's the same as we take to go to my mother-in-law's. I mean, it's mm. not that far from Niagara Falls. Uh, Scott Scott never has the days off that I have off. Uh, Simon. Simon's free now because of bad things have happened, but he still works his 10-hour shifts. Um, Paul's car, Paul won't leave Ni uh, St. Catharines right now because he's afraid his car is just going to die on him, uh, which is probably possible. It's pulling around his 360-pound ass and my 300-pound ass quite often. Um, uh, my, my wife won't take me to a brewery unless I promise her very bad things that I don't want to have to promise my wife. So <laughs> I've, been, I've been stuck here. So well, if, you find some, get there. if you find someone to take you, you can always stop here in Waterloo. I do have this uh, beautiful futon um, that you could crash on. Well, I, I, I've tossed the idea to your brother, too, but you know, uh, given his, his work schedule. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hope he's not watching and saw that I laughed at that. Yeah. What, about, <laughs> what about Hamilton, Ontario? Do they have breweries there? Uh, not yet, but there will be three of them sometime this year. Possibly four. Uh, uh, Arts and Science Brewing will be opening in Hamilton. Arts and Science Brewing is a collaboration between Nickelbrook and Collective Arts. They're both in Burlington, but they will. They bought the old Lakeport facility, and they've already filled it with giant fucking tanks, so it's going to be open soon. Garden City Brewers is in Hamilton. They should have a building soon. The Hamilton Brewing Company should have its building soon. And uh, Clifford Brewing Company, who I just drank his uh, porter and gave it a 9.75 out of 10. Great, great porter. Wow. So did, did Ham Hamilton ever have any kind of history of brewing? or is that uh, they, had, uh, they had Lakeport, which was our budget beer company. They got bought out by Labatt. Steeler beer. Had, yeah, they had steel, and they had this. They had uh, Hamilton's own Hamilton Mountain beer. Oh, well, it's Hamilton what? Mountain. It's not Hamilton, if you ask me. It's Where's either that? Dundas or Ancaster. Or... When's that from? Um, late 70s, early 80s. Can you show that again? Uh, oh, yeah, Hamilton has Brooks House, which has it is a... Uh, a brew pub that has a little. I mean, they have. They did a collaboration with Nickelbrook actually, and I had one of theirs today. It was really good. So I guess there's there is some brewing going on in Hamilton. Yeah, it, uh, it was it was dead after Lakeport was sold because Labatt closed that plant down right away. But it's it's now reemerging. Speaking of uh, old ass brews, I uh, my brother and I went to a flea market in St. Catharines a couple months ago, and I found a bottle of. Uh, I believe it was Carling O'Keefe's Trilite. It was like 2.5%, and I believe they stopped making it in 89. And we also got a bottle of uh, Labatt's uh, Twist Shandy, which I think they stopped making in 88. Uh, they both were undercarbonated and taste terrible, just so you guys know. <laughs> wow. And uh, there's a nice, nice little bit of black stuff in the bottom of the bottle, too. How much of it did you drink? Because when we do the aged beer reviews... Um, it shouldn't kill you, but it might give you disgusting yeah. diarrhea. So poured out usually a couple of sips, and that's it. Yeah, we, we we poured out about like three quarters of each bottle into the glasses, and then like we got uh, this. Then we, we have this here before we dump the bottom of it. You ready yeah. for this one? Wow! Oh, watch this! Watch this! Ooh. 
Yeah, well, what's the fun of a beer? You need diarrhea. Hey, what year is that from? That's like a. That's like a. That's like. That's like a week old growler. Holy shit. <laughs> that must be from 1974. Uh, probably around then. I think this is uh, right around when they came out with the 50. Uh, the, shan the Shandy, I was a bit concerned about. It was 2.3% uh, and in a green bottle. And, uh, I just figured the lemonade would spoil or something, but it actually tasted better than the uh, Trilite beer. Now, I imagine the pH level in that probably kept it uh, kept it clean. Yeah, I don't know. It was just it was pretty messed up. Um, so I think that's that might be a new thing. I got to check the flea markets here in Waterloo and see what other well, kind of. Well, again, there there, there is this, which uh, is Miller High. Yeah, Miller High Life. Looks like it's a brown bottle. It's actually a clear bottle. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Oh I, yeah. I, oh my god. Please don't oh, drink yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, I will. And the food pairing with that is about a, a, a three-week-old three hot dog that's been rotating on those shitty 7-Eleven things for... Uh, just, yeah. look, look, if you can see where the air bubble is, the... Oh, yeah, you really can't. But the air bubble, this whole part of the bottom part of the bottle is actually all brown. Don't drink that. Let's show the bottle again, the whole bottle. That's from, like, 1977, uh, huh? Not Is the cap sure. rusted? Oh yeah, the cap. It has to be rusted. It's not as cool to drink. <laughs> God. Speaking of uh, three-week-old hot dogs, uh, last time I was home, my brother and I brewed a. Uh, <laughs> we brewed a, a, a uh, yeah, a pumpkin hot dog beer called Halloweener. <laughs> Oh my uh, God! What? You guys can <laughs> hopefully. I have a couple bottles left for the beer fest. Maybe you guys can try it out. Only a couple bottles left. What are you guys chugging this stuff? It must be awesome. No, it, it's still carbonating. I'm hoping that it actually works out so that we can do it big time. Well, well if, you're gonna, if, 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 if you're gonna take a wiener, you're gonna chug a wiener. So is that a homebrew? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a homebrew. Oh, okay. We all, we all got to have lunch out of it, so it worked out. Okay. Nice. I'm very, I'm very hot dog oriented, so I was asking. Yeah, you look like a man who likes his wieners. Hey, -o. I'm very big on. <laughs> Someone had to do it. Mouth. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> hot dog oriented. That's I like that. Hey, hey, how many of you? <laughs> it can go well, so many directions. <laughs> some, what you the had some of Sky. The fact. You had some of Simon's I like wieners. wieners in my mouth. It's a fact. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> Ron keeps lobbing them up. <laughs> Gee had some of Simon's wiener. Did you like Simon's wiener, Gee? Oh, yeah, I put it all in my mouth. Delicious. <laughs> Simon butchers up some good hot dogs. And, and some nice burgers. Yeah. We saw Paul take a whole steak in the mouth, too. Oh, yeah, we saw Paul take a whole steak. Making me hungry. <laughs> So this was a uh, this was an article that was shared to me by uh, Matt here. This is uh from what the drunkard, uh, modern drunkard, Mar modern drunkard. Yeah, so modern drunkard magazine, and this is talking about the uh, Great American Beer Festival. And since we have a guy from Colorado, it's kind of uh, good to talk about. Uh, I actually laughed at some of these. It says the ten things that suck about well, the ten things that make the GABF suck. Anyway, the it first was, one is... It's funny because it's true. That's why it's funny. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to read everything. <laughs> I can goes. guess all of them before you read them. Okay. The, the first one is the one-ounce pours. Okay, I'm going to go with this right off the bat. I'm not even going to read it. Uh, you know it's about keeping people safe and all that. You know what? Don't serve them until they're falling over. There, you kept them safe. But one ounce pours, you can't figure out anything about a beer in one ounce. Uh, even four ounce pours, which is the normal for Ontario craft, uh, Ontario beer festivals, is a little low. But we do the four ounce pours so that you can actually probably have ten to twenty fucking uh, drinks throughout the day. But a one ounce pour, that's like uh, um, I'm done. I need a new beer. You know, like it's a joke. Who? Why would you pay the money to go in there for a one ounce pour? Is all the beer free there, or do you have to buy tickets? No, it's, I think it's free. It's all free. Well, it's not free. It's in the entry. Yeah, price. it's unlimited yeah. pours. It's unlimited okay. pours. But still, at one ounce, you're not going to get that many pours throughout the whole day, especially with yeah. the amount of people there. Yeah, at a slaughter at a slaughterhouse, all the cows drink for free too. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, the second one is judges wearing medals. Um, what? And that. 
that is actually pretty awesome. Uh, the judges walking around <laughs> wearing their judging medals and stuff. And um, oh, Jesus! Yeah, that's uh. That's Sounds great. like it'd be a culture to me. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to send Stephen Beaumont a message after I'm done this, and I'm going to say, when you're at the GABF as a judge, do you wear a medal? Because if you do, I'm kicking you the next time I see you. <laughs> That's just the way it's going to be. Like that. I, I, you know, when when we did the Millennium Buzz review, and uh, Tim trolled trolled people for the whole ten minute review, saying that if they were wearing something with a pot leaf on them, they were going to he was going to push them down in a puddle. If I'm at a beer festival that has judges and you're walking around with a medal, I'm pushing you into a puddle. It's just going to happen, Good. and I'm going to push you down again as you get up. Good. That's that's what's going to happen. Good. Number that's, three. That's justified violence. Okay, go on. Number three is the privileges of sponsorship. Uh, okay, I could understand that. You see that at a lot of places. Uh. The Toronto craft beer, the great, what is, what is it? The Toronto Festival of Beer. It is sponsored big time by Moosehead, Labatt, and Molson. They all have giant lounges. Uh, they have huge amounts of space that's given to them. Uh, truthfully, every every vendor that's in a festival should be equal. Uh, craft beer festivals have the same thing. The uh, the craft beer festival here in St. Catharines that happened in the summer had a Mill Street lounge where Mill Street paid extra money to have a huge section just devoted to them. Sponsorship shouldn't, especially as a vendor, shouldn't exist. Uh, sponsorship as an outside vendor, sure, whatever, if you're somebody that isn't a beer company. But all the beer companies should be on even ground, no matter how big or how small. That's well, the, my opinion, at least. The big, the big defense on that one, which he brought up in, in, in the article, was it, when you enter your beer in the festival, the only way to really get your beer into it, because so many people enter, that in order to enter early, you have to be a featured sponsor. In order to be a featured sponsor, it's between four to $20,000 per brewery. So, like, and it's a sliding scale based on how big your brewery is, which, one, is just fucked up to begin with. I mean, paying money to get in is messed up, but having a sliding scale is even worse. So that was, like, the, the sticking point for me is that it was not so much the sponsorship part, but be like, oh, yeah, if you want to sponsor the, um, at the GABF, um, you can, but really to get, only, to get your beer in, you have to sponsor. It's like almost like backdoor, like, you know what I mean, extortion. Yeah, okay. Uh, number four. Number four actually pisses me off. It happens all over all over here too. Zombie zombie tables. Where the uh, where the table is is ran by a volunteer who knows nothing about the brewery, oh nothing about God. the beer. That's that the worst thing ever. Uh, I've had so frustrating. Up. And you know what? You go to festivals like the Toronto Festival of Beer, they might not be local volunteers, they're just like modeling girls that have been hired to make you go to that table. And you walk up and you're like, what's the ABV of this beer? Oh, I don't know. It's got a nice, it's got a nice clean finish. <laughs> that. They don't even know what a nice clean finish is. They just right. know that they're being paid or they're volunteering to just go and pour this beer. And that pisses me off that, uh, especially at festivals like here in Ontario that aren't exactly the same as here, where most of the time the brewer is there, you should have somebody at that table that knows your beer. You should never have somebody know, but... ask a question, especially a question as simple as what's the ABV and not but be able time, to get an answer. But time out, but time out though. All this beer culture talk is nice, but if the girl's nice looking and you talk to her and you get a date, doesn't that trump all the beer geekiness? No. 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 Squash it right now. Hey. Everybody, hey. Raise your hand if you pulled a girl from a beer festival. If I what? Nobody. If you pulled a girl from a beer festival. I haven't tried. Oh, I, I have they, they, they like army I guys. I probably will. So don't don't hate on me because. <laughs> no, I don't care how hot they are. If I'm if I'm at a beer festival, I'm at a beer festival because I want to try the beer and I want to know about the beer. If I walk up and, uh, and I, it's not, I'm not even asking hard questions. I'm not asking what type of malts do you have in here? What type of hops? What uh what what temperature did you ferment at? I'm asking what's the ABV. And you can't tell me that? No. Get the fuck away from this table. Come on, Chad. Yeah, see how it works. I mean, come on. I mean, for real. In my in my area, it's even worse because, like, like they won't even staff, like, as far as uh, Jay saying, the hot girl. They'll staff, like, a 
uh, like a distributor rep who's just like almost like giving you like the strip club voice. Be like, oh yeah, I have this on tap, and uh, hey, how about this? And uh, oh, this beer's that good. You know what I mean? And it's just like right. Well, you know, like they're, they're trying to give you like the the shill play as opposed to even not. I'd rather not know anything than trying to give me that angle. Right. Yeah. yeah well, I, I understand that. I understand that. But um, how many people out there are like us? Not too many. You'd be surprised. We're the uh, we're the uh, um, what do you call it? Um, Minority. Quaint, we're the quaint eccentric beer enthusiast. Most people have regular lives where they just drink beer for general principles, not do all this deep speculative uh, beer studies. You know, I mean, let's I put it in perspective. That. I would agree with that. I think I think there's a lot of people. I mean, dude, there's ten of us on YouTube right now talking about beer and we're drinking in our houses by ourselves. You know, we are we are we are the minority. But if you're talking about the grand, the, the bigger scheme of things, where there's a lot of people that give a shit. I know a lot of people that I know go to the uh, beer beer festivals to talk to a brewer when they go to their first one or their second one or third one where they've never been to one before and they actually want to talk to a brewer and all they get is like a, a distributor rep or just somebody that they're like what's going on like I don't understand what's going on and that's that's the point I, I understand yeah, what you're yeah. saying Matthew but um you know you got you know, some, something as big as the GABF okay maybe the TFOB the Toronto Festival Beer which is probably our equivalent to the GABF okay maybe they're giant sponsorship ridden uh get everybody in, get them drunk type of things, at least the TFOB is. But when you go to something, say, like the uh, London, the Forest City Craft Beer Festival, okay? Forest City Craft Beer Festival. It's a festival of just craft beers. And you walk up to a table that has a uh, gluten-free brewery there, and you're like, and it's an Ontario gluten-free brewery that you've never heard of, and you're asking what type of things, like what they use to make that gluten-free beer. Because gluten-free beer can be a lot of different things. And he looks at you and goes, oh... I'm just a volunteer. I know nothing. Yeah. What? Yeah, what do you? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you could go home and look at it, look that up on the internet. You know what I mean? It's like um, I'm not in front of an internet. Well, I'm at a beer festival right there. I want to know then what I'm drinking. I want to know if I'm drinking sorghum. I want to know if I'm drinking millet, buckwheat, uh, water chestnuts. What am? What is the fermentable I'm drinking? Yeah, but I'm I mean, craft beer know, festival. I paid extra know, money to walk into a craft beer festival that is all craft breweries. How did this craft brewery not care enough when it's a fucking niche craft brewery to send somebody there? Yeah, I, I think I know what you're saying. Like, you, uh, they can't. You can't expect volunteers to know everything, no, but they should I'm at not, least. They I'm should, not. Yeah, I'm not, I'm I'm not they really should give them a, a list. Volunteers at the table that doesn't know it. I'm not mad that the volunteer doesn't know it. Yeah, I'm they mad should that have the been informed. Put this volunteer yeah. there. Well, okay, yeah. so uh, they, they should give them a list. I, I agree with you. Like they should like give them a little bit of training, you know. Because I mean? they don't care. If you go to the if you go to the Ontario Oyster Festival and you go to a table and say, Oh, um, this oyster is really salty, do you think it it's comparable to the oysters that a person can get in Thailand in the fall? They'll look at they'll look at you like you're insane. They don't know. They don't study oysters. The girl just got hired because she needs a weekend job, right? I mean, it's a shame. Well, but it's here, true. here is where I see the difference, and not the difference, but the problem is that I, a beer distributing rights are sold. That's exactly what so, I was about to mention. Okay, and they're sold to regions. They're sold to areas. So when a person throws a beer festival, they're not contacting the brewery. Uh, sometimes maybe sometimes they have to, but a lot of times they're well, see, that, that's, that's you guys in the U.S. Here well, in Canada, yeah. here in Ontario, we're contacting the brewer. The brewer is sending us one of their staff members. That's what the brewer I know. It's all it's unicorns and rainbows up there. I understand. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to be funny, but uh, no, no, they, I, I have I have 26 I have 26 breweries coming to my festival. I did not talk to one distributor. I talked to the owners of each brewery. The owners or one of their brewers or one of their one of their assistants or something will be at the festival serving that beer. It's uh, but sometimes their salesperson, which is what uh, what that girl was that was um, unless, unless they can't come, then they'll make us use a volunteer. At that point, that pissed me off too because they didn't send anybody they didn't care enough to, and but he, they wanted and that was, their payout. But and that was the point I was trying to fill. And what you were saying was that you guys, you're contacting the brewers, you're getting a brewer there. In the United States, you can get the brewer there. 
it, but there's two different types of, of beer festivals. There's the one that's putting it on that I don't want to say gives a shit because it's all about money. They're making a buck. It's not like they're not making a buck. But you can get in the brewer there if you if you really do try. So it, it, there's the get them in the door, make a buck a, a beer festival, and there's to get them in, in the door, but also educate or have brewers on hand beer festival. It's like two different worlds. Yeah, yeah I mean, Matt is right. Matt is right. And let me say this. My experience with beer events, whatever you want to call them, festivals, tastings, dinners, my experience with beer events is that it is woefully depressing when you go up there enthusiastic and very excited and talk to these beer people. They don't know anything. And it, it's a it's a downer. It's a shame, but it's the truth. Well, I I don't know where y'all are at, but uh, the last festival I went to was the Colorado uh, Brewers Festival, so only Colorado breweries were invited. They uh, because of the three tier system, they uh, they had to sell their beer to a distributor. This in this particular case was. Uh, Budweiser and uh, all the trucks had Budweiser and everything like that, but with their individual kegs in them. Right now, That's the brewers point. were not allowed to serve the beer, and they took on volunteers. Uh, what uh, y'all said, zombie <laughs> tables. So, uh, but what they where they try to make up that uh, the that legal problem was that they would actually sit out and they would be in the line of their individual tap and they would be talking to the people. You know, if anybody had any questions and the table girl didn't know, they would be there to like quickly jump in and be like, "Oh yeah, by the way, you know." So I, I mean, I think that what you are talking about, the brewer has to give a shit. You know, he has to make the effort to be there and try to make up the difference of the legal system. That's the, awesome. Man. The first thing I will say for Matt is you're going to be in for a treat then when you come to this beer festival in May because you're actually going to be in an Ontario beer festival. Uh, the breweries that do not send the breweries that didn't send people that I've seen at, say, uh, the London Festival, the Toronto Festival, the Ottawa Festival, the festivals I've been at that would not send somebody, I've never even invited to any of mine and will never invite because they just don't care. They just want that payout. Um, but, yeah, you're going to you're gonna get to meet some people that actually care about beer and actually can answer your questions. Yeah, no, and uh, honestly, like, I, I, when I first started going to beer festivals, I did it as backwards. I went to there and be like, went to the table and been like, hey, are you going to have, who makes this? And start to ask questions. Cause I, not that I know everything. I'm not a big home brewer, but I just don't want to garner information, and I wouldn't get what I want. And then after a while, I started to ask the festival people, and I'd be like, who's going to be there? And someone would be like, oh, this person will be there. Now I just ask the brewery. I'd be like, oh, you're going to have a representative there? And if, they're, if I contact three or four in a row, and they're like, no, I don't even know. I'm like, okay, I'm not going. So now at this point, I just know just better off just to ask the brewery. Chances are... If they get back to you and say no, you know what I mean. They're not going to be there, so I know. But I'm super pumped. The good years and uh, and uh, talk to uh, probably talk to the wall. So I'll be really drunk. But when I'm not talking <laughs> to the wall, I'll probably talk to somebody, and hopefully it's a brewer. Uh, so number five was the shameless money grubbing. Uh, you know what? Again, we talk about brewers. We talk. It, it is a business. I know the price is a lot, but it is still a business. You can't really get angry at them for. For any of that, I mean, I understand that it's something that is disgusting about a lot of festivals. I mean, twenty dollars for my festival, seventy dollars for some of the festivals in Ontario. <laughs> there is some money grubbing involved, especially when those seventy dollar ones are just pure profit because they've already been paid two million dollars by Molson and Labatt to fund the thing. So um, there are some some sickening money grubbing, but I mean, it's a business. You don't want it to pay it, don't go. Don't you can go. bitch about it, but just don't go. Just don't go. Yeah, that Albino Rhino Beer Festival is totally money grubbing place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I actually follow the law that in Ontario that you're not allowed to make a profit, and I don't hate my profits. I'm money grubbing all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, the unpaid army of volunteers. Yeah, that's uh, you, you get that at a lot of brew, uh, at a lot of festivals too. I mean, your security is your security is usually paid for, and that's about it. Everything else is volunteers. Your ticket people are volunteers. Your table people are volunteers. Your people walking around collecting garbage usually volunteers. Um, I had a volunteer army. They all got free beer out of me though. But uh, he was one of my volunteer army. So it was Lee. Wow. So it was Paul. Wow. Yeah, but the uh, yeah, but the uh, but the touch on. That uh, it's it actually touches on first off that like on a smaller scale, 
You know what I mean? Like when, when GABF, and it's specifically talking about that, uh, when it was smaller, that's that's awesome. That's an awesome way to do it. It's when you're becoming a multi-million dollar industry and you're still asking volunteers to work, that's kind of where it gets a little bit of a dicey yeah, problem. No, I, I agree with that. I'm just saying that that's normal at almost any beer festival. It's not yeah. just this. I'm just saying it's not just this beer festival. I, I understand. Like even the Toronto Festival of Beer, which is again our our equivalent to that, uses volunteers all the time. Yeah. I think it, it depends like... on the the size of the festival, and I haven't tried noon yet. But uh, the ones I go to in Michigan, run by the Michigan Brewers Guild, the ones they're huge. You know, five six thousand people, uh, and you know, hundred breweries. But they always, almost every brewery has their not just brewer, but their owner on site. Uh, the only ones who don't typically are like founders because they're just too big now, and and uh, Larry Bell doesn't show up. But a lot of the small guys, all I mean, their folks are right out there, and they're serving beer, and they're talking, and they're, you know, they're around and they're available. So I, I maybe mean, it's just the small stuff where they just, you know, they're spread pretty thin as it is, and they just devote their time to the big big stuff, I guess. So. Hmm. That's just my perspective. I. I you know, yes, I've I've been to small stuff in Ontario, yeah, and I don't see anybody who runs anything there. So, yeah. Well, I, I'm getting tired, y'all, and I, it was nice talking to you. And I hate to cut out, but I'm gonna get off. All righty, you Bye. have a wonderful Bye, night. Jay. Bye, Jay. Enjoy. 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 Thanks Enjoy. to everybody. Take care and um, stay positive and enjoy the uh, hobby. Uh, cheers. You as well, Jay. See you later, y'all. Same y'all. game of size, cool rules. What? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Y'all come down to Louisiana. <laughs> and I mean that, too. I'm not just saying it to, to blow smoke. Okay, thanks, and take care. You, Bye. too. Bye. Okay, number seven is the ugly, soulless venue. Um, what, what did they want from it? I mean, it's, what, millions of people go through this beer festival? I... I Millions of people, uh, uh, right? Okay, okay. I think I've been to some festivals where they have like bands playing, you know, they have bounce houses, all this different type of stuff for people to enjoy. Kids can come and stuff like that. But I've also been to some that have been like, you know, even more brewers show up, but it's in this dank warehouse and it's, you know, you enjoy the beer and everything, but there's just like a subtle uneasiness in there. It's like a dangerous part of town and everything. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I mean, not just that. I mean, obviously, the person wrote a, 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 like it's not a major publication, but it's pretty widespread. They obviously have a bone to pick, so they're kind of, you know, uh, when you're in, a, if you're in a venue and you're having a bad time, it doesn't matter how beautiful it is, you're gonna view it as soulless. So, regardless, wait, the wait. Bad... he's talking about GABF though, right? Specifically, yes. yes. Yeah, and GABF. I just from pictures, it does look like a soulless. Big gigantic place, kind of like where the auto show was held, and it's it had, yeah. But, I mean, but most festivals I don't think are like that. But. but that's the thing. If you if you're in a, if you're in a place and you're having fun, you don't notice that. You know what I mean? In the grand scheme of things, I, I, that's just me though. You know what I mean? You mean, like, you, mean um, you mean if you're drunk, you don't care? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> no, not just that. Like if you're having a good time, regardless of where you are, you rarely under uh, view your environment as a negative. You know what I mean? Like you're having a great time. You paint a, a a a bright picture when you have a bright memory. You paint a dark picture when you have a dark memory. That's but that's just me. Right. That's true. I mean, he's just finding things to pick at. I mean, I guess he's saying it could be better. That the the venue itself, and he's just looking around. I mean, you go to outdoor festivals, and that'll always kill anything that's indoors. So. Plus, yeah, you have to understand it too. A lot of times, like there's nepotism. That. There's nepotism. Like, how long, how long has they been holding at the same venue? Like, like you know, your 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 beautiful venue that's all wood etching and everything's great is not. You walk in there, never held a beer festival before, and, and been like, hey, can I throw a beer festival in your beautiful place? And they're like, fuck no. I mean, they, you know what I mean. Further on in the world, they might let you do that, but how long have they been holding it at this venue? You know what I mean? They just maybe going the back there just because that's the place they hold it at. Well, the next one, the next one actually is the only one that really made me giggle a little bit because it, yeah, um, and it's too bad that Jay left right before it. Uh, <laughs> macro brews. I've racked my brain and cannot think of one good reason there are macro.
micro brew categories at the GABF. I've never paused at a keg and thought, now the Natty Light tastes great this year. Their brewmaster deserves the gold. It's the same product every year. They spend millions making sure it doesn't change. So why does Coors Light win one year and Bud Light wins the other? Uh, it seems totally arbitrary. How do they even determine who wins Large Brewery Company of the Year? What's the criteria aside from being a current or previous sponsor of the... Uh, you know what? Here's Hold on to this topic real quick. i got to grab okay. something. I'll show you. Okay, you go grab something. First and foremost... Who decides it? What wins it? The judges. If you don't have the, if you have the exact same judges every year and the beer with beer winners change every year, then you know there's probably something wrong there. However, if every year you have slightly different judges and every year somebody else wins it, that's normal. Everybody doesn't have the exact same taste. Why is there those categories? Because the fucking Brewers Association and the BGCP, who does part of this too, have made that a beer selection. And you have all the different beer categories at this festival. So, yeah, they should be there. Regardless, it's not just a craft beer festival. It's not only done by the Brewers Association. It should be there whether you like them or not. Well, all uh, right, so. Go ahead. All right, what I wanted to say was, uh, all right, so, I mean, uh, there's a lot of really big macro-type pale lagers going on in America. And my friend brought me this from Chicago, old style. It's, uh, it's owned by uh, Paps, if I'm not mistaken. But I had it for the first time uh, several months back, and it legitimately it just tastes a lot better than these other American pale lagers that are out there. So I can see how uh, that that could be a, comp a competitive category because there are some pale lagers out there that just taste a little bit better. Yeah, right. and I would agree with you on that. I mean, there are some pale lagers that taste a little bit better, but to bitch that one pale lager wins one year and the next wins the other year, again, unless those judges in that category are the exact same, you should see some change because judges know what they're looking for to give points to, but your personal taste and your personal paradigm still come into account when you're deciding what is what. Yingling should win every year. I'll Ooh, just say that. Yeah, I got some yingling. <laughs> <in the> garage. <laughs> Are they putting like domestics up against Euro loggers, or is this just well, domestic pale? Actually, Yingling's not a uh, macro. They're uh, they're still technically a craft brewery. Oh, okay. I thought they're they uh, they they sold they, enough. They, if I'm not mistaken, last time I worked, checked, they they weren't for a little while because of the ingredients they used, and then those ingredients were allowed to be in the craft again, yeah. and then they were again. Yeah, because I, I I know they definitely meet the barrel limit. But I understand where you're coming from, Chad, in that uh, you can't just be like, oh, these people are allowed, these people. You have to let everybody in. So you have to have a, a judging on everything. You can't just be like, it's a great American Beer Festival. Where's this? No, you have to let everybody in. As far as what wins every year, I mean, you know what I mean? Like you said, different people judging, whatever. But, yeah. yeah. Uh, what's number nine? Number nine is... The ridiculous number of medals. Well, yeah, I, I went through that list. Uh, Joe sent me that list. Joe and Duchette sent me the list, and it took me forever to go through that list because they didn't. They basically there's what there's 75 categories of beer right now, and they did a fucking medal for all 75, and then they they even split some of those 75 categories up into subcategories. That there there was a disgusting amount of medals in that in that festival. Oh, that's uh, that yeah, eight ball stout buddy from uh, Colorado. Yes, the eight ball that had medals from a county fair. I drank that. That was fucking horrible shit. And like a thousand medals from county fair is probably the only beer entered in a county fair. We actually get that up here in Ontario. That eight ball stout. That's pretty gross. Did you say it's from Colorado? Well, it's from California. Oh, I okay. thought because you're close by, you might you might have known about it. But uh, uh, do you know the brewery? It's Lost Coast, correct? Oh, Lost Coast, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm going shopping up in Denver tomorrow, so uh, I'll, I'll look around and see if I can find that. Don't buy it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I try everything. There's nothing I won't try. This is some crazy ass pale lager that I got from some crazy gas station in Texas. So I'll try anything. <laughs> so you have so, uh, much, you have so much good stuff in Colorado. Why waste your time on shitty Cali beer? Well, uh, the problem with Colorado is uh, because the way their uh, beer distribution system is set up, you just get kind of you get you get kind of fucked in the ass if I on prices, you know. Uh, 
the, the stores and the distributor can pretty much decide what anything's going to cost. So you can walk into one store. I found uh, Bourbon, Ca Bourbon County from Goose Island. I found that for $5 in one store and 15 in another. So I, I live in Pennsylvania, brother, man. It's, it's fucking Wild West out here with beer. <sighs> It's, it's, uh, you know, there, there needs to be a little bit more regulation, a little more. I, oh, I wouldn't no, no, mind. No, 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 you, no, 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 you don't want regulation. No, no, no regulation. No, no, no. Uh, okay. it'll, it'll, it'll spiral into Ontario. You don't want it's, it. It's <laughs> favorable regulation. I, I want to be able to walk into one store and sure make competitive prices, but not a $10 difference in a single bottle. That just, you know, that... Yeah. It it seems fucked up, but if you let your money do the talking, you just don't buy the ten the one that's ten dollars more, and then eventually that guy's gonna, you know, realize his price is down to a, a level of people willing to pay. Like the guy the guy who charges five bucks raises up to fifteen. Well, then they cut, then the value is fifteen bucks. Right? Now, this, yeah, might be, this might the be only flaw with that. The only flaw with that theory is that uh, there's a lot of fucking retarded human beings out there that do dumb <laughs> shit. That's that's and that's, that's how them. they. they, they that's how America uh, is founded. That's called hey, uh, capitalism. A lot of no, I, I, no, I 100%. Oh, you ever watch Idiocracy, man? It's like totally like there's a point where it just gets retarded, man. No, I got to agree. Cops I gotta go agree. and love you. I will drive the extra 15 minutes, you know, to buy a beer that's not available. However, if I can find this beer here and it's $5 more than it is 30 minutes away, I, I'm lazy. I'm a lazy American. I'm going to spend that extra money to get that beer because well, they got you. Precious. They got you. I, I know. They got you then. <laughs> I know. That's why I want things to be my way. Not <laughs> well, you're, yeah, see, you see, they're, they're saving you the time and the energy, but they're going to exactly. charge you for it. Exactly. And, that, that, you know, I'm okay paying a convenience fee. I just don't want to get, you know, reek. Yeah. Hey, uh, the last portion of this, what was that you were going to say? Oh, I just, I just had a question for Matt because he's in Pennsylvania. Uh, I don't know if you're anywhere near close to. I think it's um, there's this brewery called North Country. I think it's out of like Downington, or no, that... no, Slippery Rock maybe, or something like that. But uh, I, I've actually, never heard of them. Okay, I, got, I was just gonna ask because they have this beer called the Embalmer. What's the name of it? I'll look it up while you're talking. Uh, it, it's North Country. But they have this beer called the Embalmer that I've been dying to try because I'm I used to be a funeral director, um, but uh, I like even bought like a T-shirt of this beer because like the logo is so fucking cool. But I was just curious if it was anywhere near where you are. I think it's like a little brew pub or something. Slippery Rock is close to me. I'm looking it up right now. I'm just trying to find exactly where it is. Um, Slippery Rock University. I've heard of it, so it's not. I don't think it's too far. I could be wrong. Let's see. Uh, come I don't on. Know, I'm off, off topic of this list, but. Uh... But I mean, worst case scenario, if it's not close to me, I should be able to get it in some form or fashion. Well, it, it does. Speaking of field directors, actually, I was talking to the guy at Black Swan, Ryan, who's now a teacher full time. But he does the he, he sort of part, uh, part owner of, of Black Swan, but he also used to be a funeral guy, funeral director guy. Yeah, it's funny how people keep leaving that business. <laughs> it, you know, it's just stupid because everyone makes a joke like, "Oh, people are dying to get in," but like, no, once you do it, you're just dying to get out because it sucks so hard. Yeah, I guess Slippery, Slippery Rock is out, actually, it's not even close to me, it's between Pittsburgh and Erie. It's actually closer to, like, Youngstown or Columbus, Ohio than it is actually Pennsylvania. Um, but I can put some feelers out there and see what's what. I would just, I, it's, a, it's a beer I'd love to try just for, I guess, uh, shits and giggles because of my... Ah, the poops. ...career choices, but... Uh... Yeah, poops and giggle angle is awesome. Did you just say poops and giggles instead of shits and giggles? Yes, I did. Okay, this, uh, <laughs> just just so you know, this is not a PG-13 show. You can it say whatever the fuck you want. I deal with I sometimes I deal a lot of times with people who I don't know if I'm allowed to curse around. So poops, poops and giggles is like a, a go-to joke for me. So it just comes out of my mouth. That's something you'd say as a funeral director in front of a family. Poops and, <laughs> poops and giggles comes out of your mouth. What? <laughs> Well, it, it, it droves, almost like, sometimes it's like soft, sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's green. Depends on what I pooped the day before, honestly. Okay, so it's got corn in it. So the last one, the last one of the ten reasons this, this festival sucks. 
is uh, exactly his problem the whole time. Uh, their contempt for honest journalism. You'd think members of the hometown drinking press, good, clean American, all all would naturally receive the GABF press credentials they so richly deserve. And I'm sure some do, so long as they're willing uh, year after year to spew the manner of sickly sweet uh, platitudes the GBF likes to pepper their sales brochures with. Uh, so basically, he's this whole article was he's angry that he doesn't get press credentials at the, at the and, and, and that's why they that's why he doesn't get press credentials because he's angry. Well, they have contempt no, for contempt. No, it, it, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's actually it's it, obviously there is some spike there and there's some anger. But I'm telling you, if you read the whole magazine, if you've had it for the past 10 years, it's very tongue-in-cheek. It's all really bust your ball sarcasm. So, like, if you weren't, if you didn't read the whole magazine as a whole, you wouldn't get it. That like that last part is in there for a reason, as being trying to be funny. He's serious. He's like, yeah. He's like, I just tell shit how it is. You don't want me to be there. It's not so much that they told him to leave. Then he wrote that. He's like that, and that's why they told him to leave. If you didn't read it beforehand, you would read it as them being spiteful. I've I've actually read several articles from several different journalists in the Colorado area that have basically said this exact same thing as number ten. But and, and but and I'm not saying that's true. It's you know what is it? Um, uh, causation doesn't cause whatever the fuck it is. But um, this magazine is is written in a sense that it's like it's always trying to be funny. It's trying, always trying to be kind of over the top. So the oh, yeah. ending part is not a matter of him being pissed. It's like okay, I'll throw this in there just because I can be kind of funny and douchey at the same time. I mean, they're so. they're like the Hunter S. Thompsons of the beer world. Oh my god, they're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I just. I don't know. Sometimes people just try to be over the top, and it just gets lost. It depends on the audience. And, you know, yeah, they think they think, yeah, they, yeah, think yeah. they think they're totally, hilarious. Totally, yeah. So when people don't read and they don't understand, they get lost. I understand. Well, it seems like a, just, the, like a lot of the a lot of the topics are just like kind of reason to get pissed at salespeople. I have to deal with salespeople all the time, and I know it's aggravating. And it's just kind of embedded itself in all this stuff. And there's not much you can do about it, I guess. Except yeah, no better. They, sometimes they just sensationalize whatever they, they're looking at, whatever perspective, just to sell magazines, too. Oh, but yeah, they, of course. Yeah. People judge by, by the covers all the time. Where you even like with the beer festivals and stuff, like I have to deal with salespeople all the time, and they'll tell people anything, and they don't know. You know, just you have to deal with it, whatever. Well, last, uh, the last topic I had before we can just free talk is uh, the very last article that came out from uh, Jordan St. John. For those of you that didn't know, as of uh, Saturday, he no longer works for Sun Media. Once Sun Media was bought out, his job was uh, kaput. They, uh, they got rid of it. Anyway, his last article was uh, 10 Beer Facts You Need to Know, and it's a list. He hates lists, but he did a list, and basically it was talking about everything he's learned as a columnist. Or beer. Uh, number one, beer is all, brewing is always about money. Whether it's Amheiser Busch, InBev, Molson Coors, or the bearded kid down the street with the 100 liter setup, not one person who brews professionally is doing it for their health. It may certainly be about art, community, or a personal ma a narrative, but if anyone tells you it's not about money, they're trying to sell you beer. I completely well, I, agree with that. that. That is a huge battle going on in the uh, American craft beer scene right now because of the recent Elysian sell to InBev. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God, that is... I can't go into a brewery without somebody talking about sell out here or business model here. You know, it's just... Yeah, my, it's about money. I mean, what matters is, is the beer good or not. For me, do I like the people that own the brewery? Is the beer good? That's that's what I care about. But the beer matters more than anything. Uh, you need to have good beer, good people, good prices for me to love you. Period. Uh, you can have two of those. Two of those three, you're still good. Only one of those three, I probably don't like you. Oh, I mean, part of me like the the. The person I am, I kind of want to be like, you know, rebel against the machine, blah, 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 all this stuff, all this stuff. But but then I started thinking about it, you know, as an adult. I'm like, 
I kind of want a nice retirement and stuff like that. That's why I do the job I do and all this shit. And I, I can't say I wouldn't sell out if I had a brewery, you know, and I, I hate myself for saying that. I, I really do. But, you know, if somebody offers me $58 million, I might just say, fuck it, take it, and go open up a new brewery. That's exactly, exactly what you do. Exactly. The guys, at, the guys at Goose Island, when they get when they bought that out, uh, one of the guys went to uh, off, they created Off Color Brewing. Yeah, and I love Off Color Brewing. They yeah, as long, amazing as, long shit. as you don't sign a contract that says you're not allowed, you sign it. As long as you don't sign a no competition clause, do that. Take your money, go open a better brewery than what you had. <laughs> awesome thing to do. I don't uh, know why. I, I, I brought be, up the uh, I brought up the no competition clause because somebody that both me and Devin know who was stupid and signed one when his brewery opened and kind of screwed right now. Are you talking about like not having the right to open another brewery again? Or brew anywhere in the region for five right. years after leaving? That does suck. Yeah. So uh, his second one, there is no best beer in the world. And that, that I would put an asterisk in it. There is no best beer in the world, but there is a best beer in the world for you. Oh, Everybody yeah. can have a best beer in the world that they think is the best beer in the world. But yes, no beer can be the one and only best beer in the world. I completely agree with them. Yeah, that, that it's saying that there is a best beer in the world that takes away the all the subjectivity that is beer drinking. And then uh, the next one is similarly, there is a competition for the worst beer in the world. And he writes, just because you don't see lists on BuzzFeed about the worst beers available doesn't mean they aren't uh, aren't contenders. People will review truly excellent beers without even being paid to do so. For content, the worst beer I've ever gone I've ever written was Bud Light Lime Mojito, which started with a bad idea and went downhill quickly. Your beer should not taste like Colgate. <sighs> hey, who All doesn't right. want a beer that tastes like Colgate? <laughs> Come here. <laughs> Well, I'm sure your girlfriend well, does. Well, I, I was having this conversation the other day with my friend, all right? So we were talking about uh, drain pours, and we were talking about, like, very rarely do we drain pour a macro beer because we know what we're expecting. You know, like, on average, it's going to taste a certain way, and we kind of expect you know, that. It's funny that you say that because it's true. My mo Most of my drain pours... Are uh, there are some there are a few macros usually ice beers there are some ice beers I can't get down, but for the most part, it's a craft beer that's getting the drain for. Yeah, I, I agree one hundred percent. Yeah, there's definitely some shit. Uh, Everybody with all the BC beers, man, watch out for some BC beers, man. They're definitely drain pours. <laughs> whole Next shit is uh, is be wary of beers with uh, weird ingredients. And he talks about the bull testicles and the uh, whale's testicles and the beard yeast, which the hot Colgate, Col Colgate could do easily. But yeah, just because it has a weird ingredient doesn't mean it's going to be good. It means it's going to be interesting or unique. And I agree with him, too. Uh, yeah, okay. So uh, on both sides of that spectrum, I've had the uh, Colorado, uh, what is it, the, the Rocky Mountain Oyster Stout or whatever that uses bull balls. That I just heard was... about that the other day. That thing was fucking delicious. I, <laughs> I've I, also heard that. Off the chain. Now, Where? I also he's, got one not, from... He's not saying that they're going to be bad. He's just saying be wary. It doesn't oh, no, no. Good. But on the other hand, I had one from South Carolina that they used tequila staves and live scorpions in a uh, Mexican lager, and that shit was fucking terrible. I, it, was, it wasn't that the ingredients were bad. It was that they... The, the fundamentals of brewing were off, you know, it just didn't taste right. Had nothing to do with the scorpions. No, I mean, the scorpions, <laughs> I, I, I didn't taste it and be like, oh, well, this is very scorpion <laughs> I'd be curious to see how people rated that. Like, oh, there's not enough scorpion in this fucking lager. Well, it's just like when they say that the uh, stout is too stouty. <laughs> this is and actually, you know what, Matt? I, I like to troll you with that word, but the last time I did it in a review, I sat there and I'm like, this this stout is too stouty because I was trolling a friend of mine that owns a brewery, Ed Ed from uh, Five Battles, and it wasn't even you that put that in my mind. He was he was ranting one day when he was here drinking with us in the basement the day before our last beer festival that one of his stouts is on on tap and somebody wrote it's too stouty and he's like, what the fuck do you want? It's a stout. <laughs> Stout is is stout like, by the way. Uh, if you want to get technical, but 
<laughs> hey now, buddy. Hey, but, uh, give me. But it was uh, it was just hysterical because I, I like just stuff like that. You know, it, too much scorpions. The scorpions. Yeah. I love, well, I love yeah, when you, people drink a beer hey, and they're like, "There's too hey, much coffee in this beer." It's a coffee hey, pale ale. What do you want? Scor- scorpions taste like Cascade. That's all I know. So it's all the same. It's just one after the other. Uh, the next one is Beauty is in the Eye of the Beer Holder, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I know which brewer he was talking to here, because my brewer said the exact same thing. Anyway, a brewer once told me that his favorite beer was the one in his hand. Not only is this a, a marvelous way out of a potentially sticky situation, it's a good lesson in managing expectations. Focus on the beer you're drinking at the moment. It probably has some good qualities. And you know what? Once you start thinking that way, you can find okay qualities and even beers you don't like. And... Once I became more diplomatic in my beer, beer reviews, I mean, I'll still I'll still tell you if I don't like it, but I won't just come out and say this is fucking shit and throw the beer on the table anymore. You can find at least some good qualities in every beer, whether you like the beer or not. For the most part, not every beer, but most beers, you can find at least one good quality in it. That's that's true. I mean, like for example, tonight I had to go to like a a, a, a casino tonight to do like this like a local paper rewards thing and like you know casinos always have the worst beer well then you become you find your lowest com- not lowest com- common denominator but you go in there and you want a beer you don't want to drink like I'm, I love scotch but I didn't want to drink scotch and I'm like I want a beer and then you just get through the list to the point where you get something and they're like okay I'll drink that you know what I mean then you find good things inside that beer his next one is uh, sometimes a beer has no redeeming qualities your beer might be old and taste like cardboard. Your beer might have been infected with diacetyl uh, and have a buttery slick on your palate. Your beer might just taste wrong. If it does, see if the bartender will replace it. If the bartender won't replace it, find a new bartender. Life is too short for bad beer. You know what? I understand what he's trying to say here, but you know, like Great Lake, uh, Grand River Brewing, all their beer is infected with diacetyl. Uh, <laughs> Miller has a wet cardboard taste. Those are normal flavors for it. It just doesn't have a redeeming quality, or it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean the beer is infected. It just means it doesn't have a redeeming quality. Why would the bartender replace something that tastes the way it's supposed to taste? Mm. Yeah, that's pretty douchebaggy. Like, you order what you order, and you don't like it, that's on you. If you order what you order, and it's bad via the tap system, that's on the bar. If you order what you order and you don't get the right right drink, that's on them. Yeah, you know see, and that, that, it, it is a three-tier system, like you just said. It, there, if you order it and you just don't like it, like if I went and I ordered, uh, I don't know, uh, something I didn't like. I don't have anything sitting on the table close. Old style right. pilsner. Old that style. Way. If I went and old, yes. ordered old style pilsner, that tastes like it's infected. <laughs> Should they replace it for me? No, because I ordered it, and it tastes the way it's supposed to taste. Now, if I ordered, say, the Boundary Ale, and I got a buttery taste, or just a really old taste or something from their tap system or something like that, that is on them, and they should replace it. But if it tastes the way it's supposed to taste, they shouldn't replace it. It's the way it's supposed to taste, and I just don't like it. Mm, I don't know. A part of me wants to agree with him. The other part of me agrees with you. So I don't know. I'm kind of torn. No, I, I understand. As I said, I understand exactly where he's coming from. It, but you it's, a per- it's a per- it's a perfect world scenario versus real world. Like yeah, in a grand scheme of things, whenever I a lot of the bars he goes to, yeah, he doesn't go to Mom and Pa's uh, corner bar like fucking Whiskey Nick's across the street where I got roofied. He goes to uh, he goes to high end Toronto bars that actually have a Cicerone on hand and all that. That Cicerone would get called over. This beer doesn't taste right. He would go and he would pour a little touch of it, taste it. Oh, it it it's Wait. fine. Can I get the address at a bar where I can get roofied? Because that's hot shit right there. Uh, when you're here, I'll send you across the street. <laughs> okay, awesome. It was horrible for three days, man. Horrible for three days. Nah. That was my birthday present, getting roofied by an ex-con. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a, a, a song, an old country song. I, I, I'm guessing he was trying to get one of the girls in my group because I was there with uh, a little Chinese guy and four girls. And I was the one that got roofied. I'm sure he was trying to get one of them. But he was going for you, man. Uh, I must say, I must say, I'm scared shitless for these girls because back then I was still in shape. So I was about 315 pounds of mostly muscle, and it hit hard. Like I, I stood up at the bar, like, okay, it's time to go home. I'm crossing the street. I got across the street. It started hitting, and I was almost out. I got into my backyard, 
and I fell on my porch. The girls had to pull me into the house. My wife and my friends pulled me into the house, and I was out cold. I couldn't move for like a day and a half. I like I I couldn't even stand. So if it hit me that hard, I can only imagine what it does to these hundred pound girls. That these idiots are trying to get to. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah, and again, I was a 300, 315 pound man. Yeah. I mean, it just it laid me out. It's absolutely the creepiest point in Beardy Dweebs New United right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. But, yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, you know. No, I mean, not, you know no, it, no in, a good, in a really good PSA kind of way. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, it's, yeah. it's something I, I don't, I don't under, like, keep, people talk about it, and unless it's happened to you, you don't know it. And it happened to me, so I feel horrible for anyone that's ever had it done to them because you're lost. You're lost. And you kind of know what's going on, but you can't move. It's fucked. That drug should be eliminated from the world. Anyway, sometimes marketing has no redeeming qualities. <laughs> Just to continue <laughs> on. Uh, I'm lucky enough to count as friends several women with great taste in beer and several talented female brewers. I still get pitched stories on beers designed for women and beer can cozies shaped like women in bikinis. It's 2015 and past time to take that embarrassing garbage out back and shoot it. You want to sell beer to women? Make a delicious product. Uh, all right. So, okay. So I'm recently trying to get my wife into drinking more beer. That way, you know, I can I participate in her hobby. She can participate in mine. And I found there are certain styles that she loves, mostly sours, stuff like that. But, uh, I mean... If I had to bet on it, if I offered her this red strawberry ale that I'm currently drinking, or uh, you know anything from the brewery sour program, she's gonna choose the reds. And you know I don't know if that's all taste is subjective, but from everybody I've talked to, they kind of agree. I mean everybody's different, of course, but I don't know. There definitely seems to be a niche market for women. My uh. My girlfriend, when we first started dating, was like a Bud Budweiser and uh, Bud Lime girl, and now she has like no problems putting back IPAs or like our our palates actually like incredibly similar. We're almost always on par as to what uh, what we're both having. So oh no, I mean I I, 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 I would was, sorry go ahead no sorry go ahead brother. All right. Uh, I mean, I definitely agree that if somebody is interested in getting into the beer culture, that they will definitely try. You know, uh, nobody really liked their, you know, first barrel age, whatever. You know, when they first started. You know, it, it, it was learning. You develop your palate and you grow. But when you're talking about marketing, you're talking about hooking in those fish that aren't into the scene and everything like that. Oh yeah. Um, okay. My my wife hates beer. My wife hates it, but she'll drink Bud Light Lime. She'll drink uh, exactly. She'll drink the the uh, Bud Light Strawberry. She'll drink all that stuff. She likes that stuff. Uh, if it's actual craft beer, she likes sours and she likes lambics and all the expensive stuff. But yeah, the market, the <laughs> thing. What what he's talking about here is basically he's completely engulfed in the and and I I talked to him about this too. He's completely engulfed in the beer culture and the beer scene. Most of his friends are in the beer culture or beer scene, be it sales reps or brewers or this or that. His female friends are in the beer culture or beer scene. They're not the ones that this marketing is aimed at, like uh, like you were saying. This is aimed at everybody else, like my wife, your wife, anyone that isn't into the beer culture or beer scene quite yet. And there is a vast majority of them compared to the ones that are like, like us and will drink anything. I don't know. You know, as marketing 101, is hook people who don't like your product, get them into your product. Yep. Put nicotine right. in the beer. I don't think it's <laughs> a brilliant idea. Oh, it actually, uh, real quick, that this should be another uh, public service announcement. I, I recently tried to do uh, a tobacco-flavored stout uh, homebrew, and I found out that you cannot do that. It will kill people. So, do not put tobacco in your home brews. People will fucking yeah. die. <laughs> just put that out there real quick. Uh, uh, just, just to continue the PSAs, also do not put crocodile bile in your home brew. Or, or cobalt. Or cobalt. Cobalt. That was in uh, one of the recent Taft's magazines. Uh, there was like an incident in Quebec in the 60s where that was used as a uh, head-retaining agent. I believe. 
and uh, a bunch of people died. So well, uh, that was shortly eliminated from things you could. Propylene not... glycol is still used as a head retention agent every once in a while. But I'm not saying it's antifreeze. I'm saying propylene glycol, which is one of the ingredients in antifreeze and shaving cream and many other things. And it's used in shaving cream because it makes a foamy head. So, I mean, it what actually, that's why it's what, used. What shaving cream? Oh, yeah, you wouldn't know. Uh, his, next, his next one is there is always much more beer. Uh, there are more brands than you will ever be able to try. Instead of being tempted to keep up, just accept that you can't. The best of the best will probably survive and make it your way eventually. Yeah, you can say that, but you know what? I'm going to still try to get everything in my system. I agree. There is no surefire cure for a hangover. Well, that, that's true. Yeah, that's been uh, fought forever. I, yeah, thought right. the, I thought the cure was uh, don't stop, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Just one... I don't know. Uh, Jim Cook from uh, Samuel Adams, he swears by it that if you taste, uh, you eat a tablespoon of beer yeast before you start drinking, then oh. you will avoid the hangover. You know, I haven't tried it. I am planning on doing an experiment with it. I, I actually researched the crap out of that, and it's, it's, it's placebo. It's what they say it is, because it has to do with the stomach acids killing the active yeast, because he usually mix it with yogurt and then he eats it, and then it has to do with just him just thinking it works. Yeah. Again, placebo can work just as well as uh, real life stuff. So I wish there was something like that, but anyway. Well, if that tablespoon of yeast was pot and you smoked it, it might work a little better. I mean, <laughs> we already we already covered the roofy section of the show. So the last the very last one he has on here is beer is better when shared and i completely and utterly agree with him the main reason i do beer dudes united is i don't get the guys out to do uh, beer reviews anymore and even though you're not here with me i'm still sharing beers with you even the viewers i'm sharing beers with you and it's it's best to share i mean it's better when you're here and we can actually split the beer and try it together but just drinking beer together is better than drinking beer alone yeah i'll drink to that hell yeah on that the same, topic, uh, same, 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 go ahead, sorry. Go ahead. And everybody shuts up. Nobody wants to talk. Okay. I will say the, the one exception to that is when you get something that you really cherish, you want to keep your hands on it, you want to drink it, savor it and everything, and somebody's like, oh, let me just get get in on that. And you're just like, uh. well, that's, those are people you don't need in your life. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Running into somebody who says beer shouldn't be shared is like running into somebody who says they don't like puppies. You know what I mean? Like It's just, it's just not, good, not good form. Oh, um, reviews under influence ask Gee, uh, who brewed the Oculite beer? It looks friggin' delish, or a badass. It's fucking crazy. It's, uh, the Brassard's Mond. Ah, yeah. It tastes I'm like gonna... uh, ten pine trees blended right together with tree sap, all compressed into, like, concentrate. It's fucking crazy. I'm gonna drink Double Trouble's Fire in the Rye now. They're, uh... Roasted rye pale ale. I am I am drinking a 2007 Koningshoven at when that strange point where La Trap was Koningshoven before when it before it became La Trap like some that weird period where it was like monks were battling each other. Yep. Uh, Koningshoven Bach. <clears throat> Mm. I, don't think I, bought their, I bought their quad today at the LCBO. The quad and the uh, and the triple were both in the LCBO today. I love quad. I love I love oh, the oh. quad. It's it, the Trap's quad probably is up there in one of my favorite quads. Is that worth buying, really? Oh my god, yeah, banana out the wazoo. Okay, I'll pick up. I think it was like just under eight bucks. I'll grab a bottle. I, yeah, I was, picked it, up it, uh, just under eight bucks, but it's a seven fifty. I, 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 the thing is, like, I'm not a big Belgian fan. Like, I picked up. Yeah, uh, you're, you're the, not gonna like it. I picked up the, but I, I've enjoyed quad, so that's the thing. Uh, um, what else was there? The West Mall Twelve, uh, the West Mall Double. Sorry, was there? Yeah, that's what I picked up. Uh, I had that yeah, earlier. We had the Quack and the Camelot as well. Uh, it was uh, kind of boring. Uh, earlier, Mall. I had uh, Phillips Amnesiac Double IPA out of BC. I don't like that one myself, but it is um, it is well made a, beer. I just don't like it. It's under six bucks for a double IPA. <clears throat> I kind of pick it up every once in a while just because I don't mind it. 
I got mine from Brad from Calgary. You guys sent it in the can. It's fucking amazing. Yes, it's made more pineapple-y, eh? Mm-hmm. I... I uh, was hoping Lee was going to be on tonight. I, I got a bottle dropped off for me at the brewery from, um, I think it's called uh, Kitty Vichy or something like that, and it's like Mummer's Brew. Uh, it's a brewery out of Newfoundland, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Is it Kitty Vichy? Kitty Yeah, 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 that place. Uh, so it's like just an amber ale of theirs, but I've never had anything from Newfoundland, so I'm kind of excited to uh, get to share that with the boys at some point this week. What's this? You get deliveries at the brewery. Um, I, I had a couple uh, extra bottles of um, that horchata porter from Silversmith, so I left it for somebody, like one of our regulars, and uh, they returned the favor, I guess. So The horchata, I didn't actually mind it. I didn't like it nearly as much as the Clifford's at all. Yeah, uh, the horchata's I enjoyed quite a bit. Um... It's just a completely different style, right? Um, I used to work with this guy at a record store years, like about 10 years ago now, and uh, he's actually the guy that's working at Silversmith right now whose recipe it was. Um, so it was kind of cool to be able to try that, and it was kind of cool to be able to drop off my first brew so that he can get to try it. Um, small world, it's turned out to be. But, uh, yeah, Horchata Porter was good. Clifford Porter is um, fantastic. I'm excited to uh, for people to get to try that at the at your beer festival, hopefully. And uh, speaking of the beer festival, if anyone from Waterloo is watching, uh, we do have tickets, hard copy tickets, uh, for sale at the Innocente Brewing Company. So come on in if you want some. Shameless plug for the Rhino. Thank you. Thank you. You got it. Um, I'm sure nobody's moved any of them yet because people don't know about them. Yeah, I keep meaning I gotta put out something on uh, social media for the. I keep meaning to post it available there too, and I just keep forgetting. The, actually, the only reason I asked to bring tickets is because people were asking me for them, so that should be a few guaranteed sales, I guess. You should uh, put at least 15, fifteen. Peter Stubbs United. I don't know how to tell you that it's just you. <laughs> he just asked if we crashed or if it was just his comp. No. His icon's still up. <laughs> it's all of it. There he goes again. Hey, uh, Guy, I just recently had a beer from um, F Frampton Brasse. Uh, are you familiar with that place? I think it's in Frampton, Quebec. Frampton, no. Um, no. There was some Russian Imperial Stout from there. Uh, it wasn't too bad but I wasn't sure if it was anything you were familiar with or what. That's a, is that a black and white label? I got a new one. I don't know if it's the same. Yeah, thing. yeah, it's a black and white oh, label. Shit. It was really kind of old school. Um, like, kind of like a double-headed griffin or something oh, like that, right? I didn't review. Fuck you, hold on. I'll go get it. Oh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, hold on. <laughs> I'm right. French. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like, how fuck you it was totally like a part of me. Like, hold on a minute. I'm going to go get that. It's like, fuck you. I'll go get that. <laughs> that's, that's French for excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta say, it's been nice having this headset uh, and being able to participate in this again. I've uh, I missed doing this a little bit. Yeah, that's, oh, that's exciting. Uh, reviews. That's uh, hopefully it is better for you. Um. Yeah. I. I. Um. Yeah. Uh, it, you know what? You sound a lot better with your headset. Yeah, That's it's good. Better, it's better for our ears, too. Hey, Guy, you're back. Fuck you. <laughs> no, I think it's like uh, wet dog hair. That, that beer. Yeah, that's the one, buddy. I got to try that the other day. It wasn't too bad. No, because he pulled out, like, the uh, Phillips earlier. He's like, oh, same beer. He's like... That's funny. Yeah, it's... Yeah. One of those cool internet things, you know, we had going on, like showing the bottles and stuff. It's neat. Beard wizard powers. Yeah, that's it. It's it's a beard thing. But anyways, yeah, that beard tastes like yeah, wet dog hair with the uh, yeah. With stuff. orange candies. No. <laughs> no, no orange candies. Plum you know, candies. 
Plum candies. I, I have noticed that I am uh, using so many lines from our inside jokes, like a uh, very, very dangerous beer, and uh, it's a little thin and stouty, and uh, uh, the coconut. And there, there I just, I, I can't get through a review anymore without using somebody's stupid line. Well, you, I mean, man, it's a curse because, like, like I said, I said, I dude, I totally say caramel right now. I, my whole life, I grew up saying caramel, and I made care, I made fun of caramel so much. Now I say caramel. So watch yourself, man. That's the right Stay way. Stay in your tippy toes, because you'll eventually be on the stouty side, brother. <laughs> well, it's cold. No, it, it's hysterical because it, you don't even th like. Um, Anytime I do it from Guy, I, I actually do it with the French accent. Anytime I do Paul, in the immortal words of our friend from PA Brew News, <laughs> oh, it's they, a didn't, thin. they didn't say Devin's uh, review when he imitated me. Yeah, what I actually lately I've been trying to find that review. I can't remember what beer it is. All uh, I remember, I don't even remember. All I remember is C set of D's <laughs> and like <laughs> ducking under the table. <laughs> I don't even remember what beer it was. I just remember videotaping it. <laughs> It, it was yeah, it was a funny night. You're a good sport, Guy. We love you. <laughs> My brother for another mother. <laughs> Holy shit, this beer smells and tastes awesome. <laughs> Is it orange candies? No, but I'll, I'll, I bought a four-pack, so I'll bring one in May. What's that glass you have going on there, Guy? Looks like a soccer ball or a world burning. Raise the roll from the Tech Syndicate YouTube channel. Tech reviews and tech news. Is there anything on the other side? No. Well, what you see is what you get. I does like it that. A, does it have a Do you guys like this? This is my favorite glass I've ever gotten. One second, let me get the top of it. This is the fucking mason jar glass. It is the most amazing glass I've ever had. It's a fucking mason jar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the best thing, and it has the fucking lid. So, and the lid actually has the rubber and everything inside of it, so it actually works as a seal. I love the glass, and it was two dollars at the dollar store. Well, everybody, what are you? What is? Uh, what's everybody else drinking, Adam? Tonight, show your glasses. Uh, all right, well, I'll start. I'm drinking out of my Ska Brewing uh, Snifter. Unfortunately, I have a giant box of beers that I just randomly pull from. And unfortunately, I'm drinking red strawberry right now. So. Nothing wrong with that, brother. And like I showed earlier, I'm drinking from my uh, O'Keefe Ale glass, my vintage glass. Dude, are you near Ska Brewing? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I make regular trips up to Ska. Oh, man. We... <laughs> Honestly, like at work, um, we have ska on all the time. And then the other day, uh, I borrowed a book from a coworker, and it highlighted like ska brewing as one of the uh, places to check out in the states. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, okay. If you get an option, have you had their uh, modus operandi? I've had nothing from them. I just okay. love ska and working at a brewery. So when I heard of ska brewing, it yeah. seemed brilliant. Yeah, I love ska music. So when I found out that there was ska brewery in uh, Colorado, I knew I had to go there. But uh, they have an IPA called Modus Hopperende. It's fantastic. If you get an option, though, they have Modus Hopperende uh, Mandarin. And that is, you know, it uses Mandarin oranges in it and everything. That thing blew my fucking mind. That shit is delicious. Something to look out for. Yeah, definitely. Sounds, good. There is seven sweet, viewers man. right now, so if you guys have any questions for any of us, throw them out too while we continue to drink. One question each. Seven questions. Well, I, I actually I have a question. I I know that me and uh, Albino Rhino here we have uh, beer review channels. Do any of y'all have beer review channels? Because I would love to subscribe to y'all. Uh, watch what y'all think about beers. Hell yeah! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody but Devin and Greg do. Yeah, uh, if you're uh, Zerkeradian, if, if y'all wouldn't mind, if y'all could post the link over here in the group chat, uh, I'll definitely subscribe to y'all because uh, I'd love to see what y'all are drinking. What's yours? Stop your icon, like this. Uh, I'll, I'll post mine in the group chat right here. I'll just say it right now. I get while I'm, I have a computer in front of me. Uh, beer snobs united. 
I, the the whole beer snobs thing. You know, my wife, she made fun of me for because I we'd go out to dinner, I'd smell it, and you know I'd be like, oh wow, it smells like whatever. And she was like, you're such a beer snob. So me and my friends, we just decided to make beer snobs. No, 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 I get it. Like, uh, like we, I had a, I had a group, I had a beer tasting group called Spear, Beer Snobs United. Honestly, like legit, like straight up, I have like. Like flyers and shit made up. We used to do a beer tasting group. So yeah, well, yeah. I catch a lot of flack from the whole beer snob thing because people are like, even if they are like the most douchey giant hipster beer snob, whatever, they'll still like shun you for having the whole title. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, fuck that shit. I literally just subscribed to you this second, so. Yeah, Cheers, I, just subscri- I just subscribed to you, too. You know what? At the end of the day, if somebody takes their fucking hobby so goddamn seriously they get offended by that, then fuck them. Because, you know what? It's, it's a fucking hobby. You enjoy drinking an alcoholic beverage. Don't. No one needs to take it that seriously. I agree. Well, I just uh, subscribed <laughs> to Beer Guy Reviews. Uh, if anybody else uh, posts theirs up there, I'll definitely subscribe. Well, oh, yeah. Joe, Joe has an awesome channel, but he won't tell anyone about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a VIP secret YouTube channel. Oh, secret, secret. Joe just takes over everybody else's channel. This is what <laughs> their reviews. Nice. He's got even more subscriber, subscribers than you are. <laughs> if there are, uh, <laughs> if, if any of you other guys do have channels on here, I'd be curious to uh, check them out. I know I've got Gee and uh, Ewart, but that's it. Well, I have uh, my mine is called Massive Beer Reviews. Okay. Anybody wants to give it a there? You go. Said mash up. Massive. 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 Like, like, like your beard. Massive. <laughs> no, I see. I can't hold a hold a candle, man. Come on now. <laughs> He's actually well, well behaved. Well behaved with his videos. I was surprised. You need more drunk drunk videos. Yeah. No, I have, <laughs> like I'll show you right now. Like I have I have a folder on my computer. It says drunk as motherfuck, and it's just like full of reviews. And I'm like, I'm like, this is me and Nero's reviews. I'm like, this shit is fucking. I think it's fucking good. It's, it's, and it's usually me and three other people just doing that over for like nine hours. Because I actually <laughs> saw, I actually saw the review we were talking about that folder. It's like you better post that up soon. I'll do it then. Does uh, who else has channels? Like I know, does Greg and Colgate? Do you guys have channels? No, not yet. Well, I don't know if ever. I might one day have a channel, but right now you can. Follow me on, t- on Untapped for to see my stupid palette reviews. Yeah, fuck it. Uh, post Untapped in there too, because I, I I'm on Untapped all the time. I don't do anything. I I'm on Untapped, but that's about it. Um, but you can see him on the Alvar Rhino's channel if you reviews. It, I was gonna say I just I used to do some stuff on the Rhino. It's been a while. Our our days off don't coincide right now, but you uh, also you also can see Joe. Uh, Devin, what are you hitting on him the whole time? Joseph. What are you, Devin? What are you on impact? Oh, uh, do I really want to advertise this on the internet? I don't no, know. no, no, yeah, no. Sure no. Do, sure Sorry. Sorry. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll find some way to send you a message. I thought we were in a private talk for a second there. It, uh, you know, it took me fucking six months to buy a headset, but eventually I will find a way to send you a private message. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'd be, I'd be curious to see what you guys are. Like, I don't know, I, I kind of love Untapped for that. It's just kind of cool to see what... You make all these kind of crazy friends all over the place and to see what they, they're they drinking that you're not able to get and uh, that. No, I definitely agree. That's the... my All my beer mail, it comes from Untapped, you know? I'll see somebody, they post something like, oh, I drink... Uh, that's how I got Pliny. That's how I got Heady, Zombie Dust, all that stuff. Is I saw some somebody, one of my friends, drinking it, and I was like, "Hey, you know, I got a lot of Colorado shit to offer. What do you got?" Mm-hmm. Uh, I definitely, I, I think it's a good networking thing. It's, uh, I don't know. It's been a lot of fun. It's also it, not. It's not even just uh not that it's not fun, but it's fun, but it's also nice to get, like, quick feedback and exposure to a lot of things. You know what I mean? Like, like reviews are cool. I like watching videos. 
but at the same time, sometimes, like, I, my videos are the longest. I make, like, 10 to 15 fucking minute videos. It's the worst fucking thing ever. But, like, on Untapped, it's, like, it's like quick hits. And then after a while, after about a month or two, you start to get a rhythm with people that you're like, okay, this person actually likes the same shit I like. And then this person's like, bang, 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 bang bounce it off shit that you know. They're just they're drinking the same exact shit that you like. You'd be like, okay, I need to remember this because this person's in the same vein as me. That's where it works for me. Yeah, exactly. No, it's it's great for that. Uh, well, I don't know about y'all, but I know my wife. She hates on tap because we'll be at dinner. I'll be like, I need to take a picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My my wife actually makes fun of us anytime we're doing a group beer review. Now Simon's on it too, the punter. The punter's on on tap now as well. So we'll sit here and we'll pull out our phones after we're done our reviews to just tap like to tap them in and she's like, You fucking guys are losers. I always, it, was, I it was worse when Joe was here because Joe would take pictures of every beer and everything and she'd just sit there and make fun of them the whole time. I always feel bad because normally when I uh, especially if it's like a local microbrewery, I'll buy like four beers usually. One for me, one for my girlfriend and I <coughs> One for the rhino and one for my brother. So, if my girlfriend doesn't check in the beer that I spent like an extra of four to five bucks on when we're together, I'm like, did you fucking check that? In? <laughs> <laughs> I just spent this fucking extra money. Like, you better have fucking recorded that. <laughs> so I feel terrible. For sure. How many how many beers do you guys have checked in? Uniques. Here's mine. Uh, uh, I'm oh. almost at a thousand now. Bam. Yeah. I'm a- I was a little late to the untapped game, so I think right now I'm sitting at only about 250 exactly. I, I started my untapped a month and a half ago. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I had I only added the beers that I remembered. I got to 1,000, I stopped, and then I started fucking going from there. So there you oh. go. See, I've, I haven't added anything that I haven't had since I've had Untapped. No, uh, there, there's a certain etiquette that goes with Untapped, you know, and uh, I asked the people who follow me because, surprisingly, I don't know how, but I ended up getting a, a large amount of people who follow me on Untapped, and, uh, you know, I asked the etiquette, I'm like, if I pour a growler, does that count as one glass, or if I can put six glasses from this growler, does that count as six check-ins? And uh, I found out that there's like this whole amount of rules that like unwritten rules that go in untapped, and one of those is definitely you don't check into something that you know you're not currently drinking. What I what I did was I uh, me and a friend of mine I never messed with untapped, and me and a friend of mine were sitting there talking about how many beers we've had in our life, and we decided to. Uh, catalog it. So we started we started on task, but didn't add anybody. Like we kept them private. Yeah, like, um, we, we, just, we just started like adding all the beers we could possibly imagine. And then we got I got to the point where I got to a thousand. Then I started adding friends and opening up my attack to people. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't, like, actually start on tap and, like, sit there and, like, add beers to people. Like, oh, look at this guy drinking all these beers. You know what I mean? Like, I actually sat there and, like, one day I was like, okay, I'll add all this shit. And then I got to the point where I was frustrated and I was like, okay, I'm done. And then well, I just stopped. So far tonight I've had one, two, three, four, five. I, I've had uh, seven beers since we started this. I haven't untapped any of them, and I won't because neither have I. Yeah, I mean it's it's just the way there there is like two hundred beers more untapped than I've I've drank, but I don't usually do it unless I'm out or something like that. Well, and that's the thing. And that's the thing. Like like I've had like about the same, maybe like five if you count this as two, this big huge thing. But like I won't untapped any of these. Um, at the same time, like, I haven't attacked probably two to three times as many beers as I've had, so it's the same thing. Okay, there's six of you now. One of you has left. Nobody's given us a question yet. I, give us a question, but don't ask, are your pubes white? Because the answer is yes. Let, let me ask this. Dude. My, my friend Ryan is probably watching right now. Ryan, ask a fucking question. There you go. Now we're talking. It's not hard. I mean, you guys you guys come here to watch us talk about beer. Do you have a question? I know you do. Just ask I, it. I, I it doesn't question. even matter. You I you don't have anything. Fuck you. What do you no? think? Okay, sorry. What's your question? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so follow me on Untapped Greg B. 
But anyway, um, <laughs> so this this weekend, this is one of my sort of grind my gears thing. Um, I'm just going to ask your guys' opinion. So Great Lakes released a new batch of Karma Citra. They allowed one case per person limit, and it sold out in about 30 minutes. I heard that. What are your thoughts on that? Because to, to me, I think that's bullshit. All right. Uh, as far as beer limits go, part of me supports it, part of me hates it. And uh, the reason I say that is because, uh, like, the most recent thing that I've actually gone out of my way to find is the Goose Island, Bourbon County. And I hate it because I can only get one bottle. You know, because that's what the stores around here allow. However, uh, another part of me likes that because it allows people, uh, other than myself, to be able to get their hands on it. So, and Great Lakes pisses me off to begin with because I can't get it out here. <laughs> Greg, stop fucking around on you on Untapped. I'm toasting all the check-ins, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> My phone just went crazy. Anyway. Um, yeah, uh, here's my thing with any beer that is so rare that it needs to have a limit, and I've said this before and people don't agree with me, but uh, they put limits on the beer because they want their fans to get the beer, and then they post that this is the day we're releasing the beer at this time, so then people that aren't fans, people that are mules end up there. You know how to do this thing if you want to have a, uh, if you want to have a beer that has a limit, you soft launch it. You don't let people know, and then your fans are actually the ones that find out it's there because they come in to get the beer, and they're like, Oh. Oh. <laughs> Give me a case of that. You know, like that, that's the way. Don't put it out there like like you're doing with this is the date, this is the time, because then you get everybody that doesn't even care. Now I, mean, they, you get it. I understand why sense. they do it. I know why they do it. I understand all that. But I'm just saying if we want to be, if we want to be, if we want to lie to the consumer, because remember, even as Jordan St. John said, it's all about money. If we want to lie to the consumer and make them think that it's all about camaraderie and, and supporting our our supporters and all that, you soft launch it, and then your supporters find it. The only other thing I would say to that is, uh, so, they'll release all these beers and everything, and, uh, I, I, you know, I, I don't know what it's like in Canada, but in America, most states use a free beer system, so the brewery makes it, they give it to the distributor, the distributor gives it to the store, and then it's out of their hands. You know, it's out of the brewer's hands, it's out of the distributor's hands. And a lot of these stores around here, they sit there and they fucking hoard it. They don't give it to people unless they're absolute uh, diehard customers, constants, everything like that. And uh, there's one store I go to, I do appreciate it, I go there often, I do believe in uh, customer loyalty and stuff like that. And that's where I usually get my rare beers, but... You know, they don't get everything that every other store gets. So th all these other stores will sit there and hoard them, and they won't give them out until it's, like, way past, like, you know, I don't want to use this, but the hype date, you know? Yeah, no, see, in, in Ontario and in most of Canada, your brewer can sell at the brewery, and then your brewer has... Well, in Ontario, the brewery can sell at two spots. Well, three spots. The brewery... The LCBO, if they can get into the LCBO, to get into the LCBO, they have to fight to get a spot. They have to only have a certain amount of SKUs already in the system, and they have to be able to give them the amount of beer that they want when they want it, or they can sell at the beer store to get into the beer store. They just have to pay money. They pay a yeah. listing fee, and then they pay a SKU fee, and then they pay that listing fee and SKU fee at every store they want to be in. So those are their three choices. So the breweries, when it comes to to uh, fancy beers in uh, in Ontario, release them at the brewery, and what happens is like uh, Great Lakes. Uh, they'll go, we have this. This is the day it's coming out. This is the time it's coming out. And then you'll get a little lineup, and they'll all rush in. Amsterdam does it for the Tempest and the Double Tempest. Tempest, Double Tempest is coming out this day at this time that you can get four a uh, four at a time. Or um, the uh, Bring Out Your Dead, which to me is the best beer I drank in the last two years. At this time, at Bellwoods, it's coming out, you can get four of them. And then you get these huge lineups of people that are muling just like they mule as uh, mule your distributors in the U.S. And, I mean, if you want it to be for your customers, for your customers at, at your brewery, you do it soft launch because your customers come in once a week or once every few days to buy something, and they're like, oh, look at that. Hey, it's there. But again, I understand why they don't do the soft launch because they want to sell it. That yeah, they go in that half an hour, they're going to make the twenty thousand dollars they're going to make from that 
that set of beer. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. Beer distribution, especially here in Colorado, it's very frustrating to me. Because uh, there's just so many hands in it, and they, they are able to, you know, decide. Each hand is able to decide which store gets it. And then the store is able to decide which customer gets it. And there's just a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of beers that I, I know are coming to Colorado, and I want to get my hands on them, but because either somebody's buying all of them at one time, you know, no real consideration to other customers, or the store is hoarding it, it just kind of creates a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of annoyance in the scene that we can't get our hands on certain beers. It's exactly the same way in Pennsylvania, man. I'm telling you right now, like, if you've never been here before, like, like, I cannot get any beers I want. Like, there's a lot of beers I want. Even, like, semi-locally, like, from, like, neighboring states and stuff like that are so... Uh, let's put it this way. Um, you ever have anything from Weyerbacher Brewing? It's from Eastern oh, Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah, I have it. Chad loves Weyerbacher. Okay, let's put it this way. This, is, this puts my point in perfect perspective. Weyerbacher makes a barrel-aged uh, a barley wine called Insanity. Okay? Yeah. They're a barley wine, and it's barrel-aged. Okay, I pay. I live an hour away from the brewery in state. I can drive to the brewery, pick it up. It costs me $15 a four-pack. Upstate New York, it's 11 Wow. Mm. So, like, I live there. I could drive to the place and go get it, and it costs me $14 to $15 for a pack. If I drive out of state an hour away, I can get it for $11. That's Pennsylvania right there. That's that's how Pennsylvania works. Oh, uh, one of the things I've been looking at recently is uh, people are complaining a lot about the Gandhi Bot. Uh, I think it's a double IPA. I just, I just drank it the other day. My friend was able to get me a howler over it, and that was awesome. But... People are telling me that uh, the distributor, it'll drop off a four-pack of Gandhi Bot. Now, the beer stores wanting to maximize their profit and everything, and, you know, I can't blame them. You know, you want to run a successful business, but they'll take the four-pack of Gandhi Bot, they'll divide it up into four separate four-packs, and then put other uh, New England Brewing Company beers into it. So you're paying the price of a four-pack of Gandhi Bot, and you're not only getting one Gandhi Bot. Well, that's shady as fuck, right there. Actually, what I, that's 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 a whole nother level. That's like like a whole different kind of deceit. Yeah, I mean that's just what I'm saying. Like the whole, it just seems that everywhere I go right now, uh, I mainly the main places I buy beer are Colorado and Alabama. But the main place, uh, it's like all these rare beers that I'm trying to get my hands on. It's not the brewery that's fucking me. It's the distributor and it's the beer store. You know. Well, let, me, let me ask you this: You live in Colorado. What do you pay for a, a, like a super high premium uh, Avery beer, like a Rumkin or Pumpkin, okay, a Rumkin so, Pumpkin, like something uh, like that, like a fucking tweak or something like that? All right. So right now, sitting in my little mystery beer box, I have the Beast. Right. Okay. Now, Beast is a Grand Cru. I think it's uh, seven. Eight, 19 percent. The, the Beast is like 18, 19 percent. I think. Yeah. So, all right. Now, um, the, uh, to make my argument clear, I recently went to a tap house in Denver. If y'all ever get a chance to go, I highly recommend y'all do. It's uh, Falling Rocks Tap House in Denver. Now, they had Beast. Uh, batch number one from 2004. I was able to pick up that bottle for twenty dollars. All right. Now the Beast 2014, ten years later, it cost me the same fucking price. And I go to another store, which I was talking about earlier, and they have it for eight dollars. What the fuck? Like the one I bought was eight dollars. I don't know if y'all can see that, but yeah, see that's a fucking almost a, a offensive, insane cheap where I live. Like, like I'll pay for a beast like eighteen to twenty dollars. If you're paying eight bucks, like I want, I want my hymen back. Yeah, but I have to drive like almost an hour away to get that price. So when you I'd have, in... have to drive, I'd have to drive 
Uh, what is that, 36 hours to get that? Where do you live? I live in Colorado Springs, right? So it's about an hour. Well, an, hour an hour with a freaking gas price, but not an hour there and an hour back, you're still saving money off that $10. And, yeah, the, point, and, and the point is, the point is regional is regional, but... It's, it's well, some, some to me, uh, to, to me, driving two hours to pick up one bottle of beer for eight dollars, which I could pick up for twenty. You know, I could have already bought the beer, drank the beer. But you got to you gotta think you're beer. going. You go there and you buy six of those beers. Now you've saved sixty dollars. Ah, so it, <laughs> it's all about buying in bulk. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. you find those deals, you buy in bulk. Uh, well, I yeah. seen. Uh, what do you guys think for bound juice down there? Like a, a four pack of tramp stamp at my at one of my particular outlets is twenty bucks, and fifteen bucks if you get the chocolate sombrero. That seems a bit out there for price. Uh, well, I mean, what I, I'm what I'm curious uh, curious about. Sorry, uh, but what I'm curious about is when is this uh, like total line of being a bearer show and a support group? That's the thing I'm kind of curious about. But anyway, you guys go ahead. Uh, Here's a question. Here's a question just to show the difference in price for everybody. What is a 2-4 of bush light cost in your area? In Ontario, twenty nine ninety five. Mine is like 17 How much? Uh, $17. $17? No, no. How much? How many cans of uh, bush? Two, a case. A case. Oh, if a we're case. Doing, no, this is, this is bottles. If we're doing, okay. if we're doing How many cans, bottles of bush? Uh, okay. 24. 24 bottles of bush. All right. So 24 bottles of bush. Most liquor stores around here, because oh. they have absolute control over who they uh, who they take in, uh, you can only buy bush around my area in grocery stores. So we're looking at the reduced 3.2% because of Colorado law. Now, I can get 24 bottles of bush for about 25 bucks. I can actually, uh, if you're talking about bottles, I can get it probably about just above 20 bucks. If you're talking about cans, like a 24 pack of cans, it's less than 20. So uh, right can, cans 20 are more expensive in Ontario. If I did a uh, two four of cans, I'd be and looking I, at 36. Well, I can get a, I can bigger. get a 30 a 30 pack, not a 24, a 30 pack of Bush for less than 20 bucks. Yeah. Wow. Because a beer yeah. comes in the United States, it comes in 12, 24, or 30 packs. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, our, our, our lowest legal price in Ontario is is $30 for a 2-4 right now. Yeah. Well, y'all have a lot more. Y'all have a lot of alcohol tax, right? Oh, yeah. Last, last, last time I visited Canada, now mind you, this was about five years ago, whatever, and I was in uh, Montreal. And I, I just remember looking through the liquor store and the bottles there. I, I was looking for a bottle of Freud Scotch, and that thing was about fifty dollars more than it is here in America. Oh, when it comes to spirits, we get absolutely bent over for them. Yeah, I okay. mean, it, it definitely looked like it. Like in the States, I, uh, I'll share a link with you later for a uh, a really good Ontario documentary, and um. You don't have to watch it if you don't want to. It's about Ontario beer, but it's really interesting if you really are interested in, in the beer market. It's about an hour and a bit. I'm actually in the documentary, so I'm doing a shameless plug for myself. Um, it uh, it's called uh, it's called Straight Up, and it's a great thing, and it shows you what the price is of wine, spirits, and beer in Ontario, what the government taxes are, and then what the Ontario taxes on top of it are. And uh, it's kind of gross. Again, if you're if you're looking at spirits, a 26er of spirits, uh, the average price is 29.95 for a 26er of spirits. That 29.95, it's like uh, five dollars, five dollars to the distillery, and the other 24 dollars is going to both the provincial and gov and uh, and provincial provincial and federal governments. Uh, beer. Thirty-six dollars was the price they used for beer because that's an average two four. Uh, it was ten dollars to the brewery and the rest of it to taxes. Uh, wine, they were looking at the fourteen dollar bottle of wine, and it was something like four dollars to the winery and the rest of it to taxes. Well, uh, uh, does, does it seem like there is a, a good increase to the profit of the brewery? Do you think that they are actually like? 
making a substantial amount of money off of that tax. The, the, the brewery is only making that, that $10 off of anything sold at the at the LCBO or at the beer store. Okay, uh, here, here's, the thing, here's the thing that I always wonder about and why I, I get a little agitated with a lot of the breweries in Ontario. Because it's all greed-based is what it comes down to. But again, it's all about money. So if they sell a beer at the LCBO for $8 a bottle, out of that eight dollars a bottle, they're probably getting about three dollars. The other, the other five, well, no, not even. They'd probably be getting about two dollars. The other six is right into taxes. Uh, three dollars to federal, three dollars to provincial. Now, if they sell it at the brewery, they get that whole five dollars as profit, and three dollars goes to federal. So, the thing is, why don't you lower your price even by a dollar? to sell it at the L at your brewery because then you're bringing more people into the brewery because they're saving money because they'll go to the brewery to buy it. You're making more money and the customer's saving money. But no, you'll have it at the exact same price as at the LCBO. Isn't there... Uh, I think there might be something where you're not allowed to sell it. Like, if you're selling in the LCBO, I don't think you're allowed to sell it from your own retail place at a different price. You, you have a slight variance. There is allowed to be a slight variance, not much, though. I have a super uh, curious question that, like, hits on this point, like, immensely. My buddy Joe um, bought a um, – you reviewed it before, Chad. One of my favorite beers. It's uh, Guten Carlos's uh, Cuba, Cuba de Kaiser Blue, the yeah. Kaiser Blau. You, he picked that up today at LCBO. Okay, for eight dollars and ninety cents. Eight dollars and ninety cents. I can't get that any cheaper in the United States for twelve bucks. The same bottle. Well, so how does better, that, you, play, you, how you does that work? How does that work there? Uh, well, they're not they're not getting as many taxes off of it because it's not it's not brewed here. So one, they can lower the price because of that. But what you're looking but at. What's with the that difference stuff, between U.S. versus Canada? That's a, you're, 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 well, you're, a lot of U.S. goes up there, but I would I would well, say that a big difference about America and Canada. And now I might be completely ignorant to the Canadian beer distribution uh, process, but in America, I know that a lot of states they have to sell. The brewery has to sell their own beer to the distributor, and that automatically. You know, it, it puts the price ranging in the distributor's hand. Yeah, and I understand what you're saying, but what I'm, what uh, Chad is saying is a lot of times they're like really crippled by cost when it comes to Ontario on pricing. Ontario craft brewers are crippled in. by the cost. Ontario craft brewers are crippled by the cost. When you're coming in from uh, outside of Canada, you're just paying the import fee, and then you're paying the LCBO markups. You're not paying the actual taxes on top of that. But then, how are you guys getting like a Guten Carlos at a super niche price and not everything because else? Because it's not brewed here in Canada. But, uh, but, in what we, but my question is, why aren't you getting a ton of other great beers? Because the LCBO that, is the because there's two places you can sell in Ontario. You can sell at the LCBO and the beer store. There's only so much shelf space at both. Okay. So. You, as a company, if you're going into the beer store, you have to pay your fees, right? You have to pay per store, per SKU, per size, per product. So if you're trying to get, what is it? Uh, they said two, two, different, two different sizes of one beer in 50 stores would cost you $30,000. But, but uh, a Guten Carlos isn't paying that fee. They're, they're, because they're, they're in the LCBO. LC but what I'm saying is the LCBO ch probably chose to import them, so they're not paying it. Uh, they're not. No, the LC the LCBO is like a franchise. You have to. Well, you have to. The LCBO. The reason people don't go to it is it takes months to get into. First off, because you're doing all this different testing. You're doing taste testing. You're doing product testing. You're doing uh. They're, they're breaking it down to molecular testing, and then after that, you have to find stores that will carry you. And then you have to find stores that have the room for you because each store is a different size. Some stores can only have 50 brands. Some stores can have 20. Some stores can have 100. And then you have to find a way to get yourself onto that shelf. And, well, and my point is, is uh, I'm just like super curious as to how a 12% beer by me, which I thought was super cheap, which is actually like really cheap, like uh, the Google uh, Kaiser Blau. 
twelve dollars a seven fifty is mad cheap, even in, for Pennsylvania standards, is four dollars cheaper in Ontario. Like I'm trying to figure out where that well, our, our southern tier pump, pump, yeah. pump king is two dollars cheaper in Ontario than it is in the U.S. It uh, it probably sat in the LCBO warehouse for three years. But well, what I'm saying is, why date, so. why is it that much cheaper? Like like I understand what you're talking about. Like it, it, like. They, it has to cut, cross paths and do whatever, but like, you, why you is it you're, you're, you're not thinking about what the LCBO is, which is the single largest distributor of alcohol in the world. That's what it is. The single largest distributor of alcohol in the world. They force breweries and distilleries to give them the prices they want. Say say you're, uh, we were talking earlier about uh, about uh, what, what distillery were you talking about, Greg? Um, Stillwater. Stillwater. So Stillwater goes up, and they go, you know what? We want to pay. We want to charge thirty-five dollars a bottle for this. We want you to sell it. We want you to charge thirty-five dollars a bottle. Well, the LCBO looks at them and goes, you know what? We actually want you to charge thirty-seven dollars a bottle. They have to charge thirty-seven, or they can go, we want you to charge thirty-three dollars a bottle. You have to charge. Well, I, actually, you know what? That's true because Stillwaters they make a vodka. And they sell for thirty-five bucks a bottle at the LCBO, and they've got a record of saying is they feel their vodka should be priced at a more premium price. They would like to charge more for it, but the LCBO will not char will not let them charge more than thirty-five dollars a bottle for whatever reason because they don't consider their bottle to be premium enough. So because of that, they're stuck at thirty-five bucks a bottle. So go figure. Yeah, the LCBO has full control over pricing because they are the single largest purchaser of alcohol in the world. It sounds weird, but, but it's... There's, there's a huge difference between, uh, like, the, 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 the numbers... I'm not saying the numbers don't add up, but there's such a huge difference. It almost seems like... I don't know. I don't know. Would like, you there be has buying to be... in Pennsylvania, the amount of alcohol your distributor would be buying in Pennsylvania compared to the amount of bottles of Gudin Curlis that they're buying here in Ontario, is probably like a fifth the size. That's the reason a lot of craft brewers in Ontario can't even get into the LCBO, is the size demand they have. Uh, Brimstone. Brimstone keeps talking about getting into the LCBO. They're a seven-barrel system. If they want to get into the LCBO with their Hail Mary lawn, which is what they want to put in the LCBO, they have to be brewing every single day for a month before they'd have this the capacity to get into the LCBO. And my, and this is my question. It's uh, not even actually a question. My curiosity is I don't know if the LCBO is charging fair or if they're getting a deal, if that makes any sense. I don't know if my area, which I think $12 for a bottle of uh, Guten Carlos Emperor is fantastic. I have no problem paying 12 bucks for that. Like I'll pay it every day. I don't know if that's a a good deal or a bad deal. I've seen more. I've seen less. But to see eight versus twelve, I don't know if if especially when if, ten dollars your money would give you a good deal of change back. Exactly. So I don't know if like just from that standpoint, I don't know if I'm be uh, like if I'm having an okay deal and you're getting awesome hookups or there's some kind of shit in between. That's my point. Well, even in like for. Where I have a privatized liquor in Alberta, I'll go to one store and I'll knock five bucks off a bottle. So I got to drive around a little bit, right? Yeah, but there's there's a difference between five dollars off a liquor. It, there's difference between five bucks off a forty dollar bottle of liquor as opposed to. Oh, oh I, meant, I meant beer. I, I, no, I meant beer. If we go talk scotch, we'll shave seventy bucks. Yeah. Uh, what I'm saying, uh, the point I'm trying to make is, four dollars off a four twelve dollar bottle is a huge markup, markdown, yeah. and that's that was my point. You you know what? Here's the thing. Like I do a lot of both Canadian and U.S. shopping, and I buy a lot of beer and I buy a lot of uh, liquor as well. I'm a big whiskey guy, a big rum guy, a big tequila guy. And when it comes to the LCBO and shopping, I'm only comparing this to Michigan. I can't really see other states. Um, our prices are actually pretty competitive. With products that you can get in both Michigan and Ontario, our prices are very competitive. And oftentimes you can get them at cheaper price than the LCBO, especially when you take into account the fact that our Canadian dollar is in the shooter right now. When it comes to liquor... Canadians and uh, Ontarians especially are being completely bent over. Like you can get a bottle of, I'll use an example, uh, 
Ardbeg Ugedal, which is a fairly common scotch and a very popular scotch. You can get it for about 59, 69 bucks in Michigan. And it costs you about $180 in Ontario. So I, I think I think the whole thing that he's forgetting here is where where he's sitting. He has a three tier system, so he has a group that is bringing this beer in, paying their price, bringing the beer in. Then they're selling that beer to a retailer who is selling it to them. What that we have here price. is the government, the government going, give us this beer at this price. This is what we're selling it at. There's no middleman here. You have the government buying the beer. <coughs> But see, the case, in the case of spirits, the government will actually sometimes say that the spirit company may say, hey, we can give you this beer, this sorry, this spirit for $50 a bottle, and then you can mark it up whatever you want. And the LCBO will actually say, no, we will pay you $60 a bottle. We'll pay you more because we want to sell it for more. And they will actually pay the distributor more money than they can get it for because the LCBO basically, they come up with their price ahead of time. They say, we want to sell this for X amount of money. Therefore, we want, to, we want to buy it for X amount of money. And because of that, if the distributor gives them a deal and sells it for less, the LCBO will actually say, no, we will pay well, more money for Well, that's exactly where this whole, thing, this whole thing about private liquor started was because of that. Because the governor general and the auditor general came out and they said, this is what we found. We have the power to make them charge whatever we want. But we're not charge making them pay us less. Like we're not making them charge us less, so we can make more of a profit. We're making them charge us more, and we're making less of a profit. Like just like you said, things like the the distillery or the breweries. Like we want to sell this to you for twenty dollars a bottle. No, we're paying you thirty dollars a bottle, and we're going to charge forty. Why don't you just fucking buy it for the twenty dollars a bottle and sell it for forty? There you go. You just made an extra ten dollars every single bottle you set, sold directly going into the government coffers. Well, one cool thing about all the regionalism, like let's say, like well, Ontario has a different thing than other provinces, but it, it creates diversity in the beer world because of that. If everyone had the same laws, everybody would get the same shit. You know, it would be more big guys to get into it. Like Ontario has way more craft than, than Alberta does, right? Because I can go get whatever, but it's hard to compete with that. Without an LCBO. Hey, Winter is coming. I actually asked us a question. He's the only person of the six people here that actually followed us through. And asked Woo! A question. <laughs> it was, what is the most money you've ever spent on a single beer? Oh, easy, easy. Seventy-five right. bucks. Bam! That was my number. <laughs> All right, so I, I really wanted a heady topper, right? That was like my goal for year one on reviewing beers. That was my big beer. I wanted to review heady topper. I, in order to get Hetty Topper, I had to trade a certain amount of beer to get it, and that plus shipping and uh, taxes and stuff like that ended up being $75 exactly. But I got a four-pack, so I can't complain. Or maybe I can, I don't know. Okay, Zerker, what was the most money you've ever spent on a single beer? 21 bucks for uh, uh, Iron Fist uh, Triple IPA. I haven't drank it yet. 21 bucks. <laughs> How about you, Greg? Well, technically speaking, I did buy a bottle of Sam Adams Utopia for, for $115. However, the LCBO broke it, so I never actually ended up getting that bottle. I ended up getting a refund for it. Oh, shit. Um, the most I've actually spent on a beer that I ended up drinking was Bellwood's Motley Crew, which I think was $20 for a 750 milliliter bottle. Uh, Devin. Mm. Yeah, I think it would have just been uh, like anything from the LCBO itself. So, um, for some reason, um, uh, Schmaltz Brewing Company's Hebrew comes to mind. I can't remember what the LCBO charged for it. But it was like a 16% beer. I feel like it was around like $16, $17. Oh, the Hebrew uh, Jubilation. Hebrew, uh, Jubilation. Hebrew Jubilation. Yeah, it was like $17. Hey, that's tasty, though. Um, I remember like speaking in tongues by the end of the night. Well, I don't, remem <laughs> I don't remember it, but I remember waking up and looking at my phone and not texting, like looking at messages I sent that made no sense, but... 
Um, I can't really think of anything more than that that I have paid for. There may have been something, but I'm not uh, not 100%. Okay. E, most expensive you've ever spent on one beer. I think it was the Brasserie Illimité in Maltes. I, think I did that for my 400th video, like it's 30 bucks or something. It's a malt. Um, the, the one I can remember the most is the $18 bottles of uh, Whiny Bastard. I bought like three bottles. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful beer, but it's $18 a bottle. The most I've ever spent, I remember spending it. I just don't remember which beer it was because it wasn't a very good beer. It wasn't horrible enough for me, for me to be angry, but uh, it was $22, the most I've ever spent on a single beer. It was a seven fifty. I just don't remember the name. The eighteen dollars is the most I've spent that I can remember off the top of my head, especially since I have a bottle of it left over on the other side of the beach. Oh yeah, I, I bought five bottles of Whiny Bastard, and I don't, I don't regret it one bit. That is a fantastic beer. It is. It is a fantastic beer. Like, oh. like the Motley Crew, the twenty dollar Motley Crew I bought. I kind of, it was a good beer. Don't get me wrong, but it wasn't an amazing beer. Whereas Whiny Bastard for eighteen bucks a bottle. Shit, if I finish those bottles and they still have some more Nickelbrook, I'll, I will buy some Especially more. when you figure they're 750s and what you're buying for $20 is a 500 from uh, from Bellwoods. No, at Bellwoods it was a seven. This was a special release. It was oh, a they did have a 750. Yeah, there was one time I know of that they released a 750, but still, I because I, I know the the $15 bring out your deads are are 500s. Yeah, they, those are 500s. This was one time they only released the Motley Crew 2013 in a 750, and then the 2014, I think, came in a 500. I think they charged 14 bucks for the bottle, 13 or 14 bucks for the bottle. Now, a quick question: Has anybody ever been on mybeerseller.com? Uh, only as a topic for here because of the Cantillon sale for twenty five hundred dollars. All right. Well, all right. Like I said, I, I make uh, I guess decisions that I want to have this beer. I this bought beer. A, I, I bought beer off there before. Well, uh, okay. So Hetty Topper was year one. Year two, I want to have uh, a Dark Lord or a Dark Lord variant, right? And me, I'm a fan of vanilla, and I, I've been debating for fucking months. I cannot decide if I should spend the $250 for a 22-ounce bomber of vanilla Dark Lord. I, I, I have been debating on it. That is just so much money. It's ridiculous. There's no debate, man. If it's $250, I can buy 25 amazing beers for that price. No, I agree, but it's, yeah. it's, it's something, you know, it's just something about the, the branding, you know. The but, thing is, with, with my beer seller, you, like, chances are 99% of the stuff you find on my beer seller are, is not even worth your time. Like, oh, no. But there, you can find some good things on there, but get off that. I mean... You can find that beer. You can find talk to other people. You can yeah, talk to human see, beings here's, here's and the, find it. Here's the problem with that. Like, I, okay, so I I decided if I'm gonna go balls deep and I'm gonna go for Dark Lord, I want to go for the variant that I think I'll like the best, which will be the vanilla one because I love vanilla stouts. So I, I've reached out to other different uh, beer trading communities, and what it's come down to is I, I've been building a seller for several years, and I am very proud of my seller. I don't think it's anything to scoff at, you know, not not to sound like a dick or anything, but basically I'm going to have to give my entire fucking seller away in order to get one bottle when I could just pay $250 to get this. And and going back to that uh, that article from Jordan St. John, there's so much more beer out there. I know, but it's just. But, it, but it, and I will, and I, I'll actually right now go on the other side of chat right now and say if you want that shit, order it. Suck, suck it. Whatever anybody else thinks, if you want that freaking beer and you think it's worth it, then order it. Hey, in, in the end, he's going to do whatever he wants. He's asking and, opinions. And would I ever pay two hundred and fifty dollars for a bottle of beer? No, there's no way in fuck. I would have to pay two hundred fifty dollars for a bottle. See, here, of beer. here's the thing, right? And again, I don't. How much? How much does that bottle of beer sell for us? Chat, 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 chat. Uh, at right the now. brewery, I chat. think it goes for about sixty dollars. Yeah, so somebody's trying to just profit one hundred eighty dollars. Uh, let's no, let's I, put it this I, way. I guess... Chad, how much would you pay for a bottle of Utopias? I'm not the. Me, I, truthfully, I, I wouldn't I know pay more than fifty bucks for a bottle of beer ever. 
So well, that's, no that's way just crazy talk. Never buy a utopia. That's but crazy it, talk, anyway. It's not crazy talk. See, I will, I will drink, I will drink your macro lagers all day long. I, I am not above drinking a macro. I think there is a certain uh, specialty about drinking macros and even drinking uh, malt liquors, stuff like that. There's just something special about it. But when you're looking at these high end beers. You know, the market is, is supply and demand. People will pay this, and I, I'm trying to decide if I'm one of those people who will indeed pay it. Because I've seen uh, 10th anniversary Utopias going for fucking 500 to $700. Now, me, I, I, I can't afford that. I, there's no way in hell I can afford it. But if I save up for a couple months, I might be able to afford the $250 you know, for a couple months. Who's saying it's high-end, man? That, that's the thing is like beer like, sort of relative. Opinion? No, let's see, that's the thing. It's it's one of those black hole things. Everybody's so, like, oh, so dark dark dollars for this, two hundred and fifty dollars for it, and you hate it. What will you do then? Well, that's I'm gonna exactly fucking it, drink man. it. I'm gonna drink it. You know, you'll have, have the experience. Is what exactly. you have. Now, now, I, I've I've said this several times throughout the night. I think my time is uh, more valuable than anything else, all right? So, and uh, I read a quote the other day. I don't remember who it's from, but it was that time wasted and enjoyed is better than, uh, you know, time just wasted. You know, time enjoyed. <laughs> fuck, I fucked that up. Time it wasted is, but there, and there's enjoyed. A there's a cross point where suddenly your money becomes more valuable than your time if you're spending X amount of money on something like my my opinion on a beer is that I can get some excellent beers for in the range of around ten to twenty dollars a bottle. Yeah. Any more than that, do I feel uh, whatever beer it is? Now I haven't tried this dark lord vanilla. It could be the greatest beer in the world that gives me a thousand orgasms when I drink it. <laughs> but my whole thing is, is I find it hard to believe that any beer to me can be that much better than something like Epiphany Number no. One or Bring Out Your Dead or or Winey Bass or something along those lines. I don't believe that. And those are all beers well, that I can get for under twenty dollars a bottle. Okay, so here's here's where I really so, the, the real debate came from. Uh, Hetty Topper was my goal to drink in year one of beer reviewing. And I was able to succeed in that. But do I honestly think Hetty Topper lives up to the hype? Ugh, you know, when I first drank it, I thought so. But in retrospect, I've had so many other double IPAs that just fucking trump it, you know, easily. And they're like a fourth of the price. Exactly. But... I still fall back into that black hole where I, I want Star I, I wanted to try West Bullet Terran 12 for so long. And it was sent to me. Uh, one of my friends sent me a bottle of it. We did a beer trade. And it cost him $16 a bottle. Of it. Here in Ontario, it was something like $18 a bottle. You had to buy a six-pack, though, so it was more than $18. But it broke down to $18 a bottle. After trying it, I'm glad I didn't pay for it because I would have been pissed off with myself. Or that know, it's just I mean, was it, a good, was it a good beer? Yes, it was a good beer. Was it a beer that was worth that price? Not at all, and it pissed me off. You know, you know, the uh, hype never... When, when a beer so, gets that hyped up, it never lifts up. So I guess here's the real question, uh, and this is for everybody. What is your, like, your fucking bucket list beer? You know, I would love to try a Westie 12. If I could have gotten it at a six-pack for the price they were charging the LSPL, I would have bought it. I probably would have tried to share it with somebody, let a few other people try it out for the price. But at the end of the day, I could go to the bar down the street for me. I could try it tonight for about 45 bucks a bottle. I'm not willing to pay that for it because I just don't feel that it's going to be worth it. I'm sure it's good beer. Don't get me wrong. I don't feel it's going to be worth 45 bucks a bottle. Um, yeah. And it just comes down to, you know, you may say that you love West West Laverne 12. Like, I know, um, I think Nick really loves Nest, West Laverne 12. And you know what? To him, maybe it is worth 45 bucks a bottle. It, and that's great. If he wants to pay that, that's great. To me... And I'd rather Roche no. 10 for uh, $3 a bottle. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, not having anything to compare it to, Roche for 10 and especially I like the... Um, the, um, what is St. Bernard's 12? Oh, I, I think yeah. those are excellent alternatives when it comes to quad. I mean, maybe Westy 12 is better, maybe it's not, but I'm not really willing to spend 45 bucks a bottle to figure it out. Yeah, it's just it's something about that that name, you know, the branding. It, it, you know, it, 
the hype. Uh, uh, you know, maybe other people don't <coughs> like this, but I kind of give in the hype. Well, well, it's like you can, you can get a knockoff. I... Sorry. Go on. Go ahead. I was just going to say, like, Buddy buys Les Pauls from Gibson for, like, 3500 bucks, and you can get knockoffs from other companies like Vintage. They're way fucking better for 400 So, like, go on a Beersmith fucking website, find the recipe for that beer. It might be on there. Fucking brew one. Get, get a similar strain of yeast if you get your hands on it and fucking go for it. You know, uh, you, know you buy it at 45 bucks. You know, that's not a lot compared to what some fuckers blow on shit all the time, you know, like, that's pretty low. Well, again, it, comes, it, for Dark Lord. <laughs> it, it, comes down, it comes down to everyone what you, what's your inventory, right? Like, or, or sorry, what's your cash flow? If you've got a Ferrari or a Lamborghini sitting in your in your garage right now, then you probably don't give a shit. You can spend $500 exactly. on a bottle of beer, whatever you want. Um, if you're a regular working Joe like most of us are, then you may have a cash limit of, you know, you may not, beer may not be the only thing in your life. You may want to do something else with your money, and you have to take that all into account. If you're in a position where beer is the only thing you have to spend your money on, go fucking nuts. Spend as much fucking money on it as you want, because who cares? Well, see, that's the thing. I, me, my, my primary hobby is beer. You know, I have other hobbies, definitely, but my primary hobby is beer and uh, home brewing. And, you know, I think I could sacrifice homebrewing a couple months out of the year in order to afford, you know, this $250, which I, I do not get me wrong. I do think it is fucking outrageous. But the experience, I can't tell yet if the experience. And that's, and that, and that's where I think, I think. There's a difference. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, if the guy was charging eighty dollars a bottle, whatever. We'll see. I mean, okay. That's the thing. That's the thing. Like, I'll pay whatever the hell I want for a bottle. But there's like, I'll do research, find out what what things are are worth, and then go from there. What things are worth to me, and then base that off of what I'm willing to pay. So, like, if there's something that I'm like, there's beers out there that I'm not willing to pay twenty bucks for that people will pay eighty and vice versa. So then I will pay that amount of money I wish to pay for that beer and then actually pay for it. Like you're saying, like right now, like like Chad's like, I will never pay above a certain amount for a bottle of beer. Well, I would pay $100 for a bottle of Utopias all day long and never blink an eye. Never <laughs> blink an eye. I would never blink an eye at that. I wish I could. $100 I wish, all day long. I wish I had an mean? opportunity to find Utopias at that but, price. But then there's then there's other beers that I'm like, really, you wanna, you're going to ask me to spend $50 on this $750 that other beers that can't be owned? I wouldn't do that. If so you, it's subjective and it's objective. It's subjective and objective. If you've uh, homebrewed or if you've brewed commercially, if you've brewed commercially or – what, like me, where I've actually kind of contract brewed at two different breweries. If you brewed and you know the cost of brewing, I do. And know. then you look at, like, no, I'm talking cost of brewing though on a commercial level. And then you look at the cost that they're charging. No, there's no way in fuck I will ever pay that money for a beer. But everybody's different. That's fine. My problem here is there's a guy that is completely and utterly filling in the mule, make as much money as I can thing. Mm -hmm. You know he went out and he bought as many of those bottles as he could for sixty dollars a bottle, hoping that he could fuck somebody into paying two fifty a bottle. And that's the thing is I don't really like to support people like that who are just a bunch of assholes who because they buy a bunch of extra stuff they make it difficult for regular people who just want to try a beer to get the stuff. Okay, perfect example. Perfect example. I'll put it right now. I'll ask anybody out there, uh, based off of this text, do you think this is obscene? My buddy just wrote me. He just bought... Okay, I'll hold it up. He just bought two 1993... Or, no, three 1993 Thomas Hardys, two 1995 Thomas Hardys, and a 19... Or 2004 Thomas Hardy. That's what he just bought. He just sent that to me. And he's, so he just bought five bottles of Thomas Hardy, three 1993s, two 1995s, and a 2005 for $100. Do you think that's obscene? No. No, that's a fucking bargain. 
As I, far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I, I don't know if those beers that well, but that sounds like a reasonable deal, considering I know that's a... He just got fine, but what I'm saying is... 93, like, that sounds fucked. That's what I'm saying. Three ninety threes, two ninety fives, and a and a two thousand five. Uh, so six beers altogether. Five, five beers at twenty dollars a bottle. Okay. Well, of I'll of, of, of beers. Uh, but they're they're like twenty two years old, twenty one years old. Uh, and that's and but that's what I'm saying. Nice like, where do, where do we draw the line? Do we draw the line at age? Do we draw the line at quality? Where do we draw the line? It's a matter of what well, we think is good. Well, go right that's down. what I would pay the most of, and that's where I draw the line. If No matter how bad I want the beer, if it's over my line, there's no way I'm buying it because like, like it's been written before, and like every brewer out there will say to you, there is so much beer in the world, it doesn't matter. I can find so much beer that's just as good as it or better for a lot less money. Yeah, I want it because there's hype, but at $250 a bottle, you know what? I can get fucking 25 bottles of Epiphany number one and be fucking drunk out of my mind five days. And you know what? But, 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 but a 30,000 bottles of a nine beer is not equal a ten beer. No, uh, I, I, I want to agree with Matt. I, I, I lean towards Matt, definitely. I, I think that if you're willing to pay it, you're you know if that if it means but that. But what's much, to say that that beer that only costs you ten dollars isn't also a ten? But no, that's no, no, a, no, I'm, 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 I'm a value I'm a value guy, man. Like I, if you watch my reviews, I always I do fucking if, if it's good, if it's valuable, if it's available. I'm all about value. I love value. I love buying a ten dollar six pack. Over a twenty dollar four pack that's just as equal. Okay. But well, what I'm saying I, is, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> I, I think uh, I, somebody brought this up earlier. The Saint Bernardus Abbey Twelve versus the West Bladderland Twelve. Okay. So you look at those, and from everything I've researched, I've never had West Bladderland. Okay. But from everything I've researched, they say that Saint Bernardus Abbey Twelve is the closest you will get to uh, the flavor, the quality, and everything. But you drink a St. Bernardus 12, that's not the same experience as drinking a West Letterland. Well, see, a lot of that is psychological. It's like, is the West Laverne 12 a lot better than the St. Bernardus 12? And well, I, I haven't tried both of them. I don't know. But I'm I had, this, is, this is what it came down to. Uh, St. Bernardus 12 used to brew Westy 12. Exactly. St. Bernardus 12 used Listen. to brew. What happened was when they opened up their own when they opened up their own brewery on the on the Abbey Estate, they ended up bringing it over there, and St. Bernard's had to change yeast strain. That's the only difference between the two of them. It doesn't matter though, because for me, I've tried them all. I've had the La Trappe, I've had the West Berlin Twelve, I've had the uh, I've had the St. Bernard's, I've had the Rochefort. Rochefort Ten is what I'd like out of the, them all anyway. And it's I an agree. amazing price. It's it's three fifty a bottle here in Ontario when it's here. It but I don't. But I, I don't agree on because of the price. I agree because of the taste. And oh, that's no, I, the taste is what's getting me. But I'm just saying, even if they tasted the same, it wouldn't matter because I can get fucking five bottles of Rochefort Ten for the same price I can get one bottle of West. <laughs> what I'm okay. saying okay. is, okay. If, a, if if a beer is a ten, like a pure ten. And the best beer I can get, it's a pure 10, but it's $100, but uh, I can get a 9 at $20. I might every now and then splurge on a 10. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying I'm going to buy the 10 all the time. But, but a lot I'm of saying is every now and then I'll splurge on the 10 to get the 10 taste. You know, a lot you of it I mean? has to do with, with me anyway. A lot of it has to do with how are you splurging? Are you splurging by saying the brewery's offering to you for 100 bucks a bottle, you're willing to pay that? Or is it some asshole seller who bought a whole bunch of them? It's a, it's a, it's a mood. It's a, I think that's a mood argument yeah. because we're talking about no, like no, see, uh, me, we're talking it's, about it's, it's about availability. No, yes, see, exactly. Not, because I, I'm not willing to. I'm not willing to give right. somebody a two hundred dollar profit. No, let's just look at it this they way. They happen to sell shit. Okay, do y'all know what the process is to get Dark Lord? Because I've researched the shit out of this. That's the one you have to buy tickets for, right? Yes. Okay. So, all right. So, here's my understanding. If in, if I'm wrong, please correct me. But from my research, this is what I understand. To get Where's Dark e? Lord. Right now, E should be here because he's bought Dark Lord before. <laughs> well, all right. So, this is my understanding of Dark Lord Day. One, you have to be in the region. You have to be in Indiana to get it, right? So, you go to Indiana, and there 
you're able to purchase a ticket, a raffle ticket, you know, so you're paying to chance. You get the chance. At that chance, you are now eligible to be into the Dark Lord. Once you get into that, you are also able to pay for a raffle for the, uh, you know, the the variants, the brandy, the the port, the Repi Van, uh, Peppy Van Winkle, all those different things. And so, vanilla being my favorite of the stout categories, the the chances of me being able to go to Indiana on the right day, get the right ticket that allows me to purchase at a chance the uh, vanilla you know, uh, Dark Lord, that is, is just so fucking, uh, it, it's minuscule. It, the, the, the ability for me to get it is almost impossible. So if I have the opportunity to get it, I'm willing to pay the markup price for A, convenience, B, it'll make up the travel, C, it'll uh, limit the whole random factor. And the, the, what, I, what I'm really contemplating about is, is the experience worth the price? Well, first off, like I think you're talking about an ex, an ex, uh, a singular experience. Like you're right, talking about, right. like uh, you, you, your does with his uh, Conan beers. You know what I mean? I think that's what you're talking about. To where it's like a singular experience where you're so obsessed with a singular brewery to where you're like so pumped about getting it to where you get blinders on. And then there's nothing else. You know what I mean? That's my problem. I definitely, I'm not going to lie, I do have those blinders on where this is my And, 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 and like, not that, like, not to, like, pull your into that. Like, I, I threw his name out there. Like, he, like, oh, like, I mean, I'm not talking about him, like, doing that. I'm just trying to bring up, bring up an example. Um, but what I'm saying is, like, there's a difference between having blinders on and having, uh, between knowing what you want and knowing what you want pay for. So there's a difference between like a brewery release to where you'll like throw everything at the wall to get it as opposed to what you will throw into it. Well see my, my personal situation uh, my personal life it, it's not absurd it's not obscene for me to be able to pay $250. It, uh, that comes down to managing my finances enough to where I uh, reallocate my average weekly beer allotment and focus it towards one specific goal. Which and that's, and that's what we were talking about earlier when it was brought up about finances, about who, like, I was what your money that. market is. You, yeah. you know what? You need to look at your own... Everyone has their own financial situation. Like some of us, like I think looking at the panel tonight, I think Chad's the only one who has kids, and you know that stuff you have to take into account. If you're, if you're a single guy, you've got money to spend on beauty. The basically the only thing you have to ask yourself is, I have two hundred and fifty dollars. Will it make me happier to buy this beer, or will it make me happier to buy two hundred and fifty dollars of whatever else the hell I like in life? Well, well, see, and, that's the thing. All right, so I, I do have a son, right? You know, he's uh, he's barely a year old now, but because of the situation I have, you know, I've placed my life in, I am able to allocate two hundred dollars for myself monthly on uh, whatever expenditure I, uh, you know, my hobbies, right? So let's just say $200. So uh, I, because I, I budget meticulously, I, I place a certain amount of money that, you know, I think is reasonable to pay for a one-year-old, you know, to clothes and stuff like that. I'm always going to provide, don't get me wrong. I, you know, being a father is important to me. I will always provide. But excess, you know, it, you know, I work. I, I, I think I should spend my two hundred dollars how I feel like I should spend my two hundred dollars, and so, you know. So you, you, you know what? It sounds to me like you have you have a pretty good budget in mind. So the really the question comes down to, and none of us can really answer this for you except for yourself. If you ask my personal opinion, I would say no. Don't buy the two hundred fifty dollar beer. However, if to you you feel two hundred fifty dollars of your budget, however much time that takes you to save that up is worth it to you, and you feel that the experience of drinking the beer is worth it, go ahead and buy it. I would say 100% go ahead and buy it. Is it worth it to me? No. If it's worth it to you and you're going to enjoy it, 
awesome. Go drink it. Go buy it. Drink it. And I will fucking toast you on untapped. <laughs> I, I, I guess the real question comes down to how, yeah, of course, everyone knows that beer drinking, beer reviewing, all that stuff is completely subjective. How far are you willing to push your subjective limits? Whichever I want. Whatever I want. As far as I want to go. Personally. Try and make a good situation out of it. Like, if you're going to do that, if you're going to buy that $250 beer, like, I probably wouldn't, but, like, capture the fucking yeast in the bottom. Yeah. And fuck around with that yeast stream. Yeah. Don't, totally. don't just dump it out, man. Like, save that yeast and tur turn it into something that you can build off of. Yeah, I mean, I did that with uh, the Beast 2004, the original batch. I, I, I sit there and I, you know those little caps that uh, they put salad dressing in? I asked the waitress, I was like, please, can I have an empty one of those so I could put the beast number, uh, batch number one yeast into it? That shit was pretty funny. They looked at me like I was crazy. But, no, I definitely agree with you. Definitely maximize uh, the experience as much as you can. But I guess where I'm having the most difficulty is $250 is, you know, no matter what your budget is, I think $250 to, you know, anyone is kind of an absurd amount. And even if I can afford it... Even if I can't I afford it. People you know, go to the bar and they, and they piss away a lot more money than that in 10 minutes. Can, can but, I just oh, ask one you, beer? Like, can I just well, ask one you? beer, but like basically, yeah. Uh, I just they get by our buddies you. around. So. Do, you, do you have any, like, is beer your only thing or are you into like wine or whiskey or anything uh, else like that? Alright, so uh, I, I guess uh, as far as alcohol goes, uh, I, I am a big beer drinker. Beer is my number one. I also drink a lot of meat. I drink a lot of, uh, I'm trying to get into wine, but so far really Savion Blanc is the only thing that I'm really intrigued in. Uh, I do drink a lot of scotch. Now, other hobbies I have, I skateboard a lot, right? So uh, I'm, because I skateboard so much, I'm, I'm spending about $100 a deck, you know, uh, every month. And uh, video games, I'm a huge video game fanatic. I also have another video, uh, YouTube channel where I do nothing but video games and stuff like that. But Console or, console or PC? <sighs> okay, so mostly I spend my mostly I spend my time on console. However, I am a big PC player. Fair enough. First of all, I'll say you don't need to separate console and PC. I'm a console and PC player. Anyone who is one or the other, fuck you, because they both have a place in life. No, fuck you, because hey, there's a hey. delineation. Okay. Hey, is there a difference else? between like it's difference between beer and wine? No, you know what? PC is good and for some things. Console yeah, is good for another. Beer is good as beer. Beer is good as and wine is good. Do you like wine? You know, personally, no. Uh, but no. Some people, there you go. That's my answer. No, but you know what? Some people who do like wine, I have nothing against their choice. That's the. And I have nothing choice. against PC. I have a PlayStation and a gaming PC. I was. Just I don't know. It sounds like you have a thing against PC. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's like beer. I think it's a hobby. It's whatever the hell you want, whatever the hell you're willing to spend money on. It's great. I have a play, a PS4, an Xbox One, and a PC, and I enjoy them all equally. I agree. They're, I agree. They're all good. Except what? except the PS4. I have the PS4, but I do oh, not. Enjoy okay. It. We we have this comment that uh, comes in and uh, is. Intriguing, I guess. Uh, this is about our argument we've been having right now. Um, well, not our discussion. As a guy who used to indulge in four hundred to five hundred dollars in coke, in I can coke, never see myself. I can never see myself spend that much for a beer. Twenty-five dollars on West Fuller and Twelve is my top spending. Well, are we talking coke, like you know, drinking? I'm thinking like you're talking <laughs> nothing. Uh, Some yeah, sugar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coca-Cola here. Hey, yeah, yeah, and then twenty-five. Uh, how much in Coke? 20, how much did he, he say? Four hundred to five hundred dollars a month in Coke. Ooh, that's not much. That's like that's like that's like thirty bucks a month in beer. So fuck Ooh, that. Guy. Uh, that's like a few <laughs> Money. It doesn't matter what you spend it on. Money's money. No, well, yes. In, in the end, it comes down to what you want to do. You asked our opinion. I wouldn't do it. Greg wouldn't do it. Devin didn't really say anything. Matt was yes, and uh, he didn't say anything. What? Never done it. No interest in doing it. No, but the thing I want. We're talking to... about fucking. Spending... We're talking about buying good beer, Gene. I'm buying. Not the master race. Fuck you. 
I have divided the beard to leave. DC Master Race. <laughs> I, I won't buy I the beer, but send Nazi me the yeast. Hey, um, I definitely have a yeast starter kit, so uh, anybody who wants the yeast, if I do buy it, if I do give in, I will definitely make sure to check back into beer games, and I will, uh, anybody who wants it, I'll send them a sample of the beer yeast. You know what, the thing I would like to get across personally, and I can't vouch for anyone else, is that everyone should spend their money what they want to spend on, and if you spend your money on that, I will be extremely happy for you. It personally wouldn't be something I would buy. I will be. No, happy I, for I you. fully agree with your earlier comments there, Greg. You know what? You you do what you want to do. You asked our opinion. This was our opinion. That's the way it is. We won't berate you for doing what you want to do, but do what you want to do. But if you ask our opinion, we'll openly tell you our opinion. No, I definitely respect that. I I, I I've been. On the fence about this for a so long my, time. So my opinion is, is the beer that you want to buy right now, that super expensive one, you're on the on the, on the cusp for. Buy that motherfucker and drink it and enjoy it. That's my opinion. Well, uh, I have another month or so. I started saving. I have another month to decide. I will uh, definitely check back in as much as I can. Work sometimes limits me from uh, participating. And if you want to start a Kickstarter. I'll throw in five bucks towards you, get <laughs> uh, I don't think I would get any help other than you, my friend. <laughs> but I do appreciate it. But uh, yeah, I, I should, you know what? I should do that just for shits and giggles because you know, uh, Stone. A Kickstarter for me to review. I do a, kick, care, a Kickstarter. A Kickstarter for me to review everything in Canada. I'm looking for a hundred grand. Well, you pretty much reviewed everything hey, uh, in Canada. That's not a bad idea. I would honestly look for uh, a couple other people to share that bottle with, man, if you're going to spend that much money. See, that's and the that's the point. All right, so I, um, like, I don't think it's like a terrible idea. I wouldn't personally spend the money. Like, I'm not in the best financial situation or anything, but, like, I don't know, man. Like, it's a lot of money to camp. Like, it is. There's a lot of beers that I bought that I've just hated. And that I thought I would really like, and to spend 250 bucks on it. I mean, like, if you share the disappointment with a bunch of people, at least you're all like, ah, we only spent like 20 bucks. And here's here's the thing about private sale from person to person. He spends 250 bucks on it, and it arrives broken. Too Ooh, fucking bad. Yeah, that does suck. I recently uh, I had a beer mail coming from Texas. It included uh, Bourbon County barley wine, Bourbon County coffee, and Prairie vanilla noir. That motherfucker broke the day it was supposed to be delivered to my house, and that guy was just shit out of luck. I still sent my package, but uh, you know my condolences went out to him. I was like, "That's like seventy-five dollars worth of, you know, quote unquote beer trade money," and I felt bad for him. There's no no guarantee in beer mail. I got a spit. silence. Yes, that was a, like a whole lot of silence right there. Uh, people remembering when beer was sent to them broken, you know. <laughs> or when you unwrapped a beer and uh, you didn't even do anything to it, but just from all the shaking on the truck, you unwrapped it and it burst in your hands. Oh, yeah. yeah. Never happened to me so far, but you had the, what's the last one, a gluten-free that exploded yeah, all over it your bed? it exploded all over my bed. My bed smelled beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> my, wife, my wife is like, did you have a woman over? I go, if a woman smelled like that, Christy, I'd be gay right now. Okay, just <laughs> Well, I do. I do have a, one more question. Uh, okay, so I know that. Uh, okay, I haven't. Uh, sub I've subscribed to all of the people who posted in the chat, but I haven't been necessarily following everybody else other than Rhino, uh, as far as beer reviews. And uh, I've been trying to do a lot more uh, homebrew reviews. So Rhino, I, I know that you do that. I had somebody send me a beer mail, and it was included. It, included in it was uh, their homebrew. That shit fucking exploded. I'm talking, I popped the cap, that shit hit my ceiling. <laughs> Did you uh, watch my uh, pineapple beer from Brew By Me? No, <laughs> Fuck. He sent me one. a pineapple beer, and I opened it, and it was everywhere. Like, the whole floor was covered in pineapple. So, and, uh, yeah. I, I definitely want to keep your review integrity, right? So, I, I will never... I'll never say that a beer is good if I don't think it is good. But do you, as far as homebrew reviews, do you think it's necessarily important to point out their uh, drastic flaws or just the overall quality? 
Well, Devin, did I did I point out drastic flaws in your stuff? A lot of uh, stuff. Here's the thing, man. Like, if you're willing to submit, like, I'm working at a brewery now, but like, we, my brother and I submitted a bunch of home brews. If you're willing to submit a beer for review, you need to be willing to accept the criticism. Uh, I agree. And, is- and like, we had a couple beers that were like kind of shit. And they got reviewed as shit, so that's just, that's exactly it, man. I mean, it's, like... It's definitely part of the game, but, I like, I, I kind of, part of me, because this is a good friend of mine, I want to spare him, and I, I, I kind of just, I, I'll never post something that I think is false, but I kind of just don't want to post the video because of did how it, it turned it taste out. taste good still? No, the taste was absolutely fantastic. Uh, it, okay. was, it was... That, sh- that should si- shine through through the video. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Just, it's, I mean, like, like oh, sometimes beers. I mean, I I had that when when Dale sent his pineapple beer to me and it blew up everywhere. There was there was thoughts going. Did he overcarbonated? Was it infected? Did the uh, did he not boil the fucking pineapple long enough? What what did he do to cause this? But it didn't matter because the beer tasted amazing. I told him he could come and lick my floor to clean it, but the beer was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the, the floor wasn't amazing. The fact that I was covered in pineapple beer wasn't amazing. But the beer was really, really damn good. And I gave him a good mark on it, but I harassed him and trolled him the entire video about his fucking overcarbonation. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, most of the time, that's just they don't refrigerate it, right? So, like, that's why I use less priming sugar because... If you don't refrigerate it, it's not going to go dormant, and it's going to it's going to fucking happen. If you use a recommended a bag of dextrose that comes in a kit, you dump that, that in, shit, and you don't right? refrigerate he, it, it's going to fucking explode. He has so much beer that his fridge is. Uh, he's been there. His fridge is full. His basement's full. Like he has so much beer going on at all times that it's just it's disgusting, and that's why it it did that. It it probably had been going for six months, just continually yeah. eating sugar. But it's it's good to tell him that because then he'll know like, oh yeah, I can't refrigerate this, so I'll let I'll put less priming sugar in, and that won't happen. Yeah. I reviewed his pumpkin oh. beer. It looks like Chad just sharded over my walls. It's, it, it looks like <laughs> shit, but it tastes delicious. So I don't care. Yeah, I mean, is it, I guess that what the real question is is, do I post the video and do I critique well, him like to I mean, the absolute you, max, or do I just accept the memory that I have? You can you but, can add an outro. It's like uh, the beer was fucking messy as hell, but I love the taste. So just add a funny outro to it. Yeah. Dude, the, dude, the thing is, like, do you want to lie to your friend and, you know, like, say he brewed an actually poor beer, do you want to tell him it was good to spare his feelings and allow him to continue to brew poor beer, or do you want him to improve on it? So, yeah, like, exactly. maybe it's a maybe it's a priming sugar issue. It could, like, it could be a ton of things, but, like, I don't know. If I was brewing crappy beer and for years everyone told me it was good, and then one year, someone else told me it was, sh- you know, eventually someone was like, yeah, all this stuff you've been doing for years is shit. shit. I'd kind of be <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, I definitely agree. Uh, well, I, I tell him yeah. all the time. Lee always talks to me about how good I brew, and I'm like, I, I think you're lying to me. <laughs> I mean, every, everybody that was down here was like, it's really good, except for Nick, who's like, this is shit. I'm like, is Nick, is Nick telling the truth, and you guys are just lying to me because I'm bigger than you? <laughs> no, no, it's just yeah. me and Lee. We fucking love your ghost pepper beer. I give it like a nine out of ten. It's fucking awesome. The ghost pepper beer was was really good. When I got to try it too, I enjoyed it. The fuck yeah! Would y'all be open to doing like a homebrew trade? Chad should do one. Fuck, that was good. Fucking delicious. I, just, I have to check how much equipment I actually still have that works. I have so many. I when I uh, when I dry hop, I dry hop. I make sure. That it's it's dry hopped and I've lost uh, five different ones now <laughs> from uh, dry hopping so much. Well, because I, I, just, I, I use a lot of hops. I just recently did a. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and call it a double because of the absolute absurd amount of hops I use. But I did a uh, blackberry IPA using solely Chinook hops, and that shit is fucking ridiculous. And uh, I, I've sent it out to several beer mails, but I'd love to see what other people think about it. Yeah, I don't, I don't, oh, what do I have left right now? I have, uh, look at Matt, Matt looks like he's falling asleep on his couch. I have uh, a couple year old bottles of my coffee pale ale, which I think was my best brew yet. I have one bottle left of my root tooth stout, which is my root beer stout, and I have a couple bottles left of my, 
my my ghost pepper dark ale, but I haven't brewed anything in a few months now. I just now, now Matt looks like he's jacking it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I haven't brewed anything in a few months now. I just I haven't had the time, and even if I did have the time, I don't have the room. My fridge is full of different things, and I just it just hasn't happened. And I wish it had. I uh, I've brewed a, I've brewed at one of the Ontario breweries lately, and we went and we collaborated on a uh, on a porter that should be out sometime soon. Hopefully, they put my name on and they don't Google me. Um, <laughs> What? Right. Where's that? And it's like, what? I want to try it. That's all. No, the it, it, I'll I'll tell you when it comes out. You must be referring to some gypsy. Is it, is it gonna be like widely available, or am I road tripping? Or in May? Uh, in you might May? have to road trip a little bit, but you might have to road trip to here. Yeah, you might have to road trip to here for May. I'm sleeping in Devin's beard. Where? You're sleeping in Devin's beard. Yeah. Uh, I, I've been there's there's a lot of breweries that keep asking me to collaborate right now. I've been asked by uh, Cameron's to go and collaborate a few times, and I just haven't. Uh, it's there. Uh, Kyle and Jason want me to collaborate there. Uh, Nickelbrook keeps talking to me again to go and brew there again. The college has asked me to go over there and brew with them. So we'll we'll see what happens. It'd be uh, great for Nickelbrook would stay on the friggin' poster. Dude, you could totally be a professor at the Niagara College. No, I, I'm. Not nearly good enough for that. Sam, Sam, uh, uh, Kevin, John, they're all amazing brewers and amazing historians. Me, I just drink beer. Hey, sometimes, you know what? It's the guy who drinks beer that knows the most. Yeah, but that's not me. <laughs> I've started to get back into brewing a bit. Got two batches and fermenters. I'm going to rack them in a secondary soon as I later this week. Well, to, to those of you that actually do homebrew, do you like to use a secondary? I, I just leave it in primary the whole time. Uh, all right. So uh, as far as I go, I currently may uh, – I'm sitting in my kitchen right now. I have a uh, hot cocoa porter that I made. Mm. And now let me, let me tell you something. Anybody who's ever interested in brewing with hot cocoa, the powder fucking sucks. All right? It, it does not – do well in the primary, so I had to secondary it onto some nibs. Hmm. Hmm. I'm just learning new things. Like uh, I'm gonna rack out of my secondary because I got so much hops and so much fucking oak chips because I smoked them in Irish whiskey for a few days. I dropped them in after the Croix and Fall. So I'm doing research. So after the Croix and Fall, I dropped in a shitload of Cascade. Like 130 IBU. Lachlan, I sent you an invite. A Lachlan. Fucking love that blue get on that. Yeah, all that shit. I want to get out of there. Oh, the everybody is. If he shows up, as soon as he shows up, troll him. He. I actually <laughs> watched the Sia, the Sia commercial, the Sia video there with the oh. Sia LaBeouf video. Um, he actually, he actually watched it and commented on it, and it was funny because I was watching a uh, a react video. And then I clicked it to watch the actual video to see what it was, and he was like the second commenter on the video. <laughs> so if he comes in here, harass him, because the first thing I said is, ooh, look who I caught watching fucked up music videos. <laughs> hey, I, I, don't know what, I don't know how y'all feel about Shia LaBeouf, but I downloaded his workout plan, and that shit Gentlemen. is fucking killing me. Oh, is that the weird pit one in that cage video? Oh no, no, it, it, it okay. No bullshit. It is the workout he used to get the you know, I get no homo. The the body he has in that video. No homo. <laughs> that shit is fucking killing me. All right. I mean, what one part of my job? Seventy five percent of my job is working out, and that shit is fucking annihilating me. Well, you know what? I mean, that dude is. Good day, whatever, gentlemen. What do you think about him? He's in pretty good shape. Already, Matt. You have fun passing out on your couch. Good night, Matt. Oh, hey, I'm gonna watch, hey, easy. I'm, have a good night, I'm gonna watch a ton of Wire and uh, slap my dog Fuck there. Her. What? Yeah. What's he, what's he the the wire? Hey, the Reverend's here. True. And fuck y'all. I watched that Thea video. Yeah, you, you figured it out, you cunt. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Did I say that online? No, you had to say it in Irish accent. You couldn't. You couldn't? Yeah, fucking couldn't. 
Damn, man. Everybody in here is making me feel self-conscious about my fucking ear stretching. <laughs> well, well, you know what happens. <laughs> yeah, I spent on Sondrian and she Yeah, I, I feel self-conscious about that, too. Oh, wait, I don't have ear stretches. Oh, right. neither do I. I feel self-conscious. Yeah, I, I, I had mine up to a fucking inch, and fucking and I, everybody in here is blowing me away. God, God, I'm a fucking pussy. I don't have my ears even pierced because of my hurt. Lachlan, Lachlan gets people all the time at the bar saying, I could stick my dick in there. Dude, I don't understand none of that shit. Why anyone? What do you? Because even all you can get, my ears are one and three quarter inch. Why any oh. person would want to admit that their dick is smaller than that? I don't get that. <laughs> if the yeah. thickness of your dick can fit inside of here, I am sorry, dude. You got no fucking dick. Or, I would or, just. I would assume that the people that don't approach you just have small dicks. Well, or, <laughs> I'm not even saying that something. the people do approach me and start talking about my fucking ears. If one of three quarters, you, you did have. Point. You did have some. Dildos hanging out of your ears at one point. Yeah, but they were little guys. Were they purple at least? Right. How big did you say your ears were? They're one and three quarter. Maybe uh, though somebody has such a big cock that they can't even fit it in your ear. It's bigger than your ear. It's like... <laughs> yeah, but then they wouldn't be saying how they could just put their dick in my ear. <laughs> Unless they were thinking about when they screwed their wife and she was a virgin. <laughs> I don't know if I'd look at an ear and think virgin pussy. That's tight. Well, I, there's no way I'd look at my wife and think tight pussy. Well, no, she, she's had two of your kids come out of that thing. Yeah, like, but you, that's two of your kids have been thrown out of that. Wait, what, what hole are we talking about now? Getting fucked in the ear. Oh. That's good. Well, uh, we have, we have right. some viewers, and none of them are giving our, us questions like we asked them. We have topics, and then when the topics are out, we uh, we float into obscurity and stupidity. And we, and we, we talk about fucking a girl's virgin pussy. Well, yeah, you know, no, no, we're talking about his one and three quarters up. ears. Whatever. Wait, talking about that, I have to come and get the next size from him. Because Is these anyone drinking the bad beer? Hey, no. uh, boys, I'm heading off to bed. I have to work in the morning. No, I I can't yeah. call him. Uh, again, when you go to work, tell Steve Half I seconds. hate him, and uh, <laughs> he smells funny. And... I will tell him to expect some severe untapped ratings. And... <laughs> I will be coming over. Give me a sniffing back area, whatever. Devin, Devin, next time I want to move to the States, I'm going to try and drop by in a chente and say hi to you. Oh, dude, uh, give me a heads up anytime you're coming. Just shoot me a message on uh, Facebook, and I'll uh, make time to give you a tour and all that shit. You know, oh. sounds. All right, yeah, cool. you have to see the hot fridge. The hot fridge is the best part of the I whole thing. <laughs> oh, the <laughs> fucking fridge. Don't even get me started. This is my hop fridge. I made sure I have enough hops to last me five years. <laughs> it's hey, pretty it's fucked. Good, it's a good idea, because the hop business is very competitive nowadays. Oh, yeah. Uh, don't get you know what Steve actually started up a brewery the right way. He bought enough caps, enough hops, uh, enough everything to last forever, so he didn't have to worry. Because if you buy them in the bulk, he bought them at that are a lot cheaper than buying them at the smaller bulk that people normally buy them at. He uh, did things the right way, and I I give him creds for that. He actually sells his beer for a fair price. I give him creds for that. His beer is actually probably one of the best values in Ontario. And at the same time, I, I when when we were there, when me and Devin were there, and he was talking to me off to the side, he was telling me his prices. I told him the prices of all of his competitors and told him he should raise his prices because his margins weren't good enough. <laughs> and I'm like, this is what all your competitors are. If you raise it this much, you're still lower than your competitors, and you get that much more revenue profit. And yeah, so I mean, I give him credit. He's actually out there for the love of beer. At some point, it'll be about the money if he's not making it, because it always ends up being that. But he is actually the guy that did things right, and I give him credit for that. Well, I'm, for some I'm, people, uh, I'm a lucky dude. I'm gonna say that, <sighs> and I'll leave it at that. But, uh, yeah, third hey, grade Devin? career there, Devin. Yeah, it's like I, I work at a great place, so. Yeah, like you your third random point. career possible for any fucking dude. Where are you at, Devin? Uh, in Asante, up in Waterloo. Yeah. You know, South. You know yeah. what? Anytime you're making, anytime you're basically going to work and you're fucking enjoying your job and you're making enough money to basically, you know, live the lifestyle you want to live, you should work. be fucking happy because... Well, I, I told Devin at one point, I, I believe I told Devin the second he got the job that I was kind of jealous of him 
but not at, like I was like, you know what? I'm not jealous of you in the I'm jealous of you factor, but I'm jealous of you in the fact that I have been offered these jobs before and I can't take them because I need my benefits. I need the pay I make just to because I have kids. I if this was 10 or 15 years ago, if this was 10 years ago, I would have jumped on it. Story. But uh, at the point I'm at now, I just I can't. Well, I that's, wonder, that's the thing, right? Is everyone has their own responsibilities in life. Some people have kids, what? some people don't, and if that's your case, yeah. You know, Lachlan's responsibility is waking up at noon to open up the tattoo shop. Yeah, I'm like responsibilities. <laughs> I've heard of those. They sound like they're a bad time. From what I've read, chat, some days are 11 a.m. There's oh. the occasional rousing time that I have to be out of bed at 10.45 a.m. Oh, holy shit. How does anyone wake up at that time? Uh, ask you ask you him know. how far he has to travel to open up work. <laughs> like, <laughs> like a kilometer? <laughs> oh, yeah. you are being so generous. Yeah, I have, have a 13 step commute to work. I have to be at work at 5 in the morning every day. <laughs> seven days a week. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I get off of work at 3 a.m. Jesus. And then I wake up at I wake up at six forty five with my kids. That's you my, get off on bed for work, work at three a.m. What's that? I go to bed for work at three a.m. Yeah, fuck Jesus. you. <laughs> I, I go to work at four in the afternoon. I go to bed at like six a.m. most days. Yeah, but that, yeah, but that also makes sense. If you're working at four in the afternoon, I don't work. I don't work till eleven. So pretty as long as I'm in bed by like three, four, five ish a.m., I'm good. <laughs> I, I will vouch for uh, Lachlan and say that a tattoo shop life is not an easy life. So <laughs> it really isn't, man. Like it, it it's, it's a wicked fun job, really cool. but it, it, there's days where it sucks and it's long ass days and oh, the shitty days are fucking it, 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 all, dude. You've been there on the fucking. Yeah, I, 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 I know what it, it is, man. Like, Devin, Devin, you forget, you forget. He works in Welland now. There's no such thing as a shitty day because there's always a music. <laughs> he worked in Welland. Yeah, I, I worked in Welland for about two years. I and I honestly love Welland for it. Yeah, um, it's a fun shop, but the it's, president it's the five percent that are crazy are fucking super crazy. Oh yeah, and like, they make the entire awesome. thing, man. They make the entire thing. Yeah, Please, but it, but sometimes sometimes the crazy is too crazy. Sometimes it's too crazy. Uh, like we had a call two days ago about some some fourteen year old trying to get tattooed. Like no, not at all. <laughs> And their immediate response was, I hate you, and hung out. Ah, uh, oh, come on, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Let's just tatter their face, you know. Hey, I would never have the tattoos I have nowadays if uh, some tattoo artist didn't give it to me when I was 16. If it was a Limp Bizkit tattoo, you would have <laughs> <laughs> uh, My fucking torso is covered, man. I fucking, no, he's just yeah. rolling, you know. He's just rolling. <laughs> Awesome. How about the I girl that made five hundred dollars giving blowjobs? Like, I'm enjoying this for her boots. <laughs> what about blowjobs for what now? What well, that girl you talked about who came up to the store and told you about how she, her friend did, did blowjobs? Oh fuck that! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gave good her that. money for work boots and she won't pay me. She made this much money giving blowjobs last night. Well, it was that was that because you're really good, or was that just the amount of blowjobs you've given over the night? <laughs> and each one was it? You never know. She could have just sucked mad dick. It could have been fucking like four really good payers. You never know. I'll say for this neighborhood, it was just yeah, a lot of dick. It's like a, it's like a dollar a blowjob. This neighborhood, yeah. Like Devin at least knows the neighborhood. It's not the most upscale neighborhood. So I know the neighborhood. I'm scared that my wife and my kids are gonna get kidnapped while I come in to see you for two minutes. <laughs> they, can, they can at least run to my apartment. They're safe. And really, your kid would be able to fucking take up most people, Chad. Your kid's like nine foot seven. He's like four. <laughs> Boys, I'm uh, I'm headed to bed. I am exhausted. All right, night, man. Later, Evan. It was nice to be a part of this again. It was nice to finally spend ten dollars to be a part of this again. <laughs> I would do it any time. I bought a headset today, Lachlan. Oh, I was like, you had to pay to get in. What's happening? <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, there's admission fees now. It's. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, actually, your, uh, your fees are due pretty soon, so <laughs> you won't be allowed on here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. Have a good night. Have a good night. Cheers. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry, I was peeing in the sink.
Sounds about right. I peed in my growler earlier. <laughs> did, did, did you get the whole two two liters into there? Listen, listen. Can you all hear that? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I see we're keeping it classy as usual, Chad. <laughs> I I did not pee in my growler. That is one thing I've never done. Hey, I got a bunch of growlers, all right? I got a bunch of growlers I can spare. This one was from Kansas, some no-name brewery out in Kansas. When they get bigger, I'll want to revoke this video. But until then, I peed in the growler. <laughs> until, until, they get a, until they get a big name, you can still piss in them. <laughs> they get some notoriety. Whoa, 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 Chad, can you take that, that one fucking beard week night? But uh, as you uh, sh shit talk me there for watching that fucking that Sia video with fucking uh, what's his muscly now, Shia LaBeouf? Uh, yeah. If you think that's the fucking weirdest shit that I'm watching on YouTube, I didn't you say that was the weirdest shit you were watching on YouTube. I said, look who I caught watching this video. Dude, trust me, he's not a cop. You need you need to see my drunken fucking uh, nights where I saunter into the world of K-pop and start posting all the videos I'm watching. The fucking K-pop is dangerous. <laughs> K-pop is goddamn spectacular. It is some of the weirdest, most entertaining shit I've ever seen in my life. That yeah, fucking, that's you, you don't understand what the fuck is going on. Yeah, that's what I'm fine with it. I don't, in, I don't like the North American pop because I know what they're saying, yeah. and I get bored and bothered by it. <laughs> just I think everybody should guys. right now, I think everybody right now should go to uh, the Albino Rhino Beer Review page. All right. Like the, the Facebook? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you talking about? The Facebook, Facebook page. Uh, Which one? Hey, I'm on your YouTube. Fuck. Let me go YouTube? to Facebook. The Facebook page. I think everybody should go to the Facebook page for a second. Yeah, I'm on my way. All right. Uh, fast. All right. <laughs> Pete, in the, Pete in the growler there? Yep. Oh, shit. <laughs> Wait, fuck. Mine said no results could be found. <laughs> Albino, R... Uh, uh, Lachlan, if I come down at some point in the near future, can I put a poster up in the shop? Well, for, for the fest? Totally. Yeah, okay. I know. Wait, do you know there's somebody else named Albino Rhino Kelly? No, I didn't know that. What? Yeah, I just fucking came across Albino Rhino Kelly and accidentally sent a friend request. Come on, look at this here. Hold on. Yeah, okay, I found you, but I also sent a request to Albino Rhino Kelly. <laughs> I'm Peter my growling. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, people. Albino Ronald Kelly, that exists. Like, the first thing that I have come up is the, the review and then the fest, but then, yeah, the actual listing Albino Rhino Kelly. Well, he's going to be extremely confused when I send him that. When he sees that <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, from what I'm seeing from the photo uh, by he, I do believe you mean she. <laughs> <laughs> One of the photo, they may have been having some fun at Walgreens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should I drink another beer? Yes. That's not, that's not even a question. At least two more. Yeah. And yet, uh, hey, what the fuck is the weird fancy setup you got going on there? What's everybody drinking? Are you a fucking radio DJ right now as well? Who? <laughs> Yeah. E with this fucking radio DJ set up there. The he fuck is that? DJ. You need you need all that to understand them. Oh, so it's just a filter to fucking go from fucking Quebecois to English. Okay. It's the yeah. first fucking Star Trek translator version. <laughs> what are y'all drinking right now? I'm not drinking anything yet. Uh, I can give you, anyone else can answer what the fuck I'm drinking. The bad beer. He's drinking beer. <laughs> You I'm drinking uh, Revolver, Blood and Orange. 
or uh, blood and honey. It's an American ale. It tastes like a hefeweizen, but it's made with blood oranges and uh, honey. Shit's fantastic. Straight out. Of Let's go for a walk and find something to drink. How much alcohol you got in the honey? Shit. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, seven percent ABV, twelve ounces. Seven percent. That's not enough. Okay, what do we have? We have six viewers left. You guys have let us talk about nothing for too long. Give us some comments. They're going to get some more questions. viewers a, a week later. You're going to get like 30 viewers anyways. What? I, I, have, an, I have another question slash comment. And this, I already brought this up earlier, but I, th I thought it went a little off track. Why is your thumb on your webcam? <laughs> oh, he's trying to hold me Oh, no, never mind. I'm wrong. I, I didn't even notice that. Right. No. That wasn't his thumb. That was his penis. <laughs> You're threatening my ears. This is the bulb. <laughs> what should I drink today? Yeah, that kind of happens when I show up. Now, the ball is pretty fast. Here's my issue. With, we were talking about the Great Lakes release earlier of Karma Citra. Now, here's my issue is they, they limited, supposedly this limited beer was limited to 24 cans a person. Yeah. Now, this is an IPA which supposedly is only good for a couple months. Yeah. Now, here's my question. Who the fuck needs 24 cans of an IPA which is going to expire right. fairly quickly? All right. I'll be the guy. Wait, says it. you're only allowed to buy 24? Like, that's like that's the max? That's the maximum. And my, my question is, who the fuck needs 24 cans or something like that when most people, unless you're an alcoholic, you're probably only going to drink six of those to 12 of those before okay. they go bad. All right, so you did you did create the loop. Now, I will say that uh, when the 24 case of Dogfish Head 120 showed up in Colorado Springs, yep. I was one of those motherfuckers who bought a 24 case of Dogfish Head 120. <laughs> All right? Now, that motherfucker is sitting at anywhere between, like, 15 to 20-something percent. All right? Now, me being 15, the person 15 to 20 percent alcohol? Yeah, it, it varies uh, on the vintage. But, okay. um, <laughs> all right, so... Each bottle sold for, you know, an outrageous price, but because I knew the guy who owned the store, he hooked me up with a fucking 24 case of this Dogfish Head 120. I stuck a couple away for in the cellar, but uh, let's just say I had an extremely hot-filled, shit-faced night every <laughs> night for about a month straight. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Ooh. a back well, to that hole. Oh, an alcoholic thing, because I, I sure drink a... a fair amount uh, every day. What's, what's your uh, math on what would be considered an alcoholic? Exactly. All right, so my job profession, <laughs> my job, it monitors uh, alcohol consumption very uh, meticulously. And their classification of an alcoholic is anywhere between four to six alcoholic drinks a week. Now, that's a, obviously absurd because I drink a beer at night. Yeah, a no. fucking week. Holy shit! <laughs> I now, wait, 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 wait. Everybody stop. There's only five of us left here, but other than other than him, how many of us are thus then alcoholics? Yeah. Right here. Uh, <laughs> wait. According there, there, to there's the six that I've I've had so far this evening. <laughs> And yeah. then you have know, some whole garden in the back. <laughs> like, yeah. You, you, uh, you know what? So, so my, comment has, my comment doesn't have to do with how many beers you have in an evening, but it's like, how many of the same beer can you have in an evening? Like, most of us are beer enthusiasts that we don't want to have the same goddamn beer every time. I, I, I am a just a fan of beer. I will just drink it. I, uh, as you should know by now, come on, motherfucker. I drink blue. You should know this by you, now. You do like how many, blue, you know that. Uh -oh. how oh. many blues does it take you to get fucked up? Are you talking like I got a buzz going on or like my legs ain't working right? <laughs> both. I want, I want to know both. Uh, a buzz. I don't know. Like I, got, I got six in me now and I got three whole garden and <laughs> I'm decent. If it's like legs ain't working right, yeah. Mm, I'm looking like an evening out would be like ten beer, ten shot. That's why like, uh maybe I'm getting too southern, maybe I should go home. Oh wait, wait, this 14. this was something that this was something that the last time I met Lachlan at a bar was brought up. How many of you will poo in a bar if you have to poo? Right uh, here I will. Yeah, definitely. He's well yeah, I have to I'll fucking put toilet paper like fifteen laser layers if I have to over the bar. Uh, 
Ah, come oh, on. Get someone in the bar? Yeah, all yeah, yeah. yeah. All, all, all you need to do is a quick wipe down. Quick wipe down. I, I, See, I, I took a, I I took a say... shit at the bar, and Lachlan berated me for like five minutes about how I'm the <laughs> only person he knows that will shit at a bar. And this and that. If I have to shit, I have to shit. I'm shitting, okay? No, you shit like 412 times a day. That's you the thing. Four six, six at least. <laughs> yeah. You were a fucking it up. Dude, you posted. I don't know if they all have you on the fucking face crack, like your actual face crack. You posted the one day where you had pooped like 53 times in a day. Yeah, that was the, that was the day I was sick. I, 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 I used to fuck what you were. I the fact you're getting into double digits in shit. I used I used to be a germaphobe hardcore, and then I went to the Middle East, right? So in the Middle East, you know, there's uh, there there is uh, you know, you have your normal toilet. Oh, then the squats. What they call the European toilet, and then you yeah, have yeah. yeah, exactly the squats. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So now, if you put an entire uh, Ford observing base full of nothing but uh, your European toilets, right? <laughs> So all the nationals who do nothing but the squat, they're going <laughs> to climb on top of that fucking porcelain throne, and they're going to fucking squat down, and they're going to fucking shit right on that seat. And because whatever it is in their culture, you know, I'm not racist, I'm not going to say anything about them, <laughs> but whatever they do, they're going to fucking shit right on that toilet seat, and they're going to fucking leave it. So me being who I am, a uh, germaphobe before I went over there, what I've learned to do is you have to take the toilet paper, you have to scrape their shit off, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then you have to put a thin layer of toilet paper protective bearing on yeah. it, and that's when you get to use toilet. So after that, any bar toilet, fucking anywhere I've been since, yeah. that's fucking welcoming. Yeah, you you dealt with you dealt words like you could hug a toilet back over in North America and be a okay in comparison. Oh, definitely. <laughs> what, what's everybody's worst drunk at a bar? I ask this because as a guy that has been a bouncer, well, was a bouncer for over ten years, there's some interesting people I've thrown out. And, um, all right, well, yeah. I'll, I'll start off. All right, so this is a very recent experience. Okay, so I love my craft beer, obviously, and uh, I found a place in uh, North Alabama that was selling uh, what was it, Mexican cake. Now, Mexican cake is a 10-plus percent, uh, you know, stout. And uh, there was the only place in Alabama that was selling it. And I got a little ridiculous, I'm not going to lie. And uh, I noticed that they were selling shirts behind the bar. So about 30 minutes before closing, I, I started asking if I could get a growler full of this Mexican scout. And they were like, no, we can't do that. So I threatened, hey, I'm going to get fucking naked in this bitch until y'all start, <laughs> start giving me a growler. They didn't believe me, so off came the shirt. And they were like, uh, okay. <laughs> they, still wouldn't, say note. they still wouldn't give me the growler. So off started coming the gym shorts. I'm standing there in the middle of this tap house in my boxers and shoes saying, give me the growler or the boxers are coming off next. <laughs> and... As I started pulling them down, they were like, oh, go, 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 go. <laughs> so that was my embarrassing drunk moment in the past recent months. Oh, I did that at my buddy's wedding, sober. And by recent months, I mean uh, January. Yeah, you uh, get naked surprising, though. My, I, 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 I went up to the DJ, and I said, can you play Bringing Sexy Back? And he said, why? I go, just please do it. He played Bringing Sexy Back, and there's a video of me stripping in the middle of the dance floor, Dancing with his mom to bringing sexy back and <laughs> taking off all my clothes. Why do you? Was that on your channel? No, because because uh, it, I did end up naked. It's not on my channel. Was, there was, there uh, was there was full frontal albino nudity. So. I, I only question, but I love his name. Was this Bubba McLeod from McLeod? Uh, no, Bubba McLeod was the other groomsman though that was standing behind me waving his shirt in the air like this. <laughs> I will. I no matter what. I will still go for. If you want to go for uh, embarrassing and or hilarious stories, I'm pretty sure I will always have the topper. Um, just some factor of eating poison. Ooh. Oh yes, yes, you idiot. Yeah. You're talking uh, about the, the fist fuck again? Who did that? Oh, this uh, man uh, here. Uh, this man here ate a urinal pocket. Yeah. Oh, that, oh, that's fuck? Like, that. I'll give, like my my step down story is I cartwheeled through a table at a bar. 
And all I got told was, because it was, uh, like, uh, Ted, you know, it's like Rick told me to quit fucking around. Um, but, yeah, no, at back at, uh, who, Kate, okay, you know who Paul is, at least. Anyone else know who Paul is, Chad? Um, in this, in this chat? No, like just good. No, I was a way far away, but you got along with Paul, like, kept fucking using carrots, so I was like, yeah, whatever. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, but yeah, Paul, you go to the bar. Hey, not to interrupt or anything, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm get my growler here. Growler, what are we doing, bro? I ate a fucking goddamn urinal plug. Are we talking about what penises and growlers? What's happening? Yeah, I'm peeing in my growler again. I just want to let you know. We call that fish. Oh, call it fish. Chad, uh, yeah, is, is there another update on, on the page? On the page? <laughs> there might be. Uh, I'm going to set the microphone I'm gonna set the microphone on its head uh, here. And just, you know, if that's weird, let me know. Fish joke. I've been in Chad's basement where there's like three different dudes peeing in random spots. <laughs> it ain't weird. The worst, game, though, the worst is the fact that you can tell who was in the sink last just by the smell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, remember when we were testing the fucking uh, pregnancy tests? And, oh, Chris, and uh, the bag of derp, Chris Hill peed in the cup and tested his pee, and then it was put in front of Karina, and she didn't know it was pee, and she picked it up to take a sip of it, and she's like, oh, that's disgusting, and put it down. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is kind of why we we more so need, like, adult supervision. <laughs> by age we are, but no. Because oh, yeah. like, when we tried doing the Century Club, we fucked up from, like, the second we started. Because we were out. We we did the Century Club and we had uh, we had three ounce glasses and we didn't know they were three ounce glasses. We were filling them up to an ounce and a half every time. So yeah. we we all like three of us actually. Pa- I'm the only one that actually passed it, and then I chugged the beer. Yeah, out. But like you did but, you did what we thought was legitimate, but you surpassed by so fucking much. Yeah, and then when we did the Century Club 2.0 and we did it with Imperial Stouts and Imperial IPAs. Oh yeah, God. I, I wasn't even gonna pretend to that's, be part that's of that. That's when I, that's when I reviewed the uh, the PBR 5.9 and I puked into a bucket and it sounded like a fucking boat motor. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I do I do have a slightly new topic, all right, pertaining to the pissing and growlers, all right. So, uh, do, I want to know where the topic could go. <laughs> well, all right. So I was peeing into my growler about <laughs> less than a minute ago. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, and then there, I have my microphone that I put near my mouth without washing my hands. <laughs> I I don't know what I uh, y'all know about aerodynamics. I don't know much, but uh, I will say that there is a force, very forceful pushback of pressure and air that really hurts the urethra. I just want to put that out there to anybody who's thinking about peeing into a growler. Because <laughs> I, I don't actually know to any viewers if there are any of the five of us on this chat right now. Maybe you shouldn't piss into a growler, apparently. Well, no, definitely. I, 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 I'm starting to realize the problem, but before I realized that it was a problem, there became an issue. <laughs> You're home brewers, you know this. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he home brews. He pisses into a growler, catches it for a while, checks it out. It's Can a I quarter. brew this beer? How deep can I put my dick in this? Okay. Five. Oh, so he's pretty his brow like my ears. I guess, I guess I should have let y'all know the type of person I am before I joined this uh, hangout, but... Have you never watched any of us before? Yeah, I was uh, going to say, you don't seem all that bad. Yeah, I, really. Unfortunately, unfortunately because of work, I, I usually have to miss Beard Oibs United, but uh, I have been able to uh, catch this one, so just, just uh, if y'all don't mind, a moment of silence for my piss growling. <laughs> We are known because we're Americans and Canadians. Give you two moments of silence if you drink it. <laughs> whoa, 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 what? Now it gets viewers, I'm just saying, but... Wait, what'd you say? Uh, he, he may have inferred that you, you may want to drink some of that. He may have inferred that. <laughs> so I'll give you two moments of silence if you drink it. <laughs> he'll buy you He'll buy you your bottle of uh, Dark Lord. 
<laughs> okay, okay. I found I found what I'm gonna do for my uh, crowdsourcing. If somebody helped me fund my uh, vanilla Dark Lord, I will drink my piss, Crowley. <laughs> Five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> LFA, Gee, you did not even miss a beat there. <laughs> and then you're like, five bucks. <laughs> Immediately. Yeah, five you didn't even miss the beat. Who's got, already, who's got I'm five? Already, I'm already drinking old style right now. I might as well be drinking piss. Zachary Plitcher, good day. How are you? Um, usually, uh, since yeah, you're probably new to the Beer Dweeb United thing, usually we have a bunch of beer topics. We went through all our, all our beer topics. Now we're all great <laughs> yeah. for a few hours. And it's I, I, will, I will always give the best Four of you left and none of you will give us any topics. Zach here, welcome, welcome to Canada. Yeah, please, God, give us a topic. I just put most of the blame on myself because usually when I roll in is when shit just gets ridiculous. Whether or not it is because of myself or just my timing, usually when I roll in here, shit just gets fucking weird and outlandish. So in I May, it's going to be a third time. So I, I better fucking. Jordan, see Jordan asks if all Americans piss in growlers because we may have just created a new stereotype. <laughs> all right, so hashtag being, Americans piss in growlers. All right, so is anyone else American in this? I'm sorry, I, I don't remember. Is anyone else American in this other than me? Uh, I know Miggy and Chad aren't. Okay, so I am the sole American. Let me tell you. All right, Americans. One thing that we are. One thing that we will do. Is if we are going everything. on a, if we are going on a road trip, we will fucking piss in anything if it means we get to our destination faster. Oh well, yeah, but now, here's the thing: you don't have a destination. You're sitting in a chair. The destination <laughs> here, the destination here is being being able to talk with other uh, beer enthusiasts. All right, that's the this the journey. All right, I'll take it. Now, anytime I get up to piss, that's me going away from my journey. Sorry, if you're in this hangout more than 20 minutes, you are can considered Canadian by law. <laughs> now, I do want to make it clear that in America, we divide our states up very uh, segregatorily. I don't know if that's a word, but I come from the South, and in the South, we'll fucking piss on, in, or uh, about anything. Oh, it's like me and my women. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Here we're very, very horizontal division. Horizontal. He'll piss on their self. Hey, if it means <laughs> I, I can keep happens. drink. If it means it I can keep drink. You know, I gotta hook them up. I don't, I don't want to deny their their requests. <laughs> South, north, east, west, whatever. They How want. I'll, I'll get it. Pee on them. What? What was that chat there? You heard me. No, I didn't. I heard the word pee, and that was about it. I asked you how many women asked you to pee on them. Uh, ooh. All right, so I don't know about you, but for me, it's not about how many women. It's not about how many women want to be peed on. It's how many women you just happen to pee on. That's completely different. And that's numbers. very American. <laughs> that's called a casting couch. <laughs> Oh, one of the best and worst sites ever. Oh, shit, Key. Where the f- okay. Where your face? It doesn't matter. We have, we have a question. Oh! And there's a question and a comment all together. Ooh. Okay. Why are you guys so fucked up? <laughs> <laughs> Who's drinking blue? Anyway, the question is from Mr. Pusses. <laughs> hey, Mr. Pluses. Mr. Pluses. Oh. I believe you guys didn't see the L. Anyway, I'm watching, but I have totally lost what the topic is. Was there a topic? <laughs> there was a topic about an hour ago. We, we had about 15 topics. We were completely out of topics. This is not just we're drunk and uh, talking You can You're make the topic. Do don't the stop here. talking, but I'm just trying to follow along. <laughs> Question. What's the <laughs> lowest priced beer you would buy and enjoy? The lowest Ooh. priced beer I bought and didn't hate, and I'm going to say didn't hate first, I'll do that one first, was uh, uh, Big Flats. Big Flats was par- purchased for me. The six pack cost $3. Yes. And 50, oh, cents, a, 50 yes. cents a bottle. Uh, 50 cents a can, sorry. Yes. Uh, the, mo- the cheapest one I bought that I personally enjoyed was probably a dollar ninety five, and that was um, well, you know, I 
any budget beer in Ontario. A dollar ninety five is the cheapest you're gonna get a can for. So yeah, there you go. A dollar ninety five. Was that uh, I'll be, uh, a Brava two four. Single. I bought a, I bought a, I, got a, I got a Brava two four. And that was when it was still yeah. like, When was that? Was that when it was 26, 27, 28, 29? No, uh, when it was still the 26, like when it was almost the 2 4 26? So uh, like $1.25 back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, was a, it was a Bravo because it was, it was like, oh, we just need to grab something. Bravo, <laughs> the beer of the summer. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think twice twice I bought a two two four of Lucky. That was a sh that was shit. The, was the, the cheap two four I buy on the regular is Old Vienna. Oh, uh, Old Vienna. Yeah. Then then it was Upper Canada. That was a cheap shit here. Upper Canada. I don't know that. Upper Canada no, dark actually, and Upper Canada lager. No, no actually, all we had all we had back up was lager. Oh, that's right. Uh, two ribs. Two rivers. Um, it was, one of those, it was the fucking one of those two liters for fucking like two buck kind of thing when I was in the fucking peg. Oh, when you were in the peg, I can't help you with that. But I, I yeah, used to buy, two, I used never to buy never old cold English. Cold ever. Old English was in a was in a one point five liter at one point for like six dollars, and then you could get a one liter bottle. You could get a one liter bottle of Wildberry vodka cooler that was eight percent alcohol. Oh, them shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or UFO. Do you remember UFOs? You're yep. about, you're you mean you are the same age. Yeah, UFOs. Yeah, UFOs. Uh, so un, unflavored up, yeah. unflavored objects. Unflavored yeah. they basically <laughs> tasted like Sprite, but they were seven percent alcohol and they were like six dollars for a liter. Dude, it was the same with those fucking Okanagans. That was like fifteen year old me being like, Here's the change that I have. Get me some alcohol and they would show up with fucking like Okanagan or any of that shit. <laughs> Pop boozes. Well, uh, coming from Alabama, the second poorest state in uh, the United States. How are you so uh, intelligible if you're from Alabama? <laughs> you know, I've been asked that a lot. All right. Um, like, that, that, you're like, from Alabama, I'm like, wait, I understood all of that. <laughs> I've been like, I, I got some friends from fucking Chattanooga that sometimes I'm like, back up a minute. What was that again? Well, uh, all right. So I come from uh, I come from Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, this the most poor city in the state. Uh, if yeah, I'm it's the shit. If I'm not mistaken, okay. So I might be mistaken, but anyways, it's, it's but, a well-known city, but it's the shit. Exactly. The cheapest beer I will pay for there and enjoy is uh, I don't know what it's like internationally, but uh, Natural Ice Light. The Natty oh. Light. Natty Ice. Yeah, nat hey, or, no, no, natty, natty, natty light, completely yeah, different yeah, yeah. from natty ice. And uh, uh, me and Chad did a bunch of those. I got back right. doing all the all the Jennies and the Natties. Yeah, uh, at one point, Lachlan's tagline on the Albino Rhino Beer Review was, "I drink the shit beer, so you don't have to." Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and he, would only, he would only get the shitty beer. Yeah, if you if, if you saw my face next to Chad's, you knew it was mostly just gonna be me ranting as to how crappy this was. Well, in Alabama, uh, because we're uh, you know we're one of the poorest states in the union, we drop down alcohol and tobacco taxes almost to fucking ground floor levels. So Did we just jump back to 1903. The <laughs> union, the union for uh, for a case of uh, 30 case of Natty Light. I'm sitting there looking at about mm, 20 bucks. 20 bucks plus, you know, 20, 22, 23 bucks, depending on the county. And, yeah, you know, that's a fucking, that's a deal to me. That's less than a dollar per, you know, a beer per dollar. So, uh... That's one of you. You chug enough of them, anything can taste okay. Uh, I can enjoy, I can enjoy that price. You know, maybe it's because I'm Jewish. Maybe it's because I like a bargain. Hey, you know, hold, on, these hold on, hold on, before that continues. You are a Jew in the Bama? Yes. Yes, I am a Jew from Alabama. How in the fuck did you survive to, like, you appear somewhere in, like, the 20s to 30s region? Now, How the fuck? surprisingly, in Birmingham, Alabama, there is a very large Lebanese and uh, Israeli community. So there's certain synagogues in Birmingham, oh. Alabama. Oh, yeah. There's, like, a, more, there's a, more than one. There's a series of synagogues, and the, ir the irony is that in the morning, the uh, the Jews will go to synagogue, and in the afternoons, the, uh, the, Arab the Arabs will go to uh, whatever their religious conferences. Uh, um, 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 um. Mosque. 
Yeah, mosque. That's yeah. Mosque. I feel like I should know that. I, I had the word shul coming in. Like, no, shul is still Jewish shit. Klingon Center. <laughs> yeah, but uh, in Al in Birmingham, Alabama, there is a massive uh, Mediterranean slash Middle Eastern community. That's surprising. It, it That's is. Cool. That's cool, but it is, it is surprising. Like, I figured that'd be one of the spots. I'm like, mm, no, no. I hope we don't stop here. Let's just go in. Do any of you know what Dolma is? D O L M A? D O L M A? Dolma, Dolma is a uh, fermented grape leaf wrapped around hummus. Anyways, it's a big Middle Eastern dish. Anyways, if you ever come to Birmingham, there's a brewery called uh, Good People, and they make a fantastic double IPA. I suggest you get some uh, double IPA. Walk down the street a little bit, get some Dolma, the perfect pairing. All right, work then. A little combo snack there. Don't give... Odds are good. I probably won't end up in Alabama at any point, mostly because of the way that I look. Oh, come on down. No, no, no. no. I mean, fucking literally. I, I'm sitting at a, I was sitting at an inch. I'm, I've shrunk down a little bit in my ears. I got snake bites, fucking all that shit. Uh, we're fucking, we're the average in Birmingham, Alabama. I swear to the God. Only, the only difference I will give is uh, directly across my throat is a zombie Virgin Mary. Dude, all right, so, so I'll, give, I'll give a little bit of a little bit of wariness when I go to anywhere, being like, "What's that on your neck?" Mm -hmm. Hello, right. super religious country. Or Birmingham, <laughs> Birmingham, Alabama. We all right. Me, not necessarily because I don't get along with the people along with the people in that Birmingham. <laughs> but I'm screwed here. The majority of Birminghamians, if you will. They are uh, what you were. They're they're against the man. They're against the Bible Belt, all that shit like that. So you know they they rebel yeah, hard. The, the, the against of, the man just sounds very American. The against the Bible Belt, that's more of a sell. Because the well, against the man just sounds more like the militia type shit that some of the southern kids are known for. So the, the against man, Bible Belt, like, yeah. we strayed so far from beer. But <laughs> what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna say to YouTube. Ahead, I'm gonna say to YouTube. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> and we can just